<laughs> hey, hey everyone, welcome to our very first 19, virtual 1940s ball. We wish we could be with you in person, but we're grateful we can get together in any fashion, and in this case, online. Um, we hope you enjoy everything we've put together for you today. Make sure to tune in to the amazing Satin Dolls, joining us live from London and Hollywood. Join in for a hearty 1940s Cockney-style sing-along with Tom Carradine, all the way from the Garden of England. Marvel at Denver's own Professor Felix. Um, let's see, take part in the workshops and the swing dance lessons with Swing Nights. Uh, there's going to be Bob Hope's USO show with Nick Hilsher from the world-renowned Glenn Miller Orchestra and Dandy Wellington from New York and Kiwi and Orville. The 1940s dance and fashion contest and finally a full live set from the amazing Jeremy Money swing band from Boulder. When you tune into Tom's sing-along, make sure you go to the link on the schedule to get your song sheet so you can join in. It makes the experience so much fun. We just want to say a big thanks to all the artists and presenters. They're all performing for free, so please tip generously if you can afford it. Also, don't forget to switch back and forth between the virtual um, events um, on and our Jungle Radio Outpost a show with Tiki Brian. You're going to love what he's put together um, for our 1940s radio show. Okay. Yes. Um, there was also something that we were putting together with the Boulder Airport when things went awry <laughs> this year. And we wanted to honor that by bringing you something really special virtually. So we had big plans to have the commemorative Air Force's Red Tail Squadron of the Tuskegee Airmen fame traveling exhibit at the 2020 Summer Ball this year. And um, we hope to continue to do that for the rescheduled ball next year. Fingers crossed all that can work out. Um, but in the meantime, we want to present you with a wonderful little Tuskegee Airmen video that we're going to share with you just here for a second. Let's see. <laughs> we are learning this technology this week. <laughs> so please um, bear with us. Let's see. Here we go. Oops. There we go. Choo -choo -choo. There we go. And there we go. <laughs> They were pioneers who blazed a trail through the war-torn skies over Europe. Before the Tuskegee Airmen of World War II, no black American had ever been a U.S. military pilot. After the Tuskegee Airmen, the U.S. military would never be the same. Widespread discrimination prevented African Americans from flying during the First World War. For the next 20 years, the pressure would slowly build to allow black pilots to serve in the sky. Finally, in 1941, the Army launched what it called an experiment the segregated 99th Fighter Squadron. That squadron would train at an airfield near Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, and thus the Tuskegee Airmen were born. To be clear, not every airman was a pilot. For every man who flew, there were 10 keeping him in the air, men and women, military and civilian, who served on ground duty support, like mechanics, supply personnel, cooks, and more. And not all were black. Some were white or Latino or Native American. One notable woman who helped the Tuskegee Airmen take off into history was the First Lady of the United States. Eleanor Roosevelt visited the squadron in 1941 and insisted a black pilot take her up and that photographs would be taken. These photographs helped convince President Franklin Delano Roosevelt to send the unit into action, first in North Africa and later in Europe. The 99th, along with other squadrons, later formed the 332nd Fighter Group in Europe, their planes boasting tails painted bright red. In Europe, the airmen would fly more than 15,000 sorties, completing an unequaled 1,500 combat missions, all while showing great courage, skill, and dedication. Among their decorations, 150 distinguished flying crosses. Squadron leader Benjamin O. Davis Jr. would eventually rise to the rank of three-star general, receiving a fourth star of his retirement. The Tuskegee Airmen were deactivated in 1946. The experiment a great success, but more than that, the brave flyers had proved themselves in combat, and their performance helped pave the way for desegregation of the military in 1948. Today, the National Park Service's Tuskegee Airmen National Historic Site in Alabama helps tell their story and preserves their memory for all time. So 
So we just wanted to get you guys a little bit excited for the big Tuskegee Airmen exhibit that travels around the United States and beyond, and that we're hoping to have at the ball next summer in June. So um, also Greg Kyle, who's a World War II historian, he does a lot of presentations here in Denver and all over about the Tuskegee Airmen. And he, he knows a few of them. And one of them actually lives here in Denver. So we're very lucky to have him host a, a piece later as well. So we just wanna say um, thank you all for tuning in and we really hope that you enjoy everything today. And um, we look forward to seeing you next summer at the biggest 1940s celebration to date. Now we'd like to present you with Bianca and the Flyboys to sing the national anthem in tribute to the 75th anniversary of VE Day and share some interviews with World War II veterans. Thanks for tuning in. Let's see. Uh, stand by. This all has to be done live. <laughs> Share screen. Here we go. Office. This is where we will spend much of the virtual 1940s ball. <laughs> Welcome to our office. This is where we will spend much of the virtual 1940s ball. We'd rather be on stage enjoying live music and watching all of the fabulously dressed guests dance, mingle, and take photo after photo. However, this year it's not to be. We all look forward to watching the rest of this event, and we thank you for letting me, Bianca, and Greg launch today's entertainment. Anyway, we sit in my 1944 Willis Jeep. It was the world's first mass-produced four-wheel drive vehicle. Its low silhouette, high clearance, versatility, reliability, speed, and towing capability was a welcome replacement for horses and motorcycles with sidecars. Nearly 650,000 were built during World War II by Ford and Willis, and I love driving as much as possible, much like the young soldiers did over 75 years ago, but often under more dangerous circumstances, where the average combat jeep was expected to last only three months. Speaking of 75 years ago, we also want to remember the 75th anniversary of VE Day, which was May 8th, and shortly thereafter, the end of the war in the South Pacific and all hostilities. To celebrate, Greg has put together a few history lessons filled with interesting facts about Hollywood celebrities who served, the USO helping the soldiers feel closer to home, and the women Air Force Service pilots. On a lighter note of celebration, Given this year's 1940s Ball Island theme, one can see how the sailors became enamored with the allure of the ocean breezes wafting gracefully across the shore. Naturally, they wanted to hold on to some of those good memories with songs, dance, tiki bars, the tropical drinks, and food, especially those folks who returned to chilly northern climes. Enjoy the rest of the 1940s Ball and thank any World War II veterans you meet while you still can. And now, Enjoy Bianca and the Flyboys swing band with the Denver Dolls and Andrew's Sisters tribute group. We are so happy to be presenting this show at the Colorado Freedom Memorial. Rick Crandall and the city of Aurora came together to endeavor to create Colorado's very own war memorial. Please visit coloradofreedommemorial.com to learn more and perhaps donate funds toward its upkeep and expansion. So please stand, put a hand over your heart as we sing the national anthem. Oh, say that you see by the dawn's early light, was the power we prepared at the twilight's first beam, whose best friends and bright stars through the purple of the sky, for the power of 
1940s ball and welcome. Bianca and the Flyboys are performing today along with the Denver Dolls and Andrews Sisters tribute group. Did I say their name? The Denver Dolls? They are fantastic and you Hi guys, we're just fixing the audio or the video here for a second. Hang tight. So restart it on a, another browser? No, no, no. I'm just re trying to re restart from this one, from this tab. Or you could just we'll be enjoying re import it. them here shortly. These Denver performers were tasked with kicking off the musical portion of the 1940s Summer Ball. Bianca and the Flyboys will soon play and sing a few tunes to show their appreciation for persons who made the ultimate sacrifice for this country. Also showing their appreciation for the freedoms provided by our veterans and home front heroines are these wonderful guys and gals over here dressed in period correct clothing and uniforms these all volunteers this all volunteer group includes members from living history colorado and the 40 thieves all work diligently to keep the memories and exploits of our freedom loving ancestors alive and now for some more music Bye. 
everyone out there in virtual 1940s ball land, please put your hands together virtually for this fantastic band, Bianca and the Flyboys, and especially for the Denver Dolls, Denver's best and most dynamic Andrew Sisters tribute act. So they're going to play another song here shortly, and then one more song after that. So Bianca of Bianca and the Flyboys, please come on back out to the stage. So very often during World War II, um, shows were out, uh, brought out to the uh, troops to help build morale and uh, bring in energy because as you can imagine during World War II, the hardships faced by these men were unbelievable, uh, almost insurmountable many times. Um, but these US shows, uh, shows came through. And one of the songs uh, that kind of uh, commemorates uh, those shows is a, a song called Stuff Like That There. It was actually written in 1945, right after VE Day and uh, right before the true end of the World War um, when Japan surrendered. So this is stuff like that there. <laughs> enjoyed the 1940s not only for the music the attire and of course the wonderful hair we also wanted to make sure that we shed light on probably the most critical time not just in the 1940s but throughout American history and that's World War II 
And we had a chance to interview two veterans from World War II who are still alive today, and they're able to tell you what it was like to share their experiences back then, and also to show what it's like to be here today on the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II, which has allowed us to enjoy the freedoms that we still enjoy today and gives us the choices that we can still make and fight for the freedoms that we still want to continue having into the future. Welcome to the 1940s ball. It will bring back lots of memories as you listen to that music of yes. that era. It does indeed. Can you share with folks your name? Gwen Stenson. And can you tell us where were you born and where? Uh, December the 14th, 1925 in Holyoke, Colorado, out in northeastern Colorado, almost, uh, almost in Nebraska. And how long have you been a resident of Colorado? Uh, all, I would say, uh, 90 of my 94 years, um, three years in the Navy, and one year when I coached up in Torrington, to Wyoming. Of course, you and I talked previously about having seen some radical changes in Colorado. I mean, you've even grown up through the Dust Bowl. Can you share with us what it's like to have uh, been born and raised here and spent your life here? Well, uh, coming out of the 20s, uh, I drift back to a little bit. My f dad was a teacher and a coach, and he was trying to buy some land. And uh, a hailstorm took care of that crop, so we lost the land. The next thing was the banks, uh, the, de the uh, Great Depression started. And uh, I can remember that dad was paid to, to teach schools with registered warrants, which meant if they got a registered warrant for $100, they could go to the store and cash it in for 85 No money, but just groceries, that type of thing. Then we went into the dirt bowl, and we'd go to school in the morning, and 9 o'clock it'd be so dark. Principal say go home. Of course, with no buses, we'd walk home. Was that because of the dust? Yeah, I guess we didn't have pretty good compasses. We didn't get lost. Then we'd get home, and of course, the first thing mom would do is she'd say, Junior, here's the bucket. Uh, go down, go to the windmill. I need water. And I'd go get a bucket of water, and she'd soak uh, gunny sacks and sheets and things and hang them over the doors and the windows. And it's such so that uh, that. In the morning when you get up after a night's sleep, the only clean place on your pillow was where you're headed. <laughs> now, uh, chickens would get dirt on their nostrils and you'd have to catch them and wipe the dirt off. The young calves would uh, get dirt on their nostrils and they, if you didn't clean them off, they never were able to suffocate. You grew up on a farm, correct? Yes. Well, up till the seventh grade. Dad said that was enough. We moved to town. So when it came to your service, did you volunteer? Yes. What caused you to volunteer for the war? Well, to start with, uh, Pearl Harbor, December the 7th, um, 1941, we had uh, three of our kids from my hometown go down on the Arizona. And, of course, it stirred us all. up with that uh, thing of to get revenge but my dad felt that if we got into war that it was going to be a short war so he enlisted in the CBs and thought he'd only be gone six months or so and, uh, <laughs> and six months later I joined the Navy. Now was it just you or did you have any siblings that joined? Uh, my brothers, my three brothers all served with us after the war. Did they, and where did they serve? They were all Army. Did you get much of a choice or were you just assigned? I joined the Navy on purpose. That's interesting. Why would you choose to join the Navy when your brothers didn't? Uh, I'd heard a little bit about uh, how much marching and mud and things the guys in the Army were in. I didn't want, to get, I didn't want any more dirt and mud. <laughs> the men who joined were typically younger. Approximately how old were you? 17 when I went in. My goodness, you were incredibly young. So, gosh, you were so impressionable. Can you tell us what it was like when they finally shipped out from Colorado to your new location? Fortunately, 
uh, when I went in the Navy, half the CU football team went the same time I did. And uh, there was a couple of those guys on that team uh, took Junior under their wing and they made sure I got through boot camp all right. And <laughs> they, they were my lifelong friends for till they both died a few years ago. That seems to be a consistent theme that once you've served with these men, you stay lifelong friends. Yes. The ship you served on was part of an important rescue. Can you please tell us a little bit more about that? And we got the message to go down to Peleliu to help pick up the survivors off the USS Indianapolis. The Indianapolis had carried the uh, atomic bomb uh, to Tinian from, from San Francisco. And uh, of course, right after they unloaded the bomb and they were supposedly heading somewhere, actually the Philippines, uh, they were torpedoed and the kid, these kids were in the water four and five days. Oh yeah, these kids' hands, uh, arms, uh, their faces, uh, they were a mess. Do you remember where you were when the war was officially announced being over? Yeah, we were sailing up and down off the coast of Japan waiting with uh, all the invasion fleet and everything when we were all congregating getting re ready for an invasion. How did you feel when you found out it was finally done? Um, but you guys don't know. Elated. We had a bunch of guys that we formed a dance band on our ship for spare time. And uh, as soon as uh, we got word that the war was over, the captain says, okay, break up the beer. And uh, we had a <laughs> and we had a Congo lying around that ship for about 12 hours and the, this guy's in the band, I don't know, I think my lip was so tired and sore from playing my trumpet for 12 hours. <laughs> but we, had, we enjoyed the day. How long did it take after the war was done to just get back to some normalcy in your life? Well, I got home on the um, day after Easter in 1946. And I had my uniform on, and I walked in the house, and Dad had his Navy uniform on. I said, what's going on? He says, don't change clothes. Grab your horn. We have a military funeral. you got to play taps. We want to just take the opportunity to say thank you again, Glenn. On behalf of the 1940s ball, and of course, Greg and myself, we just honor you for your service, and we just thank you so much. I just wish I still danced or I'd be there. I'd dance right along with you. I know you. I, Greg might not like that. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in the 1940s ball. Would you mind giving us your name, rank, and serial number? Uh, Howard A. Berger, 1218-5705. One of the few numbers I can remember. When you enlisted, where did you go to training? And can you explain? I arrived in Fort Dix for about two weeks or so. And then I was uh, shipped to uh, Camp Stewart in Georgia. Near Savannah. And it was Camp Stewart then, but now it's Fort Stewart. Tough living there. And we're talking about the 40s, primitive living practically. From Camp Stewart, we went to our maneuvers to Louisiana, and uh, then we ended up going to uh, Scotland, England. Actually, when we arrived in from Scotland and England, the first day we were there, a V-2 bomb dropped nearby that we felt the we felt it. No danger from it, but it scared the heck out of us. That was the first day in England. And then while we were there, we were assigned to Southampton where we guarded an Italian prison camp, uh, which was very interesting because those prisoners were happy to be prisoners so they can live in, without fear of, of being bombed. Then we went through Aachen, which was just flattened. And there we saw the, fro that was in uh, time frame is about, uh, February, March, and the winter was a terrible winter, and the frozen bodies of the German soldiers were there in all odd positions. A little shaking up for us. 
Now that it's been 75 years since World War II, how are you feeling now? It makes me feel very proud that I was in the military. And uh, I get thrilled when they play the Star Spangled Banner. And uh, all those patriotic songs I enjoy and I keep a collection of them. And I love to play the music periodically. What would you like to tell the younger generations of what you've seen in your life and what would you like to have them take away from this interview with you? I always encourage people to join the service because you get a wonderful education, experiences that uh, you don't get in civil life. And you get to meet a, lot, a variation of different people and uh, that's an education in itself. So I always encourage, and young girls as well, I encourage them to join. And uh, it's really a, a, it's good to be patriotic in that sense. And uh, you feel comfortable and proud when you see other soldiers and old timers, veterans, it's, uh, it, it's uh, really thrilling. When you reflect back, on your past and what you've been through into today, what are some of the changes that you've really seen over these years? Well, the, all the modern uh, electronics that they have, which I never caught on to, but uh, that, that amazes me. And I see little children, maybe four years old at the library, knocking, playing on those like uh, computers. And I asked one of them if they would teach me some of the uh, computer procedures. But uh, it's a different world. And uh, but I enjoy the music of the 30s and the 40s and even the 20s. Uh, that's my favorite. So I reflect on those old days and I appreciate them. And I appreciate the old days when we went to the movies for 10 cents and 15 cents and we see the cereals. And uh, I remember selling, starting out selling magazines, uh, subscriptions, and uh, then joined the army. And that was a great, great experience. And i um, thankful that I did that. What can you tell this younger generation of what it meant to fight in this war and what it meant? Well, it was a different type of war that we were fighting. Uh, we were fighting for uh, freedom because if we didn't, we would be speaking a different language, either Russian, German, and I doubt it would be Chinese at that time, but... Uh, it was necessary to go over there and help the allies because we were helping ourselves. And uh, so you get that patriotic spirit. Everybody joined in, everybody cooperated, saving paper, saving tin, cans. Uh, everyone was patriotic. Everybody. joined in the spirit. Everybody was buying war bonds. Uh, and uh, that was a great feeling. I, I could say that uh, a big difference is the acceptance of women in the service. Now, now you see that they, uh, when Dorothy went in, she was just a, a clerk that relieved the Marines to go fight. But now the women do everything in the army. They fly, they hike with the troops, uh, they shoot, they're mechanics. They, uh, I wouldn't want to wrestle with some of them, although maybe I would. There's one trooper in my unit that's left. And so I contact him every several months to see who's the last man standing. If he doesn't answer the phone, I said, it must be me. Being a veteran who's in his 90s, what would you tell people on how to live a long, healthy life? Just meeting with people. I love to talk uh, with people, like to meet them, like good people, like I don't want to say you, but I mean you very much because you brought a lot of uh, interest to me and kept me going. I love music and I love people. Well, I can honestly say for me in the 1940s ball, we can't thank you enough for sharing your time with us. It's meant a lot. Thank you, Howard. I love you guys. You know that. We love you too.
very much. Thank you. I'm really excited to bring this song to you. It's not because it's a brand new song, it's actually a very old song, but it was written by a gentleman by the name of Irving Berlin. He wrote also White Christmas, and of course with the 1940s ball, it seemed appropriate to bring maybe another song of his out to the forefront. It's a song almost all of you know and has been made famous over the decades. It was originally written in World War I, but it was never really finalized until World War II, and let's be honest, in World War II, it was desperately needed. He meant this song to actually not be a patriotic song, but really a song to express gratitude for what a country has done for its people and to express what it means to be home. This is God Bless America. Oh uh -huh. 
It was our thrill to bring all of this music and wonderful history to you. On behalf of Bianca and the Flyboys and the Denver Dolls, we were so thrilled to be able to show the National Anthem, and more importantly, the 75th anniversary of World War II. We are so excited to bring some other events coming through the day, including the Glenn Miller Orchestra, the Satin Dolls, and don't forget Greg Kyle, who's going to be presenting a lot of history for you. We can't wait to show you what we have in store. Okay. <laughs> Still getting the hang of this. Um, so we just want to say a big thank you to Bianca and the Flyboys. Big round of applause for Bianca. That was beautiful. And we really enjoyed seeing the World War II veterans. Um, and thank you to Greg Kyle for helping her. Also, we've got Greg coming up. He's going to do a piece on the Tuskegee Airmen that he's put together, especially for the ball. So now we'd like to welcome Greg Kyle. Let's do this here. Over. Here it is. Hang tight. All right, we just gotta find this here. All right, it's gonna take just a second here. I gotta re-download this. Here we go. Ah, oh, the joys of technology. All right. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the virtual 1940s ball. Uh, as the MC for much of the ball, I certainly would be loving to see you folks dancing and smiling and listening to some great tunes and taking great photos and enjoying yourselves. However, this year was not meant to be. So taking advantage of that, I'm going.
we're just going to get the audio back running here. I'm seeing that the audio is not coming through. Let's see. This is low level, but up above the bombers, the B-17 pilots, and the B-24 pilots, they were much appreciative of the doctrine that the Tuskegee Airmen and the, the Red Tails uh, followed. They tended to stick with the bombers. They figured that if they stayed there, then the German fighters would stay away from the bomber formations, and they came to be much appreciative. I'm going to start this over since there was no audio on it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the virtual 1940s ball. Uh, as the MC for much of the ball, I certainly would be loving to see you folks dancing and smiling and listening to some great tunes and taking great photos and enjoying yourselves. However, this year was not meant to be. So taking advantage of that, I'm going to give a presentation on the little known Tuskegee Airmen. Uh, I've always been attracted to unusual stories from World War II or really across the world. Uh, in, in any time period. But during World War II, there was uh, the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, and they trained a bunch of American aviators. They were Americans of African descent, and uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in a campaign promise in 1940, promised to have the Army Air Corps train uh, uh, blacks and soldiers and aviators to take the fight to Nazi Germany. So that's what he did. And here is an example of a P-51 Mustang with uh, the red tail, which helped to note that it was that particular squadron that they belonged to. So again, here's the commemorative Air Force P-51 modern day aircraft uh, to salute. Uh, the accomplishments of the Tuskegee Airmen. From here on out, I will show you some photos, and then I will work my way into a World War II era video narrated by Ronald Reagan about the Tuskegee Airmen, which is really, I think, fascinating. Again, here's the Commemorative Air Force P-51C. And here we have Benjamin O. Davis. He was the captain at the time. He was their leader during World War II. Uh, the Tuskegee Airmen looked up to him and followed his lead here. here we have some civilians making their way and reporting to him uh, to train, train to be World War II aviators. Of course, as an aviator, you should learn a little bit about your, your engines, your mechanics, your airplanes, and that's what you see here in this case. That was a P-40 engine they were exploring. This is a P-40. This airplane was relatively no, I wouldn't say obsolete, but it was not top-of-the-line fighter, but this is, of course, what they gave to the Tuskegee Airmen initially before they made their way to fly almost every other aircraft in World War II, uh, fighter aircraft and B-25s, especially uh, in the bomber uh, aspect. So about 1,000 pilots were trained at the Tuskegee Institute with about 14,000 navigators, radio, radio operators, mechanics, etc., and various folks who were support staff during World War II. You can't you usually have to have a good relationship with your, your ground crew uh, because they keep the airplane in good working order so you can go and take the fight to the enemy. Of course, in the middle of 1941, this is Eleanor Roosevelt, and the Tuskegee Institute was in, in effect training uh, aviators and she wanted to bring a little bit of attention to them. So she went down to Tuskegee, Alabama and let one of the instructors fly her around in a Piper Cub. And this brought a lot of attention to the Tuskegee Airmen. Probably uh, a lot more recruits were interested once they saw a few photos of uh, the First Lady uh, um, uh, exploring the flight characteristics of the Piper Cub. So again, during World War II training, you have to study maps. And here are some P-51s in formation. This is low level, but up above the bombers, the B-17 pilots and the B-24 pilots, they were much appreciative of the doctrine that the Tuskegee Airmen and the, the Red Tails 
uh, followed, they tended to stick with the bombers. They figured that if they stayed there, then the German fighters would stay away from the bomber formations, and they came to be much appreciated. Uh, there's a rumor that they did not lose a, a bomber aircraft during World War II. That's not true. They figure it's about 27 uh, on their watch. I mean, it's pretty pretty tough in combat to to uh, to to not lose an aircraft that you're escorting. But uh, with these long range P-51s, the B-17s and pilots and B-24 pilots and B-25s and B-26s were all quite thrilled that that they were a flying escort for them. Again, here we are in Italy. Ramatelli, Italy is where they were stationed much of the time. And you have a couple of folks working on a P-51 Mustang engine. If you ever had a chance to uh, see one of these start up uh, and stand next to it, it's, it's quite a sight. P-51s, again, close formation from below. And a uh, mechanic on a P-39 Aero Cobra. A lot of times the Tuskegee Airmen, the Red Tails, were given airplanes that were not quite as desirable uh, for other uh, duties, but they made them work and made them work effectively, uh, earning the respect of many throughout World War II. Here's some uh, airmen picking up their parachutes and making their way to their aircraft. This particular gentleman was shot down over Greece and the Greek partisans uh, spirited him away, kept him away from the Germans and allowed him to return to his uh, unit to fight again. Again, some more airmen uh, being briefed, airmen flying. A lot of times, like I said, you have to have a pretty good relationship between the pilot and the and the mechanics. And this looks to seem like uh, they are, are at least respecting each other, even though sometimes they can butt heads even even today. It's uh, fairly amusing sometimes to watch pilots and, and ground crew talk to each other. So again, some officers trying to figure out where they should send their charges uh, and on which missions they should, uh, they should uh, send them on. A drop tanks being installed on an aircraft. Some more gentlemen getting ready for the day's sorties. Uh, Lieutenant Hall was one of the first persons, was the first person of the Tuskegee Airmen to sh shoot down a German airplane. Hence the swastika. Every time you shot down a German aircraft, uh, you would put it on your aircraft and you would say, okay, well, have my ground crew paint this. And they were very proud of this. So since he was the first, they took a photo and uh, he looks quite happy. Again, some decorations of uh, some uh, Tuskegee Airmen. Now, moving on to more modern day, this is Franklin Macon. He is a local, and James Harvey. Uh, we had them out. We had a presentation with the Commemorative Air Force uh, Mile High Wing, and this is my friend George's aircraft. This is an aircraft that they would have trained in during World War II, so of course we had to get them together and uh, tell their stories. So Mr. Harvey on the right was the first Top Gun winner in 1949, and I will be showing you a... I'll show you the text that you should look up on YouTube to listen to him talk about what occurred uh, with the discrimination in 1949. They, as a group, won the fighter competition and were not given recognition really until 1995 uh, because of the discriminatory attitudes of the time. So that in itself is a, is a really interesting story. Sometimes you get to meet your heroes. And sometimes you have proof that you get to meet your heroes. And of course, this is me, Greg Kyle, with uh, the two Tuskegee Airmen who came out for the event. Um, Franklin Macon's book, I, I Wanted to Be a Pilot, I think is the name. You can find that book that's uh, on the table. That's on Amazon. And uh, I love that photo. So here we go. Uh, we're going to show you a World War II photo narrated by Ronald Reagan. miles from the enemy. These are American boys going to work. The morning fighter patrol. In search of the enemy. Enemy planes. The odds are bad this morning. Nearly three to one. But it's three Nazis spinning down in blood and flame to every one of ours. Routine morning patrol. 
Patrol. They're good planes, wonderful planes. And their pilots are good, too. Listen. Uh, yesterday, I fulfilled one of my ambitions as a combat pilot. I got one airplane. An American far from home, fighting a war around the world. Listen again. This was my leader, and the second ship was me, and two fox wolves came on my right. I turned right and put up a stone wall of bullets, and the first... A wall of bullets. It wasn't so long ago these men were students in a university. Workmen in a shipyard. Just plain citizens from everywhere USA. They changed jobs. They changed clothes. They took a train into the future. They didn't know what the future would be. But many hoped they'd get the chance to fly and fight in the air. Some wanted that chance more than anything in the world. Deep inside Alabama is a famous school called the Tuskegee Institute. It was founded on July 4th of 1881. Close to this school, the United States government determined to build an airfield. Three years ago, this was just another farm in Alabama. More than trees had to be cleared away. There was misunderstanding and distrust and prejudice to be cleared away. Three years ago, there was only an idea. But ideas are powerful things. And today, there are fighter planes flying overhead. Instead of swamp and yellow pine, there are hangars, repair shops, barracks. Instead of patches of corn, concrete flight strips. But that's not enough. You can't make a fighter squadron out of concrete and aluminum and a can of paint. It takes men. A chemistry student. A welder. A shoe salesman must learn how to fly. A group of average... Americans must become a team of fighting men with wings. There's a new world up here. A man has to learn his way around. It takes many weeks of learning to make a fighter pilot. And a lot of that learning is done in a hard wooden chair. Because a fighter pilot is a combination of a mathematician and an athlete. A scientist and a sharpshooter. He's got to know what goes on inside his plane. The heart of his fighter is steel and copper. Its bloodstream is gas and oil. But its brain is the man who flies it. He begins in a safe, slow plane. Two wings instead of one. But he flies many hours inside a closed room. In the morning... He may be flying a prescribed course over a sheet of paper. In the afternoon, he may fly the same course above the clouds. He trains his muscles down here very close to the ground, but he'll use the same sense of balance and coordination in the skies above Tuskegee. For this job of flying is never easy. And sometimes it's very, very tough. But he's learning how high and how fast and how far he must go to reach the enemy. Pilotage, dead reckoning, theory of flight, radio code. Yes, he's getting muscles in his mind. He's getting hard, keen, quick. He's coming into the clear. Here above the warm, familiar hills of Alabama, these Americans are learning to fly in those tight combat formations they'll use someday to hunt down the German above his own cities. In addition to fighter groups, a year ago this field began to train men for medium bombers. And that too was a pioneer step. But one thing it proved, you can't judge a man here by the color of his eyes or the shape of his nose. On the flight strip, you judge a man by the way he flies. Here's the answer to Adolf and Hirohito. Here's the answer. Wings for this man. Here's the answer. Wings for these Americans.
squadron after squadron out of Tuskegee, flying P-40s first, tough little planes, then striking with Thunderbolts, P-47s, then riding the Mustangs, P-51s. No, it was never easy for these men. They were pioneers, and no pioneer has it easy. They fought lies, they fought heartbreak, and they won. Now they fight the enemy on his own soil. They fought the enemy, not without loss. Out of the first class to graduate almost three years ago, only a handful are left alive so that liberty might not perish from the earth. Three years have passed since the founding of Tuskegee Airfield. 750 pilots have been trained. 50% of them have been in combat. A new road is being beaten out. Broad enough now for thousands and ten thousands. A good road for our country. These men remember that. Marching or flying. They remember backing them up. Their families. Their friends. Who expect so much of them. And backing them up the men and women of every creed and speech and color who made these planes. And backing them up, the most powerful force in the world, the strength of the American people. So once again, thank you for watching. Make sure you look up uh, Colonel James Harvey and the unknown story of the Top Gun winner in 1949. And it's a really fascinating story in his own words, and he's a local. And it's great to have him around and be able to chat with him. So thank you for watching, and have a great time the rest of the virtual 1940s ball. All right. Want to say want to say big thank you to Greg for putting that together. That was um, uh, really enjoyable to learn about the Tuskegee Airmen. And I want to remind you again that we plan to have an, an exhibit, the Red Tails, at the 1940s Ball next year. So stay tuned to our social media and our email list, and we'll be making some announcements about that soon. Yes, that was Ronald Reagan as the narrator, Loletta. Uh, Lolita. <laughs> um, yes, it was. So um, I just want to announce that next we're going to have Professor Felix coming up and he's a mentalist, um, magician, and he is absolutely amazing. He'll be coming up at 11 o'clock. And in the meantime, we're going to show you some footage of what it's like to walk around the 1940s ball at the Boulder Airport in June, which should have been happening today. Right now we would have been setting up putting airplane, World War II airplanes out and uh, setting up the hangar with our Rick's Cafe and our Jungle Outpost theme. The stage would be alive with sound checks and unfortunately with our current situation that couldn't happen this year. But um, we are very grateful to have a um, somewhat glitchy <laughs> yet wonderful way to connect with you guys regardless of the current situation. So thank you guys all for tuning in. So next we're gonna show you what it's like to walk around the real ball from your from the comforts of your own home. Let's see. Here it is. Make sure the audio gets clipped this time. Hi everyone, I'm Kenzie George, and you're listening to Jungle Outpost Radio, brought to you by the 1940s World War II era ball.
Silence and the madness and the heat. That's the thrill I'm craving, and the music is so sweet. Got that fever, jungle fever. Oh, the Congo's calling, and I long to go. Dusky maiden, dark eyed siren, Congo sweetheart. I'm coming back to you While that woman Native dream girl Jungle fever Is in my blood for you Thank you. 
Attention, skippers! Don't forget to submit your entries for the Name the Croc... Uh, correction, that's Name the Crocodile Contest. The winner will receive a one-week, all-expenses-paid cruise for one on the Jungle River of his choice. Hi, listeners. It's Tiki Brian with Jungle Outpost Radio. Coming up now is another fantastic group of the 1940s World War II era ball, the Flatterons Jazz Orchestra with their version of Jive at Five. Attention, skippers. Don't forget to submit your entries for the Name the Croc... Uh, correction, that's Name the Crocodile Contest. The winner will receive a one-week, all-expenses-paid cruise for one on the Jungle River of his choice. This is Jungle Outpost Radio. And we wanted to say a big thank you to Tiki Brian and Exotic Tiki Island Podcast for hosting today's event. And thanks to each and every one of you who have tuned into our virtual 1940s ball this year. We really appreciate you guys being a part of this with us. Yippee, yeah, there'll be no wedding bells for today. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, jingle, jangle, as I go right merrily along. Jingle, jangle, and they sing, oh, ain't you glad you're single? Jingle, jangle, and that song ain't so very far from wrong. Jingle, jangle, oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell. Oh, Lily Bell. Though I may have done some fooling, this is why I never fell. Cause I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, jingle, jangle. As I go right merrily along, jingle, jangle. They sing, oh, ain't you glad you're single? Jingle, jangle. And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Jingle, jangle. <laughs> Oh, I 
got spurs that jingle jangle. I got spurs that jingle jangle as I go jingle. Ride merrily as along. I go riding merrily along. Oh, ain't you glad? And they sing, oh, ain't you glad? And that song ain't so very far from wrong. And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell. Though I may have done some fooling, this is why I never ride. Never I got spurs that jingle jangle. I got spurs that jingle jangle. As I go riding merrily along. As I go riding merrily along. Oh, ain't you glad? And they sing, oh, ain't you glad? And that song ain't so very far from wrong. And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Since our weekly shipment of tea has been delayed, papaya juice will now be served at the four o'clock hour. As always, day radio brought to you by the nineteen. Uh, for the name the crook, uh, correction. Weekly shipment of tea has been delayed. Papaya juice will now be served at the four o'clock hour. As always, day-old crumpets will still be available. It's Tiki Brian with Jungle Outpost Radio. And coming up now is another fantastic performer of the 1940s World War II era ball. Enjoy the sounds of Dandy Wellington right here on Jungle Outpost Radio. The weather is frightening. Thunder and lightning seem to be having their way. 
Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's a lovely day. The turn in the weather will keep us together. I can honestly say that as far as I'm concerned, it's a lovely day and everything's okay. Isn't this a lovely day to be caught in the rain? Yes, you were going on your way, now you've got to remain. Just as you were going, leaving me all at sea, the clouds broke, they broke, and oh, what a break for me. I can see the sun up high, though we're caught in that storm. I can see where you and I could be cozy and warm. Let the rain then a pattern, cause it really doesn't matter if skies are gray. As long as I am here with you, it's a lovely day. Thank you. 
from the sides of the Jungle Cruise boats is strictly prohibited. Unless, of course, you happen to be fishing a relative out of the crocodile-infested waters of the Nile River. So sorry for the glitches with that. Uh, we're trying to figure out why that keeps happening. But um, next, we're going to have some live footage, which shouldn't have any of those glitches. So stay tuned. We're going to have Professor Felix coming up. And at the moment, we are going to share with you a little piece that our World War II historian, Greg Kyle, put together for you on the USO. So hang tight while I bring that up. There it is. Cast to the troops in Southern California and do you a presentation on the United States? Do you a presentation? 
to you a presentation on the United Service Organization. This organization still exists, supporting the men and women serving in the military around the world currently. It really got rolling in World War II and really played a pivotal role in making the troops feel like they were at home, even though they were not. Uh, whether they were going overseas or they were overseas, there were camp shows and lots of help was given by movie stars and the regular everyday volunteers. For instance, this is a program from Camp Reynolds for when they They closed, and this gives you some stats about what exactly they were able to do in a few short years. 2,500 volunteers spent 242,000 hours entertaining 470,000 servicemen, serving refreshments to 250,000, selling 24,000 items, busing to camp dances, working at camp hospital, Offering these extras, dancing, motion pictures, recording, reading, writing, sprucing up, skating, and others. So this is just a small sample of what they did in World War II at one camp. You can imagine how important the USO was throughout the war. And the Saturday Evening Post ended up with this cover. I think this was a lot of how people believed the USO doted on our World War II uh, service men and women and uh, it's a pretty interesting photo I like how the spoon is falling off the plate he's probably never received such care or interest from anyone and it was a very important event to uh, go through during World War II now the quintessential USO entertainer was of course Mr. Bob Hope now Mr. Bob Hope he he basically ended up giving a show, a radio show, broadcast to the troops in Southern California. And he ended up finding it to be so rewarding that he went basically his entire life entertaining troops throughout the world. But during World War II, he entertained tirelessly. Here's again is Bob Hope, Jerry Colonna. You'll see him in a lot of videos with Bob Hope as kind of being the straight man. Bob Hope uh, loading a uh, large caliber gun. Here he is again in the South Pacific. Once again. And here is one of Bob Hope's IDs, which I find entertaining because it shows you his original name, Lester. Now, I don't know if I were named Lester Hope, I would probably want to be called Bob. Just my opinion. Here's another USO camp show uh, ID, Lester Towns Hope. Shows you where he lived anyway. And again, throughout the war, you know, the United States wanted to support the USO and wanted the citizens of the United States to support the USO. And this advertisement shows that is a very important component. So much so that President Roosevelt also made this ad. USO deserves the support of every individual citizen. So as we go along, I'll show you some pictures. Some of these folks are famous movie stars, and some are not, but many of them are. But at least it gives you an idea of what the USO was able to accomplish throughout World War II in entertaining the troops. This is one of my favorites. Of course, Donald Duck. This was back when Disney was quite friendly to the armed forces and would actually use some of their talent to draw nose art. Eventually they ended up with so many requests that they stopped doing so. And, and of course, Disney is a little bit different nowadays. There's some more photos of some USO celebrities. Now the 1940s ball is not going on, but remember uh, it will occur again in the future. So I encourage all of you to take dancing lessons I teach some lessons, others teach lessons as well, and brush up on your skills so you can have a lot of fun at the upcoming 1940s ball and or the white Christmas ball. All right.
So taking the show to the troops, mobile units like the one pictured here in Jacksonville entertained more than 1.5 million servicemen within the first 90 days. Just simply astounding. Catherine Cornell and Brian Ahern in their USO Camp show performance of The Bear. of Wimple Street, sometimes performed within 15 miles of the front lines. Mr. Ahern described the soldiers coming in under the cover of darkness from their foxhole, bearded, muddy, and carrying their rifles. When the lights came on, there would be a great clicking as men fixed the safety catches on their rifles. At one performance, three rifles went off. Fascinating story. Some no more USO artwork. Now, the USO would end up using buildings in towns and, and cities all across the United States. This one in particular is in Little Rock, Arkansas. One of my goals is, is of course, to go and find these locations if they still exist and take pictures of, of where they uh, show the postcards from, like the, the previous uh, screenshot. So mobile canteen in conjunction with the Salvation Army, they would go around when the servicemen and women were traveling and offer them donuts and coffee. Here are some more USO photo, photos of those folks who are supporting our World War II veterans. And this is one of the USO shows from behind the stage. I'm unsure of who this is, but it's some famous movie star, I am sure. So USO, wherever they go. Again, a couple more photos of Bob Hope hamming it up during World War II. And the omnipresent Andrew Sisters. This is one of my favorite photos because I just find it really fascinating that it's a little bit more candid than their their posed photos that most of the time they would take uh, while they were singing they looked like they were having a lot of fun once again uso shows you could see they really packed them in entertainment was not quite as readily available back then you had some records if you could get a hold of them and a record player you had letters no television Radios were hard to come by. Here's an example of a USO camp show uh, outfit. And here's a great photo of Frank Sinatra. After one of the USO shows, uh, they brought members backstage from the 442nd. And that was the Issei and Nisei division. Uh, from World War II. Those of Japanese descent served in World War II, and thankfully they treated them a little bit better uh, during this show and got to see and get autographs from Frank Sinatra, a young Frank Sinatra. Boy, does he look a lot different than he did in his later years. Again, more, more Bob Hope photos. This is Jack Benny and I think Carol Lombard, but Jack Benny, the famous uh, uh, comedian. As you can see, all sorts of fantastic shows and talents were exhibited throughout World War II to entertain the troops. These are the official uniforms of the USO Camp Show, folks. Couple more stars on the beach. Bob Hope, once again. I told you he was everywhere. Clearly in the South Pacific, since this year's theme is uh, the Tiki and South Pacific theme, I thought throwing a few of these photos in there would, would uh, spice things up a little bit and uh, make people enjoy this presentation a little bit more.
The eyes of the world are on Detroit. This is a Camp USO camp dance. The cookie jar, it says free food for all in Dallas. So I'm sure they would stock that cookie jar with all kinds of goodies for the GIs to, to grab. Republic Aviation Girls Service Organization. So the dance volunteers with so many GIs needing to dance and just really enjoy Enjoy the company of a woman. A lot of women from the surrounding communities would go and volunteer to dance uh, at the events. Here's another example of a dance occurring at a USO uh, organization. USO Club Goldsboro, North Carolina. Now, given the South Pacific theme, USO Downtown Club Hawaii. I think this is a, these are some fascinating photos. I imagine that if you go to Hawaii and this building today would look very similar to how it does now or how it did then, excuse me. Now here's a really interesting uh, item. So you obviously, it was hard to get on the phone and call your folks way back in Iowa or small town, Indiana, uh, maybe the bigger cities, it was a little bit easier, but uh, there was the option to record your voice to a record, like any other record, like a Glenn Miller record, et cetera. And you could do this at a lot of USO locations around the world. And as you see, this voice letter was recorded at the USO club and it says from, and you sent it back to your friends or and your family and they got to hear your message on a record fascinating i think it's just i mean what a great technology back then it would have just been astounding to receive word from your um uh, your loved ones overseas yeah just pass through those duplicates i don't know how they got in there Marlena Dietrich entertains the troops. So here's the final slide. Basically, the USO says until they're home. Once they were home, once the World War II veterans came home, they disbanded a lot of USO clubs because they were not so much needed. And uh, the GIs were coming home and they were going to return to their regular lives and not serve overseas any longer. So thank you for watching this presentation on the United Service Organization. All right, thank you, Greg. Now we want to also put a plug in there for you guys to check out Tiki Brian and the Jungle Radio Outpost, Jungle Outpost Radio, which is live right now. And you can get the link to go to that on our on our Eventbrite page and also on our Facebook page. Uh, so you can listen to the wonderful 1940s radio show that he's put together for you guys. And then also wanted to say, don't forget to post your pictures. If you're dressed up and enjoying the day's activities, please post your pictures to our Facebook and Instagram as we'll be reposting them. And also the judges are looking at them all day and we'll have our king and queen of the ball being crowned at 8.30 during our, our Zoom dance party and uh, fashion contest. All right, so next we're gonna do one more historical piece with Greg, our historian, and then we're gonna have our very wonderful mentalist coming up, Professor Felix. So stay tuned, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab Greg again here. The next piece is gonna be on Hollywood stars that were in World War II. This is Greg Kyle again, and uh, often I end up hosting the 1940s ball, and in doing so, I am unable to give some wonderful presentations that I give elsewhere. This is one of my most well-received presentations about the Hollywood actors in World War II, and 
I'll start off with Clark Gable because if you had a quintessential actor who looked good in a World War II uniform, this is him. Uh, many of them looked fantastic, but I mean, he was a movie star for a reason. He had the looks, the voice, and uh, acting ability as well. So I'm going to move forward with some more Clark Gable photos. There's another picture of him in the 8th Air Force is where he served. I think he flew six or seven missions on B-17s as a waste gunner. I can only imagine the coup that Hitler would have enjoyed. for his capture. There he is as a waste gunner again in a B-17. And of course, the side-by-side -side photos of the headshot for Clark Gable and him in a uniform from the 8th Air Force. U.S. Army Air Corps or U.S. Army Air Forces. So the rest of these photos or many of these photos will actually be side-by-side -side shots. So you will be able to recognize some of these uh, actors. as we go along. Of course, Alex Haley from Roots. All right, guys, we're having a little bit of technical problems with that, so I'm going to restart it. Hang on tight real quick here. And endure actor who looked good the coup that force, U.S. Army Air Corps or U.S. Army Air Forces. So the rest of these photos or many of these photos will actually be side by side shots. So you will be able to recognize some of these uh, actors as we go along. Of course, Alex Haley from Roots, not from Roots, excuse me, the author of Roots. He ended up writing a book that was incredibly popular. And of course, here we see him when he was serving in the Navy. Benny Hill, many of you grew up with the comedian Benny Hill. He served in World War II, and he's a British comedian. Charles Bronson, of course, he served as well. David Niven, another famous British actor who was in many, many movies over the years in the 50s and 60s and 70s. Another photo of David Niven. And for you Star Trek fans out there, I'm sure you recognize the doctor, DeForest Kelly. Here he is in a very blurry photo, but he served in World War II as well, along with a couple of other Star Trek actors who I will also show you photos of. Ernest Borgnine served in the Navy. And this is Gene Roddenberry. While he was not an actor, he created Star Trek. And many of us are grateful for that because it's a great show. Uh, the earlier ones and the next generation were the ones that he, I think, had the uh, his ability to uh, bring forth to the small screen. Gerald Ford, one of our presidents, served as well and of course henry fonda he served in the navy i think he enlisted in 19 or as a 37 year old i believe uh, because he said he didn't want to stay home and make movies he would rather go and serve in the navy another photo of henry fonda 
And this is Hugh Hefner of some kind of fame. I'm not quite sure if I remember uh, what he did uh, in the publishing world, but that's Hugh Hefner. Jackie Coogan. Jackie Robinson served as well. during World War II. And of course, here we have Scotty. Now, legend has it that he lost a couple of fingers. In the invasion of Normandy, and if you look closely during his Star Trek day, he never shows his hands because he was missing a couple of fingers. Okay, we're having some problems with this one again, so I'm gonna reboot it. Hang tight. The omnipresent Jimmy Stewart. He had a wonderful and long career throughout the Air Force, but uh, on into the Strategic Air Command days. And st he started in World War II as a pilot on B-24s. Here he is in his younger days. And here's Jimmy Stewart once again, giving instruction or going over maps uh, to his bomber crew. This is Joe Frazier. Joe Frazier served as well, a famous boxer. And one of our presidents, John F. Kennedy. He ended up serving on a PT boat called PT-109. It ended up sinking. He ended up rescuing multiple uh, 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 sailors from his ship. And it's really a fascinating story. Uh, about how he survived in the South Pacific, going from island to island until he was rescued by friendly forces. John Glenn. This was Pope Ratzinger. He served actually in, as, uh, in the Hitler Youth. I don't really know uh, for Germany. I'm not sure exactly how involved he was later on in his uh, post-teenage years, but he served as well during World War II. Kirk Douglas of many, many, many movies. And I am drawing a blank on this particular, oh man, the Dirty Dozen. Um, Mission Impossible. I can't remember his name, but you all recognize his face. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on that one. Lyndon Baines Johnson. Here he is in a photo serving during World War II, side by side with a presidential photo. This is Max Schmeling. He was a famous boxer in the late 30s, and he went on to fight for Germany as a paratrooper. Mickey Rooney. Mickey Rooney was ever present, apparently, entertaining the troops as much as possible, going from a child star to entertaining the troops. Here's another photo of Mickey Rooney with his mother at some sort of a special event. I don't know which, but I'd say they look a lot alike. Of course, the blue eyes himself, Paul Newman. Here he is serving in World War II on the left and then a publicity still on the right. There is the photo from his days serving in World War II that is not colorized. Uh, Char um, Richard Burton, excuse me, Richard Burton. 
another famous actor. He served during World War II as well. Rock Hudson. He was quite famous in a lot of movies uh, for his, played a lot of tough guy roles. And Tony Curtis, one of the best movies ever made, or at least that's what many people think, is Some Like It Hot. And he did a great job in that movie. And he, I, he looks mischievous even back in his World War II photos. We need to reboot this one more time. It's almost over. And then we're going to have Professor Felix. So hang tight. And he always seemed mischievous in all of the movies that he starred in. And here's Tony Curtis. Burgess Meredith served as well. And this is, I can't remember now. Um, oh, this is Gene Autry. Gene Autry, I believe with Carol Lombard and someone else. He served in World War II. And, Mr. Warmth himself, Don Rickles. Here's a photo of him serving in the Navy. I believe standing next to his father and later publicity shot. And the omnipresent, if you grew up in the 80s watching Mel Brooks movies, this particular individual did serve in World War II. And from what he tells, he says he was a cut up and he would sing over to the German lines and, and make all kinds of noise and racket and try to get them to sing back, you know, at night when there really wasn't much going on during World War II. But this is a pretty fascinating story as well. And here is one of the best and most well-known band leaders. He served in World War II. This is Glenn Miller. Glenn Miller came from the University of Colorado and spent a couple of years there and then quit to pursue his musical career. He also grew up in Fort Morgan, Colorado from the age, I believe, eight on. So there is a museum out there. And one of the best museums for Glenn Miller and uh, depositories for Glenn Miller artifacts is in the CU Boulder campus, the old main building. They have three of his four trombones and I do believe that they're missing one of them. So if anyone knows where that fourth trombone is, by all means, let me or the Glenn Miller archives at the University of Colorado know. Okay, we'll be moving on to another slideshow here shortly. All right. We are going to present to you Professor Felix up next. Let me get the screen off here and bring Professor Felix in. Hi, Professor Hi, Felix. Hi, I'm happy to see you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I'm delighted to be here. It's uh, so good to see you. All right. Well, I'm going to just introduce you and then let you take it away. Um, okay. So our next act is a career performer who has headlined in Las Vegas and has been appearing regularly in person at the annual 1940s ball. We bring you Professor Felix. Thank you, Professor Thank you Felix. So <laughs> I trust you'll stick around. I, uh, I will. <laughs> I have cracked my brain coming up with different things that I want to share with you. I have so much that I want to share with you. But, uh, there are three challenges in what I do and this particular media. So I, for uh, instance, you know, often the things will have someone select a, a play and type of thing. And if I were to have you simply as I go through, if you interact with me and I have you come to the top, and I didn't look to help the card out, well, I'm looking at the screen as a public person that I can do it. However, I believe that we can do this uh, interactively, uh, more or less, please, so I am here to buy. So what I've decided to do is to make a decision. And I will do that in front of you. Uh, and I'll take the slide here, and I will be 
I will share with you part of it here. Sorry to stop you, Felix, but we're having a garbled issue with the audio. Let's I see. I don't know how to fix that. Technology. Uh, let's see. You know, it seems to be better when, um, can everybody hear him now? Where we're sharing a screen together? <laughs> I don't know why when it went to the one screen. Let's see. How can I make it? Make you big and me small at least here. Uh, okay. Um, try, try now. I will try. I'm more or less testing a microphone as we do this. <laughs> if you hear me, I'm going to finish making a bit of prediction and then I'll try to share that by screen. I've changed my mind. All right. Uh, on this side, I will write something that I will share with you. And let us go with, please forgive my handwriting. I'm writing in the air. I'm going to share this with you. I hope that you can read this. Uh, I have written fifth on there. And the reason I've done that is because I believe that we have enough people watching. I'm going to leave this right here so that you can see it. I believe we have enough people watching that if you simply think of a playing card, any one of the 54 that are available, if you want to be silly and select a joker, that adds up to 54. Uh, I want you to type that in now, and I believe that uh, Kenzie, as our moderator, will be able to read those responses. Yes. Great. I will leave this out here. Let me know when we have uh, at least five responses, just any playing card. It may take, uh, I'm aware that there might be just a little bit of a delay. Yeah. Ace of spades? That's the fifth. Um, okay, one, two. Uh, actually, one more. Okay. Queen of hearts. The queen of hearts. I was glad that it was not the ace of spades <laughs> because that is not what I've written. I will share this with you. I'm going to hold it up to the screen. Wow. <laughs> Did we make it? We made it. <laughs> Forgive the handwriting. I was writing in the air, but uh, we made it. So that is good. That is fantastic. Uh, one of the things that I share in my shows most often, it's, uh, it's requested for every show, and that is uh, a, an act of metal bending. That was not popular in the 1940s. Uh, however, a lot of mysticism was popular in the 40s. Uh, there was a great enemy of the mystics uh, earlier in the century uh, by a man who called himself Harry Houdini. He was uh, an enemy of the psychics and the mystics because he would go out and debunk these things. Uh, this is a demonstration of essentially psychokinesis and one that uh, is, like I mentioned, commonly uh, requested, and that is the absolute uh, destruction of a fork. A couple of benefits with this medium. Uh, one is that you have a great benefit. I've performed this for audiences as large as 700 to 1,000 people. And uh, so way in the back, as you can imagine, they can't see it. So this is offers you a, a nice close-up look. Uh, this is, I assure you, a regular fork. If you're here in person, I would let you uh, test this. But the objective here is to get this to bend, which wasn't really popularized in uh, psychic proof until the 1960s uh, and 70s with a man called Uri Geller. Uh, but uh, I will display this as best I can. This is just a stolen restaurant fork, uh, nothing more than that. But uh, we will give this a bend, and hopefully I can do this up here so that you're able to see this. And uh, great, that's a fantastic start. That's good. Uh, that is a nice bend. I do like to put just a little bit of the handle, and then I share that with uh, whoever I've I've dragged up on stage, uh, and I will I will mail this to you, Kenzie. <laughs> However, uh, we're not we're not finished mangling it, I suppose. So, uh, let's straighten it back out so that you can see it. And uh, I'm going to try this up close to the camera here. Get just a little bit out of it. Yes, yes, yes. Good, 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 good. Excellent. I'm going to try to display this as close as I can. Uh, we have managed to twist it just a little bit, which is 
And I'm oh my gosh. I know. <laughs> physically, it would be nearly impossible to untwist this point, uh, even with tools. Uh, I'm fond of this one. So I'll come back to that. We've done it already. So if we do it again, we have to add a little. And uh, to do that, I'm going to hold it up here and just get one. There's two. Good, good, good. Oh. <laughs> third one there. That is all three. That is, I'm happy with that. That's good. Uh, it's not going to function well as a fork now. <laughs> it's a diet fork. I'll tell you what. I, I did promise I'd send it to you, but uh, I'll at least turn it into a sculpture here. Oh. And these are lucky, so I will. I will make sure that you get that, Kinsey. Oh. <laughs> Can't wait for that one. <laughs> <laughs> we, I may revisit that here. <laughs> but, uh, I have so much I want to share with you. Uh, I talked about. I talked about magicians and mediums and that kind of thing. And I, I certainly uh, started my career as a magician. I still include a lot of magic in my shows. I don't claim to have any supernatural abilities or anything. But I was inspired to create a demonstration uh, that uh, discusses a bit about uh, uh, magicians and what you might see in a magic show. Uh, if you haven't seen one live, uh, certainly you've seen one in person. And there are a number of, of commonalities when you when you see one of those bigger shows, uh, most likely with wild cats, uh, big ones. But uh, this. It's just designed to, to demonstrate something that I've seen on stage, but to add to it a little bit. Uh, of course, uh, these boxes would be huge as they come out on stage. And uh, this one seems to be full, so we will empty that. Uh, the, in addition to the box, uh, most likely, say you were to see uh, someone's sawn in half. Uh, that was the premise of, of the whole setup. So I wanted to introduce uh, something that could be equally disastrous. And so I've brought around a cup. Uh, this is a can of juice I borrowed from one WC Fields. And we'll see if we have any left here. <laughs> and I hope this is readable on camera. It looks like we have precisely enough. So the, the introduction of the assistant uh, and the box is to set up a bit of danger and uh, the potential of disaster. So I will take my lovely assistant, place it into the box nice and gently so I don't spill it and close the box. On stage, the boxes, the large ones, are usually rotated by uh, uh, dancers so that you can see all sides of the box. And uh, that's well and good, but there are a number of things that they don't show you. For instance, they won't uh, display the top of the box because it's nearly impossible to do that. Uh, they won't display, for that matter, the bottom of the box. Uh, you don't get to see in these efforts the bottom of the box. Of course, uh, rotating any of those large pieces of equipment would be rather difficult, but I did want to introduce the idea that there should, could be something uh, terribly disastrous by showing you all sides of the box. However, if I'm lucky, we still have a full glass of juice and nothing left. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Very well, well done. done. What the heck? Well done. I love that I can hear you. <laughs> it occurs to me, I would like to share something related. And let us do this. I have a bit here, I'll save that for later. Uh, managed to get a bit more out of that. Another demonstration that I'm often asked to share with my audiences uh, is, is one that is, uh, I admit, a little bit silly. And so I've decided to take it uh, to a sillier degree, if you will. And it's for that reason that I'm going to build myself just a, a bit of a set here because I've rummaged around and discovered that I have one of these, which is a uh, just a lazy Susan. I have, in addition to that, a tray. I'm going to leave the tray here and the drink on the tray. 
I'll be introducing a couple other things, but I, uh, I trust that these are, are visible. And we have three empty glasses, so I want to remedy that. I also want to make this interesting and potentially dangerous, which is why I have this. This is a quart of motor oil. This is 5W30 motor oil. Uh, like any responsible television person, I've covered up the, the, the brand because they're not a sponsor, but I'm going to crack this open. I'll, I believe you should be able to hear that this is brand new. Well, you couldn't hear, but I have cracked it open. And we are going to pour about an equal amount into the other glasses. There's one. I assure you this is the real thing. I suppose if I were a smarter man, I might have replaced this with something ingestible, but uh, this is in fact motor oil. We have three glasses that match the depth of the first one. This is where things get interesting. Uh, I will sh I will share this stuff with you one at a time, and then it will go where you believe it's going to go. It begins with this uh, roll of gaff tape, the theater and music industry's version of duct tape. We use this stuff for everything. I use it for more than it is prescribed, which is where we're going with this. I'm going to tear a few of these off. I assure you also that this is real. I believe you can at least hear the sound of it as it comes off. That is three, and this last one I will tear it in half. We use this stuff in theater because uh, it is not reflective, and also uh, if you take it off within a few weeks, it doesn't leave much of a residue. In the in addition to the tape, I have a couple of coins. These are uh, dollar-sized coins. They are not uh, currency, however. These are parking tokens from the Stanley Hotel where I recently had a residency. Uh, these, I assure you, are uh, solid, solid brass. I believe you can see that. Uh, I will be using those in a moment. And finally, I have this. This is a stainless steel blindfold. This was uh, made by a man in Colorado. And uh, he has no idea what I do for a living. And I thought that was funny, so I never told him. But uh, all of this stuff is going to go where you believe it's going to go. And I will be removing my eyeglasses. Uh, two things will happen when I take my eyeglasses off. The first one, of course, is that I'll be rendered about half blind. Generally, that's not good enough for everybody, which is why I have this other stuff. The other thing that happens is that I will even more closely resemble Stephen Colbert. Just have to acknowledge I know. Again, this is all going to go where you believe it's going to go, and that begins with me taking one of the coins and one of the pieces of tape. I'm going to place one of the coins directly in the middle of the piece of tape. And why anyone would do this for a living, I can't explain. But that gets firmly taped into the eye socket. I believe that you can see the silhouette of the coin there. I can no longer see. When the second one goes on, my work gets a little more difficult, but you'll see me fiddle about. There's the second coin, and I'm going to place that on my other eye. I believe you can see the silhouette of that one as well. And we have a couple more. This one, uh, you'll appreciate this, Kinsey. This is just for the even waxing. <laughs> that is three pieces of tape. And I have one more. I thought I had, there it is. This one was inspired by a show I did a few years ago. Uh, a man approached me outside the theater after the show and he swore to me I could see through my nostrils. So this is for you. <laughs> my family is so proud. <laughs> All right, I should have one last piece to add, which is a blindfold and I'm going to place that on now. This is part of the benefit of being seated for this because I know my table is here. <laughs> that means I have this. And uh, here's where we give it a little roulette wheel spin. I can hear it rotating just a little bit. In fact, I'm going to do it again just to seal the deal. I can also, because I can hear it rotate, I can hear it stop. I believe it has stopped. And I'm going to try this. I'm going to do it quickly. 
there's nobody here. I'm all by myself. So uh, if I make a mistake, uh, it would be fascinating. <laughs> it's such a good idea this morning. <laughs> all right. Really did seem like such a good idea. Measuring my distance so I know about where each glass is. I wonder how many people out there in watching me do this kept track of or kept track of the location of the consumable. You know, technically, all four of these glasses have poison in them. I just have a shameful tolerance for one. You made it. You made it. Wow. <laughs> not the smartest thing I've done today, but not the dumbest. All of this will come off. for it. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing, Felix. Oh, thank you, Shucks. Uh, let me know if I've lost my eyebrows. <laughs> oh, God. I would have knocked yeah. over all the glasses. <laughs> Very well done. Oh, thank you, Shucks. Are we out of time? No, you have you have um, definitely have more time. Go go for it. We're, people are really enjoying this. Oh, are they good? Uh, that's that's good. I'm uh, very strange. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mentioned that I might revisit the fork, and I, I think I, I will. In that, uh, you know, when I when I do these routines, as you can imagine, I've done it before, and uh, and they're designed to move quickly when I'm on uh, stages uh, anywhere in the world. Generally, I'm set to uh, a very specific time limit, of course. So I thought I might try to share, it's, it's going to be just a little bit slower, but I want to share a more visual one than if I'm afforded uh, on stage. So uh, let me grab another one here. I believe you can see that guy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, uh, again, I'm going to try to do this slowly and visually as we uh, close out the set here, and I believe you'll be able to see this happen. I'm gonna try to do it without all of the shaking and the, the dancing and moving around. And in the meantime, I can tell you that Felix is my real name. And <laughs> this, this actually is the spelling of it. Oh, wow. I recently paid for something with a credit card and the, the nice cashier uh, read my name on my credit card and asked, uh, how do I pronounce it? She, she said, uh, how do you pronounce this? And I said, oh, I know it's a mess. Uh, it's just Felix. She said, wow, you don't see it spelled like that every day, do you? No. Every day. <laughs> you right. have a very creative family. Every single day. <laughs> there was a nuisance until the internet came along and I was able to get the URL. I believe we've managed to get quite a bit, just uh, two fingers. I, it's oh nice my to gosh. Uh, hopefully you've been able to to see that happen as I'm talking uh, yeah. about my silly name, but I believe that is a, uh, that's a good. Robin yeah, says the granddaughter and her are amazed. She was a, a worried you were gonna grab the wrong glass. <laughs> 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 I hope my mother isn't watching. <laughs> that is pretty damn, pretty damn amazing, Professor Felix. Wait, oh, we got another you. comment thank from a uh, Heather Watson. Let's see what she has to say. Uh, choop choop that one. Let's see. She says bravo. <laughs> and we've got uh, bravissimo here with uh, oh, thank you, John. John. <laughs> thank you, John. <laughs> And uh, must be very much uh, uh, like me, you know, I have an affection for an era that predates my own existence. I believe you can tell by looking at me, but uh, uh, we're all alike. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope you can tell I love this. And I look forward to the 1940s ball every single year. And it is a special treat that I should get to uh, revisit that uh, from my home. 
uh, the, the 1940s ball is an important part of, of every year for me. And Kinsey, uh, thank you so much. Uh, oh, you're my really gosh. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be able to have you on this because usually at the ball, there it's just absolute chaos, you know, running around, putting things out. And I don't get to sit and watch your show. So I, know, I, I, I mentioned to you it. before, this is a clever way for you to finally get to see your own event. Yes, I love it. I get to see you up front and close and, and be a part of your show. And I don't know, that that really means a lot to me. So there's lots of silver linings in yeah. um virtual world so i can't thank you enough felix for joining us oh thank you so much for having me round of applause for professor felix and thank we you all. thank you for being here enjoy this event all day long oh i <laughs> just see it reading these all it's really really good comments thank you felix we love you and thank you so much for being a part of this and for being a part of the ball and we can't wait to have you on our stage next time thank you so much thank you <laughs> All right. So what did you guys think of Professor Felix? <laughs> He's amazing. He's a really great guy, too. Um, all right, so we have the Satin Dolls coming up next. I know all of you have been waiting to see the Satin Dolls, and they are going to be live from the United Kingdom, from London, all the way from London, and from Hollywood. I heard earlier, well, actually last night, very late last night in the wee hours while we were putting this together, that there are going to be 12 Satin Dolls that are going to be part of this live show. So you guys are really in for a big treat. And... Uh, that's going to be coming up at noon. So we have 30 minutes until then. I want to plug a couple things and then I'm going to show you some more footage from the ball until they come on live. So please make sure to check out the Tiki Brian Jungle Outpost Radio, which is going on right at the same time as this. And you can go back and forth and listen to the radio show and then come back and check this out. The link for that is on the Eventbrite page and also on our Facebook page in the, um, the, the bio in the About Us. Um, don't forget to post your pictures if you're if you're joining us and getting dressed up and eating some vintage food, 40s style food and having a tiki drink. Uh, post your pictures on our Facebook and on our Instagram because we'll repost them. And um, we'll also show them to the judges for the 8.30 p.m. Zoom 1940s dance and fashion contest. And there's some really, really good prizes for that, including um, some lingerie from what Katie did beautiful escape map lingerie and VIP tickets and dinner and drinks for the winner, male and female. So definitely post your pictures and join us at 8.30 for the Zoom party. Um, oh, I also wanted to remind you that all of the artists today are performing for free. So please, if you can, send them a tip and whatever you can afford, just something to, to show them how much we appreciate them while they're going through some hard times, just like we all are. But every little bit helps. And uh, these artists are really amazing and we really appreciate what they they've done and brought to the table for today's activities. All right. So, um, next we're going to have some footage choo, 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 from the ball to share with you. Let me grab that. Here it is. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Kenzie George, and you're listening to Jungle Outpost Radio, brought to you by the 1940s World War II era ball. Thank <laughs> you. 
some trouble with these videos today. I'm going to restart this one. It only takes a second here.
We're having a couple technical issues with this. All right, hang tight. Somebody will get this all worked out at some point. We're all still new to this virtual world. All right, here we go. Oh, <laughs> 
for the name the croc uh, correction that's name the crocodile contest the winner will receive a one week all expenses paid cruise for one on the jungle river of his choice hi listeners it's tiki brian with jungle outpost radio coming up now is another fantastic group of the 1940s world war ii era ball the flatterons jazz orchestra with their version of jive at five skippers don't forget to submit your entries for the name the croc uh, correction that's name the crocodile contest the winner will receive a one week all expenses paid cruise for one on the jungle river of his choice this is jungle outpost radio and we wanted to say a big thank you to tiki brian and exotic tiki island podcast for hosting today's event and thanks to each and every one of you who have tuned into our virtual 1940s ball this year. We really appreciate you guys being a part of this with us. Yippee, there'll be no wedding bells for today. Cause I got spurs that jingle, jingle, jingle. Jingle, jangle. As I go right merrily along. They sing, oh, ain't you glad to sing, And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell. Oh, Lily Bell. Oh, Lily Bell. Though I may have done some fooling, this is why I never fell. Cause I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. Jingle, jangle. As I go right merrily along. Jingle, jangle. They sing, oh, ain't you glad to sing, Jingle, jangle. And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Jingle, jangle. <laughs> Thank you. 
got spurs that jingle jangle. I got spurs that jingle jangle jingle. As I go riding merrily along. As I go riding merrily along. Oh, ain't you glad? And they sing, oh, ain't you glad? And that song ain't so very far from wrong. And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell, though I may have done some fooling, this is why I never lie, I never I got spurs that jingle jangle, I got spurs that jingle jangle, as I go right merrily along, as I go right merrily along, oh, ain't you glad, and I sing, oh, ain't you glad, and that song ain't so very far from wrong, and that song ain't so very far from wrong. Since our weekly shipment of tea has been delayed, papaya juice will now be served at the four o'clock hour. As always, day old crumpets will still be available. with Jungle Outpost Radio, and coming up now is another fantastic performer of the 1940s World War II era ball. Enjoy the sounds of Dandy Wellington right here on Jungle Outpost Radio. The weather is frightening, thunder and lightning seem to be having their way. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's a lovely day. The turn in the weather will keep us together. I can honestly say that as far as I'm concerned, it's a lovely day and everything's okay. Isn't this a lovely day to be caught in the rain. Yes, you are going on your way. Now you've got to remain. Just as you are going, leaving me all at sea. The clouds broke, 
They've broken, oh, what a break for me. I can see the sun up high, though we're caught in that storm. I can see where you and I could be cozy and warm. Let the rain then pattern, because it really doesn't matter if skies are gray. As long as I am here with you, it's a lovely day.
of this and get ready for the satin dolls. Let's get. Right, so it is 12 o'clock and see if we can pull them in here. Here they are. All right.
Hey guys, so we're having some technical issues with getting their live stream in. So if you want to watch while we're fixing them, you can click on our Facebook page and it's stream a lot. Uh, set up. So I'm really excited to be here, really excited to meet all of you guys. Thank you so, so much, ladies. Miss Ella? Well, I do think that uh, I'll take the next one and don't I'll worry. Hear them in the yeah, I'm going to keep it on a positive note. So yeah, so click on our Facebook page. It's just Facebook dot nineteen or nineteen forties ball. So that's the uh, it's Facebook dot com slash nineteen forties ball, and the picture will be very clear. And come back here afterwards because we have a bunch of other stuff to show you. But for some reason, this this streaming because I think there's a lot going on with it um, is just not coming through. So we're going to be working on that. But in the meantime, we don't want you to miss any of their show. So please do go over to our Facebook page to watch while we're fixing this.
All right. Thanks for everybody who tuned into our Satin Dolls show. Now we're going to come back to our main link. I think we've gotten some of the uh, technical problems worked out. A little uh, mischievous second monitor seemed to have been causing some of that. Um, so next we have coming up Tom Carradine's Cockney sing-along, which you guys are going to absolutely love. My husband and I were out at Twinwood this past summer and we saw him performing and we just both stopped and stared like, what is this person? Who is this? He's amazing. He's just an exceptional entertainer and we are so grateful to have him a part of this show. We did, uh, have plans to have him out next year. We couldn't make it happen this summer. So it turns out, hopefully, as everything goes as planned, he'll be here for the rescheduled Jungle Outpost themed event. So we have him at the event that we wanted anyway. <laughs> so this is really great. He's gonna be coming up here in just 25 minutes, uh, all the way from London. And he's gonna perform for you guys a sing-along. So you wanna make sure um, the big part of this is that you have to have your song sheet so you can sing along, which is absolutely amazing um, to be able to do this virtually. And we're going to do it. He's going to do the same performance he does with hundreds of people around him singing. You guys are going to sing from where you are and you type in the comments and we'll all be in this together. It's going to be really, really enjoyable um, experience to do virtually. So go to his website. I'm going to pop it up on the screen right now. So you can see where exactly to go and you got to download or just open the song sheets for the, for the ball. He has a whole playlist that he's going to do. Here it is. Um, let me open this and then open up uh, the song sheets and have them ready to go for when he comes on. And in the meantime, here is the, the link. So that's the link that you go to. And I am going to type it into the comments as well. So that you can click on that and get your song sheets. There we go. Okay, so it should be in the in the um, in the comments, you can click on that link, get the song sheets and be ready at two o'clock when he comes on and you guys are going to have your socks blown off by this guy. He's exceptional just an exceptional performer um are one of our favorites so get ready for that and in the meantime i am going to play for you a little bit more of the behind the scenes from the 1940s ball we have just about 20 minutes to go so let's pull that up so you have something to watch in the meantime and fingers crossed what we did while the satin dolls were on to help with the tech stuff is going to fix the problem. <laughs> torture, absolute torture. Um, all right, here we go. Let's see, we want to screen share. Okay, that didn't work. Hang tight. Here it is. All right, pause that there. There we go. Hi everyone, I'm Kenzie George, and you're listening to Jungle Outpost Radio. Brought to you by the 1940s World War II era ball. Thank you. 
Submit your entries for the name the croc uh, correction. That's name the crocodile contest. The winner will receive a one week all expenses paid cruise for one on the jungle river of his choice. Hi, listeners. It's Tiki Brian with Jungle Outpost Radio. Coming up now is another fantastic group of the 1940s World War II era ball, the Flatterons Jazz Orchestra with their version. Attention, skippers. Don't forget to submit your entries for the Name the Croc... Uh, correction, that's Name the Crocodile Contest. The winner will receive a one-week all-expenses-paid cruise for one on the Jungle River of his choice. This is Jungle Outpost Radio. And we wanted to say a big thank you to Tiki Brian and Exotic Tiki Island Podcast for hosting today's event. And thanks to each and every one of you who have tuned into our virtual 1940s ball this year. We really appreciate you guys being a part of this with us. Yippee, yeah, there'll be no wedding bells for today. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, jingle, jangle, as I go riding merrily along. Jingle, jangle, and they sing, oh, ain't you glad you're single? Jingle, jangle, and that song ain't so very far from wrong. Jingle, jangle, oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell. Oh, Lily Bell. Oh, Lily Bell. Though I may have done some fooling, this is why I never fell. Cause I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, jingle, jangle. As I go right merrily along, jingle, jangle. They sing, oh, ain't you glad you're single? Jingle, jangle. And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Jingle, jangle. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
got spurs that jingle jangle. I got spurs that jingle jangle as jingle. As I go riding merrily as along. As I go riding merrily along. And they sing, oh, ain't you glad and you sing? Oh, ain't you glad you sing? And that song ain't so very far from wrong. And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell, though I may have done some fooling, this is why I never run. Cause never I got spurs play. that jingle jangle. I got spurs that jingle jangle. As I go right merrily As I go right merrily along. And they sing, oh, ain't you glad And they sing, oh, ain't you glad And that song ain't so bad. Since our weekly shipment of tea has been delayed, papaya juice will now be served at the four o'clock hour. As always, day old crumpets will still be available. It's Tiki Brian with Jungle Outpost Radio. And coming up now is another fantastic performer of the 1940s World War II era ball. Enjoy the sounds of Dandy Wellington right here on Jungle Outpost Radio. The weather is frightening. Thunder and lightning seem to be having their way. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's a lovely day. A turn in the weather will keep us together. I can honestly say that as far as I'm concerned, it's a lovely day and everything's okay. Isn't this a lovely day to be caught in the rain? Yes, you were going on your way and now you've got to remain. Just as you were going, leaving me all at sea, the clouds broke, they broke, and oh, what a break for me. I can see the sun up high, though caught in that storm. 
I can see where you and I could be cozy and warm. Let the rain hit a pattern, cause it really doesn't matter if skies are gray. As long as I am here with you, it's a lovely day. Hey everyone, um, we had the pleasure of seeing our next performer at the Twinwood Festival, where he put on an absolutely amazing set. There were dark and uncertain times during the Blitz, but people kept their spirits up by singing beloved songs around the, the piano. Mr. Tom Carradine's Cockney sing-along, Around the Old Joanna, is a complete hoot. You'll probably know most of the songs, but I would encourage you to check out his songbook, which can be found at www.carradinescockneysingalong.co.uk. Once again, all the artists are donating their time for free. So please, if you can, maybe purchase a CD or leave a tip in the virtual tip jar. Once again, that's Caradine's Cockney Sing Along. Um, dot co dot UK. Without further ado, from across the pond, the fantastic Mr. Tom Caradine. Yay! Car Let me just pull him in here. <laughs> Hi, Hello. Tom. Hi, Daisy. Hi, Andrew. Nice to see you. Well, good afternoon to you. Good evening to my viewers in the UK and uh, whatever time it is around the world. Welcome to my little um, jungle outpost here in Tunbridge in Kent. So uh, it's great to be able to join you today. Oh, it's great to have you. <laughs> Hopefully coming through to you loud and clear. It's great that you can join us for a bit of a sing-along. As Andrew very kindly said, if you want the sing-along lyrics to this, then do join in there at Caradine's Cockney singalong.co.uk. So I thought we'd start with some old London songs. These ones all popular during the Second World War. And we're going to start with this one on the first page. It goes like this. And the verse goes, Lambeth, you've never seen. The skies ain't blue, the grass ain't green. It hasn't got that Mayfair touch, but that don't matter very much. We play the Lambeth way, not like you, but a bit more gay. And when we have a lot of fun, Oh boy, here we go then. Any time you're on Lambeth Way, any evening, any day, you'll find us all. What do you find us? Doing the Lambeth Walk. What? Every little Lambeth gal, with a little Lambeth pal, you'll find us all. What do you find us? Oh, come on, let's see you at home. Everything free and easy, do as you know not well pleasing. Why don't you make your way there? Go there, stay there. Once you get down Lambeth Way, every evening, every day, you'll find us all. What do you find us? Doing the Lambeth. Hey. hey, you've got it. There we go. <laughs> this is swing for this one, okay? Here we go. Now, actually, this one, as much as we think of it as an old-fashioned Cockney song, I'll let you into a little secret. It's actually an American song. It was originally an advertising jingle, a kind of beer garden drinking song for the Anheuser Busch Brewery, who, of course, brew Budweiser beer. So this is bringing an English song back to you in the States. It goes like this. Come, come. Come and make eyes at me down at the old ball and bush. Da, 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 da. Come, come, drink some port wine with me down at the old ball and bush. Hear the little German band. Da, 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 da. Just let me hold your hand, in. Do, do, come and have a drink or two down at the old ball and bush. Bush, bush. Well, I think you'll find a bit of a running theme this afternoon that many of these songs that we think are British sing-along classics are actually American imports. 
So here's an old uh, song which came across of the, uh, in the late 1800s and became a sing-along classic over here. It's also sung by West Ham Football Club. It's their anthem. It goes like this. I'm forever blowing bubbles, reading bubbles in the air. They fly so high, nearly reach the sky. Then like my dreams, they fade and die. Fortune's always hiding. I've looked everywhere. I'm forever blowing bubbles, pretty bubbles in the air. Now, no excuses, you all know this one, don't you? Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't afford a carriage, but you'll look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle maple too. Here we go, here's an old musical song for you with a classic Cockney interjection. I'm going to teach you, it goes like this. Let's all go down the strand, have a banana. Okay, okay, at this point you all have to sing, have a banana. It's a classic Cockney interjection that fits perfectly in that moment. Here we go after three. One, two, three. Let's all go down the strand. Have a banana. Let's all go down the strand. Have a banana. I'll be leader. You go, Kenzie. <laughs> I'm with me. I forgot so my microphone. Let's all go down the strand. Have a banana. Oh, God, a happy band. That's the place so far, the noise all amongst the girls and boys, and let's all go down the strand. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London so, have a banana. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I think of her wherever I go. I get a funny feeling inside of me, just walking up and down. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London town. One more time, here we go. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London so have a banana. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I think of her wherever I go. I get a funny feeling inside of me just walking up and down. Here we go, big finish. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I love London town. <laughs> there we go. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Tom Caradine from Caradine's Cockney Sing Along. Here based, I'm not actually in London, I'm in Tunbridge in Kent, just outside London. So it's great to welcome you to my music room here in my little jungle outpost. And I'm, I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to take my pith helmet off. Um, I don't think I can cope with that on all evening. On oh, my word, my hair is awful. With my with, in the in my lockdown uh, lockdown jungle outpost, my hair's been growing crazy. So apologies for the uh, the awful hair there. But welcome. Hopefully you're singing along at home and have got my songbooks, which, as I said, you can pick up from my website, carolinescockneysingalong.co.uk. Well, of course, it's uh, kind of lunchtime for you guys in the states, and for us over here, it's nine o'clock at night. So hopefully, I've got some people watching in the UK as well. Uh, now I've got my uh, uh, the live stream up on my computer over here. Normally I have my glamorous assistant and my wife working the comments over here, but I'm afraid I'm not, she's downstairs at the moment with my eight year old son. So I'm just dealing with the, with the comments myself here. So give us, a, give us a shout, give us a wave, especially if you're watching from somewhere interesting, anywhere in the States you're watching from or in the UK or even further afield, give us a, give us a wave and I'll try and give you a bit of a shout out. Now I think we already had a request for I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts which uh, is going to come a little later on, but uh, we might as well do a little bit for the moment. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. There they are, standing in a row. Big ones, small ones, some as big as your eggs. You give them a twist, a flick of the wrist, that's what the show will say. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Every ball you throw will make me rich. There stands me wife. The I love me life, sing you roll a bowl a ball a penny a fix. Sing you roll a bowl a ball a penny a fix. Sing you roll a bowl a ball a penny a pitch. Roll a bowl a ball. 
Roll a bowl of bowl, sing you roll a bowl of bowl of penny a pitch. Penny a pitch. Hey, hey. A little bit of, oh, I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> and of course, of course, as Anna has pointed out, of course, that was from The Lion King. It was, it was originally written, that one in the 1930s, made famous by a, a band leader over here called Billy Cotton and his band. He also sang a song um, about a marrow. We might sing that a little later on. But of course, um, uh, is it Zazu sings it in The Lion King as well. Now, as I said, there'll be, there's a kind of running theme with the songs I'm going to sing this afternoon. That many of them, as much as we think of them, are Cockney, so uh, London songs. Um, the Cockney um, countries, uh, people who were born in the sound of Bow Bells, um, the, the uh, church of St. Mary Le Bow in London. And uh, if, you could, if you were born within that, then you were, you were called a Cockney. Now, I'm not a Cockney. I was born and raised in Coventry in the Midlands. But um, I've come to uh, my, I love um, and grow a real true love for, for London songs and the Victorian musical, as I said, through my love of those uh, Victorian musical songs written in the kind of late 1800s through, I suppose, to the, to the outbreak of the First World War, really. Then, of course, we get the variety scene over here and lots of wonderful, funny comedy songs, which I'm sure we're going to sing a few of those later on. So talking about those wonderful comedy songs that kind of got people's spirits through through the Second World War, um, one of the most famous comedy duos from the 1940s was uh, were two guys called Flanagan and Allen. Um, they sang a lot of great songs, and some of them I'm sure you're going to know. So if you've got your songbooks, you're going to turn to page three in your songbooks for uh, Hello Hawaii watching. There we go. And from California as well. California, here I come, right back where I started from, where bowers of flowers grew in the spring. It's morning, a dawning birdies sing, but anything the sun kiss miss says don't be late. That's why I can hardly wait. Open up that golden gate, California, here I come. Unfortunately, I haven't got a song about Colorado. If you know a Colorado song, then uh, do, do let me know. So we're going to have a little medley of uh, these songs made famous by Flanagan and Alan. And we're going to start with this one about some umbrellas. Hopefully you don't need an umbrella today. To luma luma to luma luma to lie. Any umbrellas, any umbrellas to fix today. Bring your parasol, it may be small, it may be big. He repairs them all with what they call a thingamajig. Pitta patta, pitta, pitta patta, pitta, it looks like rain. Let it pitta patta, let it pitta patta, don't mind the rain. Mend your umbrella, then go on its way. Singing to Luma Luma Toodle A, to Luma Luma Toodle A. Any umbrellas to fix today? How about this woman? Shine on, shine on, harvest moon. Up in the sky, I ain't had no luck since January, February, June, or July. Snow time. Ain't no time to stay outdoors and soon. So shine on, shine on, harvest moon for me and my girl. This is perhaps Flanagan and Alice's most greatest hit. You can go for a stroll with this one. Underneath the arches, we dream our dreams away. Underneath the arches, on the cobblestones we lay high mid Missouri. <laughs> Every night you find us tired out of water in Lincolnshire in the UK. Happy when the daylight comes creeping to what? Herald in the door, sleeping when it's raining and sleeping when it's fine. I hear the trains rattle by. Is my pillow, no matter where we stray. Underneath the arches, we dream our dreams away. How about this one? Strolling, just strolling in the cool of the evening air. I don't envy the rich in their automobiles for a motor car is phony i'd rather have shanks this pole when i'm strolling <laughs> just strolling 
with the light of the moon pop up. Every night I go out strolling, and I know my luck is rolling when I'm stolen with the one I love. Let's do it again when I'm stolen with the one I love. Hey, a little bit of the wonderful Flanagan and Alan for you. Well, uh, so lovely to see so many of you watching this evening and uh, seeing where you're why you're watching from. Yes, Chris Bullen watching in Tetney in Lincolnshire. Hi, Lincolnshire. Um, uh, Janine in Belfast. Hi, Janine. Hope you're doing well. Uh, who else we got? Mid, yeah, Mid Missouri. Uh, George is from Wall. Uh, wherever Wall is, I, where's Wall? I don't know. Uh, Central Coast, California. Welcome in, California. And of course, Colorado. Uh, Joseph, I'm glad you like the music room. Well, I welcome you. You are in my house, in my home, and you are in my and, and I'm in your home as well. Broadcasting live across the world on this wonderful 1940s virtual ball. A real shame that I can't be. Well, we can't be all together in person this year. But uh, fingers crossed that I can get across the pond to uh, perform live for you guys next year. Well, that's the plan anyway. So um, here I am dressed as my, in my jungle outfit. I thought I'd take the theme literally with the old jungle outpost. So I've got my uh, 1940s safari jacket on. And also, most importantly, I've got a little badge on here. Where is it there in the camera? You can see that. This is a, a, an original badge from the 1940s. This is an ENSA badge. And um, the, the British um, forces had, the, uh, had ENSA, the organization, the Entertainment National Service Association, who were, were formed at the outbreak of the Second World War um, in order to, to put together shows and concert parties around not only this country, uh, but across the world. Um, they went out to, to entertain troops um, in the Far East, um, in the Middle East, um, North Africa, um, and of course, uh, of course, over here and, and in Europe too. So, and of course, here I've got my Songs for Forces book, which I've been scouring Another original 1940s book here with lots of lovely song suggestions. Of course, the songs that the uh, that the forces would have would have sung to keep their spirits up. So um, quite again, quite a lot of American songs in here. It's funny. Um, but talking about the, the kind of uh, cross pollination of songs across the pond, I suppose. Um, as I said, so many of the songs that we think of British song along classics are actually American imports. But here is a song which um, is originally a musical song from 1911, but it's become famous in the states. Um, most probably because it's sung in Ghost, the movie. If you know Ghost, the movie, um, you may well know the chorus. And of course, it was released by a band in the 1960s called Herman's Hermes. Um, so you may well know the chorus, but you may not know the verse. And the verse for this, uh, so the chorus for this is on page three of your songbooks and uh, tells a little story. And it goes a bit like this. <laughs> You don't know who you're looking at. Now have a look at me. I'm a bit of a knob, I am. I belong to royalty. I'll tell you how it came about. I married Widow Birch, and I was king of England when I toddled out of church. Now outside, the people started shouting, hip, hooray, hooray. Said I get down upon your knees. It's coronation day, because I'm Henry the Eighth. I am Henry the Eighth. I am, I am. I got married to the widow next door. She's been married seven times before. And everyone who was in Henry, Henry, she wouldn't have on Willie or a Sam. No Sam, I'm a rape for a man named Henry. I'm Henry the Ape, I am. Now I left the Duke of Cumberland, a pub up in the town. Soon with one or two moochers, I was holding up the crown. I sat upon the bucket that the cartmen think their own. Surrounded by my subjects, I was sitting on my throne. When out came the pot man saying, get on home to bed. Said, I now say another word, and off will go your head. Cause I'm Henry the Eighth, I am. Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. I got married to the widow next door. She's been married seven times before. And everyone who was in Henry, Henry, she wouldn't have a willy or the sound. I'm a rape for man named Henry. I'm Henry the eighth I am. Now the undertaker called him to my wife, I heard him say, Have you got any orders, man? We're very slack today. I've packed up all your other seven for them pearly gates. Let's have a pound upon account for Henry the eighth. But 
when he measured me with half a yard of string. I dropped down on the marabones and sang, God save the king, cause I'm oh, Henry the Eighth, I am. Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. I got married to the widow next door. She's been married seven times before. Everyone who was an Henry, Henry, she wouldn't have a Willie or a Sam. No Willie, I'm a great fun man named Henry. I'm Henry the Eighth. I am. Hey. There we go, a little bit of Harry Champion, that was 1911, an old musical song, but of course made famous on your side of the pond uh, through Herman's Hermits in the 1960s. It became the fastest selling song um, in the in, in the top of the Billboard charts, uh, the fastest selling song in the history of the world at that point, um, originally the top of the Billboard charts in the States, that one, Herman's Hermits in the 1960s, but of course, as I said, made famous. No, I, mean, I think it's in an episode of The Simpsons as well. These songs get around. They kind of keep in our in our psyche, don't they, I suppose? So um, talking of that, let's uh, have a little medley of some old time love songs. Most of these, again, that are American songs. So you're going to turn in your song books to page uh, page four. We got any romantics in? Anyone in love watching? Uh, give us a shout to see if, if, if you're in love. Let me give you a shout out to your loved ones through the comments here. But are we going to start with this one? An old time love song goes like this. You made me love you. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it. You made me love you. And all the time I knew it. I guess I always knew it. You made me happy sometimes. You made me glad. But there were times, dear, you made me feel so bad. You made me sigh for, I didn't want to tell you, I didn't want to tell you. I want some love, that's true. Yes, I do, indeed I do, you know I do. Give me, give me, give me, give me what I cry for. You know you've got the brand of kisses that I die for. You know you make me love you. Oh, Dawn, happy birthday for tomorrow. There we go. From good old London. She's my lady love. She is my dove. My baby love. She's no girl for sitting down to dream. She's the only queen like you know knows. I know she likes me. I know she likes me because she says so. She's my lily of Lagoon. She is my lily and my rose. How about this one then? Oh, you beautiful doll. You great big beautiful doll. Let me put my arms around you. I could never live without you. Oh, you beautiful doll. You great big beautiful doll. If you ever leave me, how my heart will ache. I want to hug you, but I fear you break. Oh. Medley with perhaps the greatest love song from the First World War. Another American import, it goes like this. Sometimes when I feel bad and things look blue, some wish the girl I had save one like you, someone within my heart to build a Someone who never parts to call my own. Do you know the chorus? If you were the only girl in the world, then I was the only boy. Nothing else could matter in the world today. We could go on loving in the same old way. The Garden of Eden. Made for two with nothing to mar our joy. I would say such wonderful things to you. There would be such wonderful things to do if you were the only girl in the world and I was the only boy. Oh, 
Oh, thank you very much. I hear some applause from Andrew and Lindsay. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, there we go. Those a um, wonderful selection of love songs. If you've got any romantics in, that goes out, that goes out to you. Well, we couldn't have a 1940s ball without singing, of course, some wartime songs. So time for a little bit of a wartime sing-along. If you've got your songbooks, these start on page five of your songbooks. Now, of course, if you like what I do at Caroline's Company sing-along, you can like me on Facebook, tweet me on Twitter, pin me on Pinterest. You can add me on Instagram. You could do whatever anybody does to anybody on LinkedIn. I have no <laughs> idea. If you do, please tell me. But uh, there we go. Yes, Caroline's Cockney Singalong.co.uk or Facebook forward slash Cockney Singalong. Now, of course, if you go to my website and you uh, fancy throwing some coins my way, I do my virtual tip jar as well there. You can make a little donation. Or, of course, you can purchase my CDs. You can take me home with you this evening. Um, I do have copies of my two CDs, one with an hour's worth of sing-along classics and another with uh, 11 musical songs that you've probably never heard the verses for before and probably will never hear again. So there we go. They're £10 each, and I will ship to the US as well if you're watching in the US and fancy me sending them over to you there. Or you can listen to me on Spotify or iTunes. You can download me there. But go and have a look at my website. All the details are on there. So a little bit of a wartime sing-along. We're going to skip the first one. So I'm not sure many of you would know that. You might know this one, second one. It's called Bless Them All. It's got some swaying though, it goes like this. Bless them all, bless them all, the long and the short and the tall. Bless all the sergeants and WR1s, bless all the corporals and their blinking sons, cause we're saying goodbye to them all, as back to their billets they crawl. You'll get no promotion this side of the ocean. Cheer up, my last bless them all. Now nobody knows what a twerp you've been. So cheer up, my last bless them all. Well, kiss me goodnight, Sergeant Major. Tuck me in my little wooden bed. We all love you, Sergeant Major. When we hear you falling, show a leg. Don't forget to wake me in the morning. And bring me around a nice old cup of tea. Call blimey, kiss me goodnight, Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major, be a mother to me. Here's another Flanagan and Allen hit you might know. We're gonna hang out the washing on the Siegfried line. Have you any dirty washing, mother dear? We're gonna hang out the washing on the Siegfried line. Cause washing day is near. Whether the weather may be wet or fine, we'll just rub on along without a care. We're gonna hang out the washing on the Siegfried line. If the Siegfried light's still there No excuses, you must know this one Run the rabbit, run the rabbit, run, run, run Run the rabbit, run the rabbit, run, run, run Bang, 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 bang goes the farmer's gun Run the rabbit, run the rabbit, run, run, run Run the rabbit, run the rabbit, run, run, run Don't give the farmer his fun, fun, fun He'll get by without his rabbit pie. So run, rabbit, run, rabbit, run, run, run. Well, we couldn't have a wartime medley. Unless we had a song made famous by the wonderful Gracie Fields. This was also made famous by Monty Python with some different lyrics. But uh, stick to the Gracie Fields one for me. Keep it clean. Sing as we go and we'll let the world go by. Singing a song will march along the highway. Say goodbye to sorrow, there's always tomorrow to think of today. Soon as we go, although the skies are grey, Beggar or a king, you've got to sing a gay tune. A song and a smile, making life worthwhile as we sing. Da -da 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 as we go along. Never quite sure whether that song note's going to come out or not. Now we're going to go move over to stateside for these next few. This one made famous in the First World War, a George M. Cohen hit. Over there, over there, said the word, said the word over there. That the Yanks are coming, the Yanks are coming, the drums are on time in everywhere. So prepare, say a prayer, send the word, send the word over there. We'll be over, we're coming over, and we won't come back till it's over over there one well, of the next couple of songs made famous by the wonderful andrew sisters here we go let's see you in harmony then oh and actually uh, 
Happy 20 years to Kevin and Rayna. There we go. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Pardon me, Bob. Is that the chat in the chip too? Track 29. Well, you can give me a shine. I can afford to go on the chat and the chip too. I got my fare. I'm just a trifle to spare. You see the Pennsylvania station by the quarter to four. Read a magazine and then you rip on some more. Dinner in the diner, nothing could be finer than to have your ham and eggs in Carolina. When you hear the whistle blowing eggs in the bar, then you know the Tennessee is not very far. Shall it all the going, gotta keep them rolling. Whoa, whoa, Chattanooga, there you are. How about this one? Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. No, 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 don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Till I come marching home. There's a little story that goes with this next song. This next song was written by the master himself, Mr. Noel Coward. He wrote this the, uh, morning after a very heavy blitz on London. He was sitting on the platform at Paddington Station and amidst the rubble and the pavement, he saw a tiny, on the sidewalk to you, he saw a tiny little flower growing. Now that flower goes by the common name of London Pride. And so he was inspired to write this song and in sticking two fingers up to the Germans, he also stole the opening notes of the German national anthem to write this beautiful song. London pride has been handed down to us. London pride is a flower that's free. London pride means our own dear town to us. And our pride it forever will be. One lies up, see the cost of barons, vegetable marrows and the fruit piled high. One lies up, little London sparrows, common garden market. With the costas cry, cockney feet mark the beat of history. Every street is a memory town. Nothing ever could quite replace the grace of London town. Here's another American one for you. This one written by the wonderful Frank Lesser, the composer who wrote Guys and Dolls. Ha, Andrew says London Pride is also a delicious pint. <laughs> it is indeed. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. Praise the Lord and pass the ammunition and we'll all stay free. Praise the Lord and swing into position. Can't afford to be a politician. Praise the Lord, we're all between perdition and the deep blue sea. While the sky pilot said it, you gotta give him credit for the son of a gun of a gun was he shouting praise the lord we're on a mighty mission all aboard we're not a going fish praise the lord and pass the ammunition and we'll all stay free well another american song that came over in the second world war with all your wonderful american gis at the station over here was this hit song made uh, famous in the 1940s by the merry max a vocal group over there in the states but it became a great, great hit over here with its nonsense lyrics. It goes like this. Oh, mezzy dotes and dozy dotes and little lambsy divey, a giddly divey too from you. Oh, mezzy dotes and dozy dotes and little lambsy divey, a giddly divey too from you. Now, if the words sound queer and funny to your ear, a little bit jumbled and jivey, just sing, mezzy oats. And does eat oats and little lambsy ivy. Oh, mezzy notes and dozy notes and little lambsy ivy. A kiddly ivy too for you. Oh, mezzy notes and dozy notes and little lambsy ivy. A kiddly ivy too for you. Well, we couldn't have a wartime sing along unless we sound these two songs made famous in the First World War. They go like this It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way to go. It's a long way. To Tipperary, to the sweetest girl I know. Goodbye, Piccadilly. Farewell, Leicester Square. It's a long, long way to Tipperary. 
but my heart's right there. And of course, this one. Pack up your troubles in your own kit bag and smile, smile, smile. While you were loose and to light your bag, smile, boys, that's the style. Was the use of a worrying? It never was worthwhile. So pack up your troubles in your own kit bag and smile, smile, smile. Here we go! Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye. Oh, 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 oh. Cheerio, here I go on my way. Oh, 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 oh. Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye. More Gracie Foods with a cheer, not a tear. Make it gay! Give me a smile, I can keep all the while in my heart while I'm away. Till we meet once again, you and I. Wish me luck as you wave me goodbye. Now we'll skip ahead a little and sing this one. Uh, yesterday in the UK, we lost a very wonderful woman, Dame Vera Lynn, uh, aged 103. She was really the force's sweetheart, a beautiful singer uh, with, a, with a fantastic voice, which kept the spirits up of not only the people fight, the boys fighting out on the front, but also everyone else on the home front too. Uh, 103, what a great innings and what a great legacy Dame Vera Lynn left us in her songs that she sang. And uh, here's one of hers. There'll be blue birds over the white cliffs of Dover tomorrow. Just you wait and see. There'll be love and laughter, peace ever after tomorrow. When the world is free, the shepherd will tend his sheep, the valley will bloom again, and Jimmy will go to sleep in his own little room again. Let's see you at home. There'll be blue birds over the white cliffs of Dover tomorrow. Just you wait and see. Oh, thank you, Jessica. Glad you love this song. I do too. And then we're going to skip the next one and do this last one in this medley. Again, which became a bit of an anthem through the Second World War. Another Vera Lynn hit. It goes like this. We'll meet again. Don't know when. Don't know where. But I know we'll meet again. Some sunny day. Keep smiling through, just like you always do. To the blue skies, drive the dark clouds far away. So won't you please say hello to the folks that I know? Tell them I won't be long. They'll be happy to know. As you saw me go, I was singing this song. Big finish then. We'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know where. But I know we'll meet again. Some sunny day. There we go. Well, Mark has summed it up. Yeah, it's like funny how that song applies for today too. It really does some fantastic words that meant so much to the people back in the 1940s. Uh, but again, how much they mean to us when we can all get back together. We will meet again when this is all blown over. We can all get back together, hopefully in time for the 1940s ball. So it's not a virtual one next year that we'll be all meeting together to celebrate and sing along and just just uh, enjoy meeting again in groups that we just haven't been able to do over the last few months. So a uh, huge thank you to, uh, to Andrew and Kenzie for putting this all together virtually so that we can have an opportunity to sing together. So uh, we're coming towards the end of my set this evening, well, oh, this afternoon for you over in the States. This evening for us over here is just coming up to, uh, it's about quarter to 10 here. So before I start pissing off the neighbors, I thought it's probably time for me to uh, start rounding up. Now, of course, in the second world war, when, uh, when victory, was sounded in 1945. Uh, of course, 
the um, the the people of, of of this country celebrated with a good old fashioned knees up. For those of you who don't understand that, so party. Uh, 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 they often had street parties over here where people would push out trestle, trestle tables into the into the streets, block the roads and have wonderful street parties with their flags waving and celebrations going on. And they would have had a bit of a knees up and a bit of a sing along and a bit of a party in the same way that we're going to do it now. So if you turn towards the end of your songbooks and we're going to go to page uh, page 10 in your songbooks. Here we go. Again, if you've enjoyed what I've done this evening, then please do throw some coins my way in my virtual tip jar at caradinescockneysingalong.co.uk. There we go. We're going to, uh, where are we going to start? We're going to start with a 1937 classic from Noel Gay's Me and My Girl. This is The Sun Has Got His Hat On. The Sun Has Got His Hat On. <laughs> the Sun Has Got His Hat On and he's coming out today. Now we'll all be happy. Hip, 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 hooray. The sun has got his hat on and he's coming out today. He's been roasting peanuts down in Timbuktu. Now he's coming back to do the same for you. Jump into your sun bath. Hip, 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 hooray. The sun has got his hat on and he's coming out today. Yes, we have no bananas. <laughs> we have no bananas today. We got string beans and onions, cabbages and scallions, all kinds of fruit and say we have an old-fashioned tomato, Long Island potato. But yes, we have no bananas. Have a banana. We have no bananas today. Now we had a request for this one earlier on, and we've already done it. But it's a great song. Let's see you then. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. But there they are, we're standing in a row with the actions. Big one, small one, some as big as your head. You give them a twist, a flick of the wrist, that's what the sun would say. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. Every ball you throw will make me rich. There stands me wife, the idol of my life. Sing you roll a bowl, a ball, a penny a pitch. Sing you roll a bowl, a ball, a penny a pitch. Sing you roll a bowl, a ball, a penny a pitch. Roll a bowl a bowl, roll a bowl a bowl, sing and roll a bowl a bowl a penny a fish. Well, earlier on I talked about the wonderful Billy Cotton. He had the Billy Cotton band show on the TV in the 1950s, and he made this one famous. Oh, what a beauty. I've never seen one as big as that before. Oh, what a beauty. It must be two for long or even more. It's such a lovely colour, so nice and round and fat. I never thought a marrow could grow. What were you thinking? Oh, <laughs> what a beauty. I've never seen one as big as that before. What's more with feeling? I've never seen one as big as that before. Get off me, Barra. I've never seen one as big as that before. Well, we're going to skip the next couple because they're really company classics. And now this one's for any of the vegetarians or vegans amongst you. It goes out to the vegetarians and vegans. It goes like this. I like pickled onions. I like pickled lily. Pickled cabbage is all right with a bit of cold meat on a Sunday night. I could go tomatoes, but what I do prefer is a little bit of cucumber, 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 a little bit of cucumber. Yeah. Is that, no, what's cucumber to you guys? Cucumber. Maybe that doesn't translate easily. <laughs> <laughs> now, here we go. This one, you're going to know this one. An American import. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. Coming around the mountain. Coming around the mountain when she comes. All together then. Singing I, I, I. Singing I, 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 I. Singing I, 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 I. Oh, she's got a lovely titivating smile. <laughs> oh, she's got a lovely titivating smile. Oh, she's got a lovely smile. Got a lovely smile. She's got a lovely titivating smile. All together. Singing I, I, Singing I, I, Singing I, I, And of course, we celebrated by dancing the hokey cokey. Originated in America, really, as the hokey pokey goes like this. You put your left leg in, your left leg out, in, out, in, out, shake it all about. 
do the okie dokie and you turn around, but that's what it's all about. All together then. Oh, the okie dokie. Oh, the okie dokie. Oh, the okie dokie. Knees bent, arms stretched right. How about this one? Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Under the table you must go. E -I -E -I -E -I -O. If I catch you bending, I'll saw your legs right off. Knees up, knees up, don't feel the breeze up, knees up, Mama Brown. Whoa, my, what a rotten song. What a rotten song, what a rotten song. Oh, my, what a rotten song. What a rotten singer, too. Here we go, last one then. Roll out the barrel. We'll have a barrel of fun. Let's see you at home. Roll out the barrel. We got the blues on the run. Sing. Boom to Errol, bring out a song of good cheer. Now's the time to roll the barrel for the gangs. Oh, one last time, then here we go. Roll out the barrel. We'll have a barrel of the fun. Still, your spoons break. Roll out the barrel. Just imagine the spoons. We got the blues on the run. Two, three, four, sing. Boom to Errol. Bring out a song of good cheer. Now's the time to roll the barrel. Big finish for the gangs. Oh, hey. Hey, there we go. Thank you so much for joining me. I've been Tom Caradine from Caradine's Cockney Sing Along. And I've always wanted to say this, but handing back to Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, we really hope you can be with us in person so. next year at the ball. Fingers crossed. Our fingers are crossed. I, I really I hope so. Around. And we didn't get to hand out the virtual, the bunting. That was so much fun as well. Oh, it's hidden under the bed. Normally, I have, my, my wife normally helps me. So I'll bring the bunting with me next year. That'll be perfect. So <laughs> champagne. 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 <laughs> Thank Thanks you, stuff. Tom. Absolute pleasure. All right. So we hope you all enjoyed one of our personal favorites, Tom Carradine's Cockney Sing Along. And uh, if you did, say so in the comments and send him a virtual tip to show him how much you appreciated his wonderful show. And um, as we said, we're really excited at the prospects of having him in person in Boulder, Colorado next year to perform for you guys. It's really something else when you're actually standing around the piano. And if you had a couple of beers beforehand, it's um, everyone just you know, joins together. So, uh, so hopefully we'll get this virus out the way before then. So anyway. <laughs> All right. So next we have coming our series of workshops. Um, we have hairstyling, our 1940s hairstyling with vintage hairstyling by Lauren Reynolds. Then after that, we have shop your closet with Denver vintage society. And, uh, after that we have 1940s and fifties, Fashion with The Hop, one of our very special vendors from the ball. And then finally, our last workshop is going to be with Maggie Misfit, and she's going to show you how to do 1940s victory rolls and um, vintage makeup live. So stay tuned for all of those. Let's see, what time is it now? 2.47? Oh, it's only about 13 minutes. So we'll go ahead and play some behind the scenes from the ball uh, while we're waiting for our first one. Let's see. Screen share here. Screen share. I'm going to put it on a black screen so you don't have to look at us while we're pulling this up.
Silence and the madness and the heat. That's the thrill I'm craving, and the music is so sweet. Got that fever, jungle fever. Oh, the Congo's calling, and I long to go. Dusky maiden, dark eyed siren, Congo sweetheart. I'm coming back to you While that woman Native dream girl Jungle fever Is in my blood for you workshop is going to be vintage hairstyling by Laura Reno, Lauren Reynolds and she's going to teach you about 1940s hairstyling but before we start that workshop I wanted to plug a couple things Tiki Brian is still going on all day and he's going to be doing our jungle outpost radio um, I'm sure some of you guys have tuned in and heard it it's really really phenomenal he's done a great job with it uh, so make sure to check that out when you are switching back and forth between the virtual video events and the uh, 1940s radio events. Also, don't forget to post your pictures on our Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we are reposting those all day long and the judges are looking at them and we'll be picking a king and queen of the ball and there's some really awesome prizes. So um, make sure to post your pictures and tag the 1940s ball 
um, on Facebook and then on Instagram tag virtual 1940s ball. And the last thing is just to remind you that all the artists are performing for free. And uh, if, if you can to go ahead and tip them because they are doing a phenomenal job and obviously um, have lost a lot of work over this um, summer <laughs> in the past few months. Um, so whatever we can do to um, support them. And um, lastly, we just want to thank everybody who's performed and all of the, uh, the artists and the presenters and um, the hosts uh, for taking part today. Uh, we're really bummed that we can't see you guys in person, but this is certainly a, an exciting <laughs> way to, to get together and to connect and share some love of the 40s despite all of the um, the situations, the situation that's going on. All right, so here we go. 1940s hairstyling with Lauren Reynolds. Thank you so much for joining VintageHairstyling.com's presentation of Women's Hairstyles During World War II. As a special offer to the 1940s ball audience, VintageHairstyling.com is giving everyone 25% off online orders. Just enter the coupon code 1940sBall at checkout. Sale ends June 27th. Welcome. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how life influenced women's hairstyles in the 1940s. And I am going to show you the steps for this quick, modern interpretation of a 1940s look. World War II beauty culture centered around women's new lifestyles. As soon as the war began, their lives changed significantly, as did their beauty routines. This new way of life, with more work outside of the home, more support efforts, and a busier lifestyle than ever, created its challenges for women. But propaganda of the day reminded women that it was also part of their duty to their families, communities, and to the boys fighting that they keep up their appearances. Their attention to personal grooming contributed to their own morale and the morale of their fellow citizens. It was this combination of the new woman's lifestyle and the encouragement of personal grooming that influenced the common hairstyles of the 1940s. Neatness in uniform, personal safety, and general practicality all influenced hairstyles. The armed forces regulated that, when in uniform, women's hair did not hang below the back of the uniform collar. The top of the hairstyle also needed to be designed in a manner that allowed for a uniform cap to sit snugly and neatly on top of your head. Hairstyles in the work environment pose many challenges. Safety concerns and cleanliness were the most important. Famously, the U.S. government requested that Veronica Lake take part in a publicity stunt to get women to change their very long hair. Her signature peekaboo bang was very popular at the time. In a campaign for safer hair, and also to promote her new movie, So Proudly We Hail, Lake changed her hairstyle to something more appropriate for the time. In her to modern beauty shop magazine in 1943, the DuPont Company pleaded for publishing of hairstyle designs that encouraged a safer workforce. In it, they wrote, We are trying to encourage the many women employees of this factory to arrange their hair in a way so as to eliminate the possibility of injuries due to their hair becoming entangled with moving machinery. We feel we should give proper hair arrangement with all the publicity possible in order that we may have a safer and more uniform hairdress among our employees. Beauty magazines of the time featured the hairstyle designs that would fit well with this new lifestyle for women. Shorter hairstyles and hairstyles designed to stay contained against the head were promoted heavily.
Spray this first second. We're just going to back it up a little since the, the video went out. We had to rewind it because there was no sound. So we're just backing up just a, a minute or so. Starting by sectioning out the bottom of the hair. Spray this first section with a heat styling spray. And with a 5 8 inch curling iron. Begin curling the hair sections. There is no need to clip these curls for cooling. We will clip a few curls later on. Continue curling, working your way up in sections until you reach just below the crown. When you reach this final section for curling, you will be left with a horseshoe shaped section on top. Separate out a three inch wide section by one inch deep just above the occipital bone at the back of the head. Create three curls, pinning them in place for cooling. that includes the area between the peaks of the eyebrows and back in line with the backs of the ears. Continue curling, keeping this section separate from the rest. When we style, we are going to start with this section. When you are finished curling, lightly brush through this section and then finger through the curls to loosen them up a little bit. Using a large hairnet, create a poodle poof above the forehead. Gather some of the visible elastic and pin it to hide it under the poof. Next, gather the hair still left above the right ear. Brush and give it a little back comb to help lock the hairs together. Arrange this piece over the poof in a curl or wave pattern. There are no rules here. Let the hair tell you what shape it is willing to take. Bobby pin in a few key places to hold this shape and spray with a strong hairspray. Repeat these steps above the left ear, brushing and giving it a little back comb to help lock the hairs together. 
arrange this piece over the poof in a curl or wave pattern. Again, listen to what the hair is willing to shape into. I'm arranging this section so that the upper section of the hairstyle has more height above the right eye. The asymmetric look in a hairstyle was popular in the 1940s. Place a few strategic bobby pins to hold this form in place. Moving on to the back section, brush out and finger through the curls and fluff them up. Using a second large hairnet, create another poof, but this time at the base of the neck. Collect as much of the hair as possible in this poof. Shape the poof with your hands and then stretch it out to the sides of the hairstyle and pin through the hairnet to hold this U shape at the base of the hairstyle. All right, so we are having some technical issues with Facebook. Oh, the joys of this new virtual world. Um, just got to notice that Facebook is no longer streaming it, so I have to restart. I won't start from the beginning just for where, we, where it stopped streaming. Let's see. Hang on just a second. To reconnect it to Facebook. I'm going to go ahead and put on our slider, our little slide while we're doing this here. All right, it appears that Facebook is now back connected. <laughs> it looks like it, okay. So now I just gotta bring back in the screen share. pattern 
to sit over the top of the hair neck and poof and create some interest in the shape. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please visit VintageHairStyling.com for all your tool needs and don't forget about the coupon code. All right, thank you, Lauren. That was beautiful. Um, it reminds you that there are so many things you can do with 40s hairstyles and we absolutely love walking around the ball and just seeing what everybody's done or they've come to the salon at the ball and had the lovely girls there do their hair it's just an amazing thing you can do to add so much style to what you're wearing the hair of the 40s was just incredible what they what they did uh to make up for what they did have in fabric and extra supplies they they made up for it with their beautiful hair all right um so next in this series we are going to be talking to Castle and McKenzie from the Denver Vintage Society. And um, let me pull them up here. There we go. <laughs> Hello, ladies. <Hi. laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Well, it's such a pleasure to have you guys here. First virtual 1940s ball. Um, and uh, it's Yes, welcome, welcome. So tell us about your video and what you guys do with Denver Vintage Society. Sure, so my name is Mackenzie and together with Castle, um, we actually run the Denver Vintage Society. We are um, a Facebook group online, um, but we um, do events in person. We've done uh, bowling, vintage bowling. We've done some cocktail hours. And um, Castle is actually has put together most of our Zoom parties this summer. So I'm gonna let her talk about our next one here really quick. Sure. Hi everybody. Kenzie, you're doing a great job today. <laughs> Thank you. So much fun. <laughs> uh, I've loved watching all the different acts and, and all the different performances. And I have a new hairstyle to try now. Looks gorgeous. Your hair looks gorgeous right now. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, so Denver Vintage Society uh, is a group we started to try to get together the vintage community and have events and bring everybody together so that we can let our vintage outfits get out and about a little bit and also meet each other and maybe go shopping together or do other events together, hang out together. And so since the shutdown and the quarantine and all of that, we've been doing some Zoom parties until we can all meet in person again. And we do have a Zoom party coming up for the kickoff of summer. And I'm going to be posting that tomorrow. And that will be next Saturday night on Zoom. So be sure to check out our Denver uh, Vintage Society Facebook page and um, check off that event and put it on your schedule. and. Tune in and come and meet us and chat with us. And then hopefully soon we can all meet together in person. And if you're looking for the group, the uh, Facebook link is facebook.com slash groups slash Denver Vintage Society. All right. Um, so tell us a little bit about your video. Yeah, so we were really inspired by um, kind of some of the similarities that are going on right now where we're all kind of limited and the fact that we can't go out and go shopping and buy new outfits that we would maybe want to for the ball, um, which is really similar to what women were facing in the 1940s and during the war with the rationing going on. So we decided to do what women were doing in the 40s during the war, which is shopping our closets, kind of making do and making mend and being inspired by things that we already had and by our friends as well. Awesome. All right, well, here is their video. Okay. Thanks, Kim. <laughs> Ladies.
Castle. I have no idea. I just want to feel glamorous. You should call Michelle. She's the queen of glamour. you're gonna wear it all? I have just been thinking about that. I'm gonna go search through my closet and see what I can come up with. <laughs> today, women in the 1940s had to make some difficult choices when it came to picking their outfits. And just like women today, when they dressed up, women in the 1940s wanted to feel glamorous. With fabric restrictions in place, it was difficult to feel glamorous sometimes and dressing up could be a challenge. But just like modern times, women in the 40s had the ability to shop their closets and see what they could come up with, just like we can today. 
In order to help re recreate the 40s look, we can actually go through what we have already and come up with beautiful looks. But what is the 40s look exactly and how can we find those objects in our closet? To help demonstrate this, I've actually picked out two of my favorite outfits, one vintage and one modern to help show the silhouette. We'll start with a vintage one here. So in the 40s, shoulders were everything. You can see on this dress that it has actually exaggerated shoulder pads, nice big lapels, lots of color, narrow waist, and when I hold it up, you can see it has a really demure skirt. Later in the 50s, women were allowed to have lots of fabric and it reflected with those beautiful fit and flare silhouettes. But the restrictions in the 40s made it so that women had to monitor how much fabric went into each garment that they wore. Next to that, we have our modern dress. This one actually came from Target and has a lot of the same silhouette that we see on the vintage dress with the wide shoulders, the moderate silhouette with a moderate A-line skirt. I love the print on this one, and both of these dresses have a nice silky fill. And of course, accessories are everything. Any one of these dresses can be dressed up, dressed down, made to feel glamorous with all the right accessories. Finally, another option is to go online. Etsy, ModCloth, and other websites are making it easier and easier these days to get 40s reproduction. Castle's actually gonna tell us the best way to measure yourself for that. Thanks, Castle. Now the trick to buying vintage online is making sure it will fit. And for that, you want to take measurements. Now the three most important measurements you want to take are going to be the bust, the waist, and the hips. And when you measure your hips, make sure you're measuring at the widest point, because you want to make sure those dresses fit on your clothes. Another way to do it is to take a garment that you already like the way it fits, lay it flat on the bed, and then you want to measure the bust. You want to go armpit to armpit, then the waist, and for a full or circle swing skirt, it doesn't really matter what the hip measurement is, but for a pencil skirt, again, you want to measure that point that is the widest. Now, some sellers will post that number as the half number that we just took, and some will post the full circumference. So just be aware of Sometimes you just got to do it. So with that, happy shopping. <laughs> All right. Well, Mackenzie, thank you so much for putting that together. And um, we look forward to having you guys a part of the ball again this summer. Well, next summer. And, um, and seeing what you guys come up with with a, a fashion. Uh, I guess what you guys do is you go shopping in the local <laughs> stores <laughs> and sort of, sort of show us what's, what's out there. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us be a part of it again. We do love to shop and we love to get people involved in vintage lifestyle and just to hang out, having a good time with other vintage lovers. So thanks again, we really appreciate it. Absolutely, do you wanna tell everybody one more time how to get in touch with you guys? Yeah, absolutely. It's facebook.com slash groups slash Denver Vintage Society. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys again for being a part of our virtual ball, and we'll see you soon. <laughs> you. Bye. All right. So next we have, um, oh, we have the hop, uh, 1940s and 50s fashion with, uh, with the hop. who has been bending with us for years, and they have a cute little trailer, a 1950s trailer called Tootie. And um, and Christy and her mom make these gorgeous turbans together, and they're just amazing people and really awesome vintage purists. So I'm excited to have Christy a part of this. Um, she will be up with her, I uh, think she's got, let's see, it's called 1940s and 50s fashion. So while we're pulling that up, I'm just gonna pull our screen back here.
Hi everybody, I'm Christy from The Hop, one of the 1940s ball vintage vendors. You would probably best recognize us for our shop in our adorable little 1950s uh, camper. If you haven't shopped with us before, we specialize in uh, 1940s to 60s true vintage and reproduction pieces. Um, I've also done several style guides for the ball before, but I am really excited to be able to do this for you guys today virtually. Uh, this year's theme is Jungle Outpost, so I have pulled together some great tropical styles for your viewing pleasure. Um, but before I do that, I would like to get out of this quarantine wear and into something a little bit more 1940s fall appropriate. Much better. Okay, so uh, we're going to start with some casual day wear and we'll end with some formal pieces. So let's start with this adorable little piece behind me. All right, so with the summer days ahead, let's start with some beach wear. A popular summer style for women of the 40s and 50s. It came as a single piece or in separates, and many came with a skirt that buttoned down the front. This way, a woman could run around town and then take off the skirt when she got to the beach. To get this look today, you can buy reproduction or vintage pieces. We have this adorable vintage play suit in our shop. You'll be beach ready in this two-piece cotton halter top and short set. A comparable look for men in the 1950s was the cabana shirt and swim shorts. This came as a matching set and the shirt was used as a casual cover-up for a day at the beach. Some of the popular fabrics for these sets were tropical prints, stripes, or checks. All right, next up is swim wear. Where are my beach beauties at? For bathing suits, women still wore the one piece, but as the trend for showing off the midriff was on the rise, so was the two-piece swimsuit. The two-piece was still modest, and the tops were high cut as to not show off much cleavage. The bottoms were high-waisted to cover up the belly button. It wasn't until 1946 that the more scandalous bikini was born and named after Bikini Atoll in the South Pacific. The bikini was not well received until the 1950s. Last year, our shop put on a bombshell fashion show. It ended with this two-piece swimsuit inspired by Bikini Atoll where the U.S. did nuclear testing. We have some great two-piece reproduction swimsuits like this tropical number, along with some vintage pieces like this adorable seersucker bathing suit. For men in the 40s, the swim brief was still on trend. These sat at the high waist and had low cut legs. Swim trunks were also gaining popularity in the 1940s. They sat at the high waist as well, but the legs came mid thigh. These were often paired with the cabana shirt, as I mentioned before. Not necessarily a 40s fashion, but I have to give some love to the ever tropical flowing dress, the Moo Moo, or better known as the Kaftan. Originally, the Moo Moo was created to cover Hawaiian women's skin with the arrival of the missionaries in the 1820s. The Moo Moo evolved with European and American influences and became a fashion trend in the mid 20th century. Ah yes, who can forget our tiki time favorite, the Hawaiian or Aloha shirt. In the 40s and 50s in Hawaii, many of the off-duty servicemen would choose to wear these colorful shirts as an alternative to their drab uniforms. When returning to the mainland, they would bring some of these shirts home as souvenirs for their friends and family. Again, Hollywood helped with the rising trends with the likes of Bob Hope and Elvis Presley being seen in them. We have several vintage Aloha shirts and women's muumuu in stock in our shop. These fun, bright, colorful pieces are a must have for the summer days ahead. All right, so let's talk about women's day dresses. Uh, what I am wearing here is called a shirtwaist dress. They called it this because it buttoned down the front, uh, sometimes would continue into the skirt uh, or just stop at the waist. 
um, which mimics a sh button up shirt. <laughs> um, the skirt line is uh, normally an A-line. In the 50s, you'd see fuller skirts. These dresses were great for wearing during the daytime, um, doing all sorts of tasks. Um, women wouldn't normally uh, wear them out for dinner um, or a night out um, because they were more casual. So this one that I'm wearing, it's a tropical print, which we love. <laughs> um, and uh, it's a uh, great fabric. Um, really flowy. Uh, this is a reproduction that we carry in our shop. Um, I have a couple other reproduction um, colors behind me as well. The roses and the navy floral. Um, and then I also have um, a vintage shirt waist here. You can see the buttons on the front. And then um, many of them did did have do have pockets, um, which is fantastic. We love pockets. That is the shirtwaist. Pictured are some examples of how the shirtwaist dress was worn and styled in the 1940s and 50s. Notice how most are worn with a belt and the predominant buttons down the front. Hey, this photo is of my grandma. Nice example of a shirtwaist grandma. Sticking with the theme, this dress segment wouldn't be complete if I didn't show some beautiful tropical pieces. These photos show combinations of both separates, like these crop tops paired with skirts or pants. Or how about these full on tropical print dresses, each highlighting different silhouette shapes and styles of the 1940s and 1950s. Here's a selection of some of our favorite tropical and summer pieces available in our shop. All right, and this segment would not be complete if I did not talk about Tootie's turbans. <laughs> These are our own line of turbans designed and sewn um, by my mom and myself. Uh, we carry them in lots of different colors. They're great for every day. They're great for poolside. They're especially great during quarantine. <laughs> Cover up your hair. Um, 
But what's really exciting is um, on Monday, we will have a uh, new design in stock. I'm sorry we weren't able to get it um, out in time for the 40s ball here, but be sure to check our social media and website on Monday because you're not going to want to miss the style. It's fantastic. It is reversible, so you get um, two patterns or two colors for the price of one, which is great. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you love them. In the 1940s, the turban gained much popularity. During wartime, women wore it more out of necessity while going to work at factories and on farms. The design was easy to create. Women could use scarves or fabric to create their own turbans. It helped keep hair from falling in their face, and it was also a useful tool to conceal dirty hair or even curlers. Hollywood stars like Lana Turner and Carmen Miranda started wearing the turban, and the styling of it soon after became chic. Everyone had to have one. Here are our happy Tootie's Turbans customers and available turbans for sale on our website. Don't forget, we have a new style. Any of these styles that you saw in my segment today will be available on our website to purchase. Uh, if you don't see something um, and you want to claim it, feel free to email or send us a direct message. Um, I will list below our website and our social media um, pages. So you can message us on any of those. Um, and I just wanna say thank you so much for uh, joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it and a huge shout out. Thank you so much to Kinsey and the whole 1940s ball staff. Uh, this is awesome that we get to still have the ball um, even if it's virtually. So thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> All right. Very, very happy to know that lovely lady. She's she's a real sweetheart. Um, and she does some really great stuff with her turbans and with her mom. It's super cute that they have such a, a wonderful project to do together. Um, all right. Well, um, next, we're very excited to bring you Miss Meggie Misfit. She's a, a model. She's a vintage hair and makeup artist. And she really knows what she's doing. Um, she's also a host at the ball sometimes. So she, she'll host our second stage or um, be a part of different contests that we do. Uh, and she's going to be live. Yay! Because no technical issues, it seems, when we're live. Um, so <laughs> I'm really excited about that. <laughs> um, so it comes coming up in 10 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to play for you. Let's see. Take me out of this picture for a second.
lily far from wrong. Oh, lily bell, oh, lily bell. Though I may have done some fooling, this is why I never fell. Cause I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. Jingle, jangle. As I go right merrily along. Jingle, jangle. They sing, oh, ain't you glad you're single? Jingle, jangle. And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Jingle, jangle. <laughs> I got spurs that jingle jangle. I got spurs that jingle jangle as I jingle. Go right merrily as I along. go right merrily and along. They sing, oh, ain't you glad and they sing, oh, ain't you glad and you sing? And that song ain't so very far from wrong. And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell. Though I may have done some fooling, this is why I never fell. Cause I got spurs that jingle jangle. I got spurs that jingle jangle. As I go right merrily along. As I go right merrily along. And they sing, oh, ain't you glad? And they sing, oh, ain't you glad? And that song ain't so very far from wrong. And that song ain't so very far from wrong. Since our weekly shipment of tea has been delayed, papaya juice will now be served at the four o'clock hour. As always, Day old crumpets will still be available.
everyone, it's Tiki Brian with Jungle Outpost Radio. And coming up now is another fantastic performer of the 1940s World War II era ball. Enjoy the sounds of Dandy Wellington right here on Jungle Outpost Radio. The weather is frightening. Thunder and lightning seem to be having their way. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's a lovely day. The turn in the weather will keep us together. Isn't this a lovely day to be caught in the rain? Yes, you were going on your way, and now you've got to remain. Just as you were going, leaving me all at sea, the clouds broke, they broke, and oh, what a break for me. I can see the sun up high, though we're caught in that storm. I can see where you and I could be cozy and warm. Let the rain hit a pattern, cause it really doesn't matter if skies are gray. As long as I am here with you, it's a lovely day. Excited 
to introduce to you Miss Meggie Misfit. She is a model, a vintage hair and makeup artist, and just an all around awesome girl that knows so much about vintage and vintage hair, styling, clothes, everything you want to talk about. She knows that she knows what to do. All right. So let me introduce you to Miss Meggie Misfit. All right. <laughs> Welcome, Maggie. <laughs> Thank you so much. Welcome Thanks to the so Virtual Missing Forty Fall. Thank you. Thank you for I'm being so here. Be All right, so I'm going to do. Yes, yes. Um, I'm going to hand this feed over to you to uh, to take over. Let's see. I'm going to remove myself. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining. It's a pleasure to be a part of the 1940s ball again, um, even if it's just virtually. Um, I love to attend the ball every year. And uh, for the last few years, I have actually worked with them hosting or um, promoting the ball on the news or in parades. It's always a great time. I love um, attending and meeting everybody and seeing everybody all done up in their uh, best 40s and 50s looks, all their vintage clothing and vintage hairdos. So I was thrilled when they asked me to help with a, a tutorial on a vintage hairstyle and vintage makeup. So I am um, going to be doing the classic 1940s victory roll hairstyle. And then I'm also going to go over some vintage makeup, which actually I'm going to start out with that um, so that I can slap some makeup on my face. So <laughs> I'm not on live with barely any makeup on. Excuse me just a second. Got my tiki drink here. So just need to wet the whistle a bit. Okay. So hello, everybody. So I can't see all the comments, but I think they're going to be putting um some up on screen hi ashley love you congratulations on your new little bundle so cute um so just to go over a little bit i do have my hair set already in a wet set um that's what i prefer uh for the longevity of the curl it just seems to hold better and of course that's um what they did more in the 40s, uh, they did wet sets or pin curl sets. So I do have rollers in my hair. I'll take it out. I take this turban off so you guys can see. <laughs> I am wearing some pillow rollers, which are more comfortable to sleep in. Um, you can definitely do pin curls with, um, you know, bobby pins or the little metal double prong or single prong pins. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for joining. Um, so, okay, I'm going to start out with vintage makeup, like I said. Um, really, in the 40s, the makeup was kind of subdued compared to our modern um, looks that we have. Um, what it really focused on was enhancing the natural beauty that we all have. So, um, of course, that means the natural structure of the face, which would be the brows. Those were very big in a vintage look, the lash line and the lips. So I do have a little bit of a base foundation on right now. Um, typically, I, uh, I like to always, regardless of what style I'm going, what era style look I'm going for, um, I like to prime the skin first so you want to use a primer to make make it smooth a nice canvas and to make the the look last all night if we're going to be partying the night away and dancing so um put a primer on whatever you may have or whatever your preference is a cream or um whatnot so i already have that on and then um the keys to a 40s vintage look with makeup is you want it all to be matte. You don't want like shimmery, sparkly makeup. So it was all pretty matte. So for your um, for your foundation, for your base, just make sure you pick a matte, um, not a dewy or luminous foundation. So bear with me. Um, <laughs> of course, it's kind of 
funny to do it into the camera here. So I do have mirrors around me. So if I look away, you know, just I'll try to kind of look in the camera as much as possible. So I like to just kind of put it where I need it. You know, you want to make sure it's nice and blended. No creasing. And I start with the foundation <clears throat> and then you can use some concealer if you still need some more coverage. But starting with foundation actually um, covers pretty well too. So I, I do prefer to use my fingers because um, that really, really gets in there and blends it well. You can certainly use a brush um, if you would like a foundation brush or um, a makeup sponge too. So we're just blending it in good. Adjust my light, my lighting a little bit, sorry. Make sure just to cover any flaws you may have in the skin. Make sure it's nice and blended everywhere. And definitely make sure that you are blending it down into your neck so you don't have a line anywhere because um, regardless of the era that that's a bit of a faux pas <laughs> we want it to look as natural as possible and like I said just enhancing what we already have there okay now um, I'm not going to use any concealer but you can definitely now go in and put concealer on anywhere you may need it um, but you do want to set uh, with a translucent powder um, over your foundation. So you can use a big fluffy brush and just kind of, you know, lightly, lightly blend it over. So that we set it and we don't get any sort of creasing. Or, and this helps to make it last also. Like I said, blend it down on your neck. Okay, so um, in the 40s for the blush, they did wear blush sometimes, they didn't always, but um, they, they concentrated on the apples of the cheeks and it was a matte color. So I have like a, a chestnutty color here, like a brownish pink matte blush that I'm going to use. And this one, it's definitely pigmented. So I've got to go with a light hand here. So you, if you do have one that's very heavy or kind of, um, comes off a lot, make sure you're tapping off the excess that's on the brush before you put it onto your face. So you just want to smile and kind of dot it, focusing on the apples of your cheeks. You do want to blend it out. Of course, you don't want it just to be one big circle right there, but you want to focus it mostly on the apples of your cheeks. You can use your fingers just to blend it a little bit. If if needed. And we're going to do the same, same on the other side. Tap it off so we don't get too much. Make sure you guys can see exactly what I'm doing. Focusing on the apples of the cheeks. I hope you all have been enjoying the virtual ball today. So far, we've had some great acts. I've been tuning in while I was getting ready and getting everything set up. It's It's been a great show so far and more to come. Okay, um, now the brows are a big part of the 1940s look. So um, I like to just take a spoolie, a clean makeup spoolie and just kind of brush them out first just to see what you're working with, get them going you know, how you want them to. And then um, 
I prefer to use a pencil and I actually have a couple different pencils, like a tinier one and a bigger one. Um, you can use a pomade, you know, whatever your preference is and one that matches or is just slightly darker than your hair color or your natural brow color. <clears throat> okay, so I like to start on the underneath of the brow to just kind of um, get the outline of it, get the, the foundation of the brow. I'm gonna put kind of a mirror next to the camera just because it's reverse in the camera. So sorry if I make sure it's still still on camera so you can see it. We're just taking little little strokes and kind of lining the underneath, getting out to the edge all the way out. And then I kind of just I'd go a little lighter handed on this part. And then just fill in the rest. You can do the same where you outline the top and the, get the arch in there good. You can be blending it in with your spoolie kind of. And, you know, by no means you need to break the bank by using all expensive makeup. I, I actually prefer some, some drugstore brands over the expensive kind. So, you know, do what you can, buy what you can, and make it work. So um, here in the inside corner, just kind of, <clears throat> excuse me just blend it, you know, kind of feather it a bit. You don't want it to be very harsh right there. Okay, so there's one side. Here's my natural brow. And then the side that I have the pencil on. We're gonna do the other side now. Like I said, start at the bottom. Kind of get your line in there. See how I just have a line there? Now, you don't want to just leave it like that. <laughs> um, and you can do the same to the top. Get the arch in there. And if anybody has any questions, um, please put them in the comments. And I think Kenzie can um, put them onto my screen so I can see them. Because I cannot see them in the program that I'm in for the live streaming. I'm not actually in on the Facebook app right now. So hopefully Kenzie, you can help with that. You wanna make sure you get a nice point to the end and then just feather it more lightly on the inner, inner corners. Also let me know if you can hear me and see me if I need to adjust anything, I definitely, definitely will try. <laughs> and then you want to make sure, you know, that they match pretty much. They, they don't have to be exactly the same, but, you know, you don't want a big, big difference. Thank you, Tiffany. Thanks for tuning in. Of course, we all wish we could be, okay, they said everything looks and sounds good. Thanks, 1940s ball. <laughs> Thanks for having my back. Um, of course, we all wish we could be in person, partying like we do, dancing the night away. Thank you, Tiffany, miss you too. Um, you know, dancing to the big bands and watching all the great acts that we have, but we're making do with what we got, right? Okay, let me take another little swig here for my tiki drink. You know, it goes with the theme. Gotta gotta keep the theme up. <laughs> mm. I just realized my flamingo light is not on. 
got to have her on. Jeez. Love the curlers. How did you get them to stay so neat and not falling out? So um, I had a turban on when I first came on. Let me grab it really quick. Now, I do have a lot of a few of the hops um, turbans that they make, which are really awesome. This one is not one of theirs. Um, sorry, Christy. But I, I actually won this in in a pinup contest that I did. This is just a pre-sewn turban. You can definitely use one of the hop turbans. I highly recommend them. Theirs um, have ties that you tie on yourself. Um, so they're super adjustable. This one is a little big for my head um, when I don't have the curlers in, but uh, with the rollers, it fits nice and snugly. You can also wear just, uh, sorry, I'm don't mind my reach here, <laughs> get a little close. Um, you can wear just a, a sheer scarf tied around or like a silk, a silk vintage scarf, like, like this one. Um, and just tie it around and you can even pin it in while you're sleeping. And when you're doing the roller set, uh, which I'll talk about after the makeup, you just want to make sure you get them in there really tightly. And these have wire on there that you wrap around and make them stay. Um, I've actually had this set in for the last two nights. I did it two nights ago because I wanted to make sure it was really in there. Um, okay, we got another question. Should you exaggerate the arch if you don't have one naturally for this era? Um, Yes, um, a little bit. I mean, you don't want to do it overly exaggerated like like some modern looks, but you you definitely can. I mean, if you don't have one naturally, you can just kind of make one a little bit more because, you know, that is framing the structure of your face. Okay, so we have we have our brows, we have our blush or rouge on. And um, so for eyeshadow, it wasn't like super, super big. I mean, sometimes they did, you know, they did natural looks and then sometimes they would wear like a gold eyeshadow um, if they're going out. I am just going to do a real quick um, natural eyeshadow look using like tans, you know, and, and browns. Um, the main thing for the eyes was the lashes, um, you know, enhancing the lashes. And and this is a common misconception that people have about 40s makeup that they had to have like a winged liner. A lot of times they didn't even wear liner or just very minimal to enhance the lashes. Um, the winged liner came into play more in the 50s. And then of course with modern pinup, we have the exaggerated wings um which i love and i do that normally but for 40s i'm actually not going to do that um so we're just going to do a little bit of a natural eyeshadow look you want to put on a primer an eyeshadow primer so that it will stick and i actually of course i didn't get get it out beforehand whoops um Okay, well, I don't have it right here, <laughs> the joys of life, but pretend I have a primer that I'm putting a primer on. Um, I did put, you can put like a face primer. I'm just going to use a little bit more of my face primer right on to my eyes. I'm, I just have like, like a cream primer. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of my hand here just so I can blend it in or work it a little bit so I'm not putting too much on my eyes. So just blending it in good here. And and just an FYI, I do have lashes already on. I do um, at home lash extensions, which are amazing. So I cheated a little bit and I didn't want to come on totally naked with with no nothing on my eyes, you know, for the sake of being on stage and being on camera. That definitely helps to make me look human <laughs> and alive. Okay, so you just, with an eye primer, you want to make sure 
you're really blending it that you don't have any creases or anything or globs of it and get it all the way in and again i'm using my fingers for this but you can definitely use a brush like a flat eyeshadow brush you can even like put it on with your fingers and then um i feel like my light is my lashes are so amazing <laughs> that they're kind of creating a shadow here just make sure it's really even because if you don't have it even and you start to put eyeshadow over it it's going to clump or streak or whatever just how it's going to adhere to however you have the primer on there okay so now i'm going to show you the palette the colors that i'm using i'm not going to be using the the really dark one maybe maybe just a tiny bit but we're going to be focusing on these middle colors here and like i said this is just a very natural enhancing you know the natural shape of the eye so i'm taking this one here it's like a taupey brown color just dabbing a, a little fluffy blending brush. Gosh, my words are escaping me right now. Pardon me, my goodness. I haven't talked this much in a long time. I've been, been off of work, so lacking um, human contact. Okay, so now we're gonna just put this in the crease. So what you wanna do is like, not even shut your eye all the way you want to keep the crease there you can kind of squint just a little bit but you want to put it in there and then we're just going back and forth back and forth like windshield wiper movement then blending it good right there so it almost creates a shadow or enhances the crease um in your eye and i just Got that everywhere <laughs> okay so again whatever we do on one eye we're gonna do on the other eye so and like i said with the blush with the blush if you get too much on your brush or just to make sure you want to like tap it so that you don't get any fallout you know on the top of your cheek okay maybe it'll be easier to see on this side so i'm keeping my eye open putting my brush straight into the crease and we're just going back and forth windshield wiper movement blending corner make sure we get it here good okay and i don't put it all the way like i stop like you know if i'm looking straight on stop where my eye color part of my eye stops because if you do it too far to the inner corner it can kind of close your eyes we want an open-eyed bright-eyed look <clears throat> okay and then we're going to take the flat brush uh, make sure you know if you use this for the primer that it's not still wet and you can just kind of wipe it off and make sure it's good or you can use a separate brush and we're going to use the light colored shadow now. Get it on the brush, tap. And we're going to put that right on the lid. And just kind of dot it into, gosh, I'm like, okay, let me try on this other eye. I think it's easier for you guys to see on this eye that's closer to the light. It's a better angle. Get the same color, tap off the excess. Okay. And you can kind of hold your eye too if, if you have hooded eyes or, you know, if you just want to be able to see it more. I'm going to hold it just because I want you guys to get a good view of it. So. Tap 
pat it in there and tap it in there. And you do want this one to go all the way to the corner of your eye. And then I take a little bit of that same color, not too much, and just put it, gosh, sorry, I apologize. Just a little bit on the brow bone, nothing crazy, but just to kind of brighten that area. Okay, once you have that, once you have the shadow on, I like to take a fluffier blending brush and I just like to blend it all together. So it's nice and seamless. See, it's nothing crazy. It just enhances the natural shape, shape of your eye, whatever shape, you know, we have different eye shapes. So you want to follow however yours naturally goes um, and create a contour, so to speak, a contour eyeshadow. Now, if you want to wear liner, you certainly can. Um, you can even do a little bit of a wing, but um, since I have these lashes on, I, I'm not going to do liner, but I will talk about, um, you know, what I prefer to use, like um, a liquid liner that has a felt tip or a brush tip on the end. It makes it really easy to get in there and do a winged, a wing if, if you are wanting that. And if you do a wing, you want to um, have it continue from your bottom lash line and you want it to go up. You don't want it to come down because that's going to pull the whole face and eye down. So you always want to be lifting the face and, you know, brightening everything. So, and the idea of a, a wing on a winged eyeliner is to make it look like the lashes. Um, so you want it to be very natural if you do do a little bit of a wing um for a 440s look and then the big the big part of the eyes is mascara you definitely want to put mascara on um i'm just going to put it on my bottom lashes because i have these lashes already on you can certainly put uh, false lashes on with mascara or without um and then I do like to do the bottom lashes just a little bit because um, if you do too much, you can actually make your eyes look smaller just a little bit because that helps to brighten and brighten the eye color, enhance the eye color. And you can definitely put a few coats of mascara on. Of course, um, vintage makeup, they used cake, black cake mascara. Um, obviously, we, we live in modern times, so we can cheat a little bit and use these nice modern products that we have. Um, but to create a vintage look. Okay, now... Of course, no 40s look would be complete without red lipstick. Now, they did wear red lipstick a lot of times, but um, they also wore, you know, darker wine colors. Um, and so I'm going to use red lipstick. Um, there is a great brand called Besame, which does actually reproduction packaging and colors. They even have that um, black cake mascara that you can get that comes with a little brush that you just wet it, wet the cake and then put the brush in and brush it on, um, brush it on 
your lashes. Okay, we have from Megan, what brand of eye cream? So I think you're meaning the eye primer, possibly. I prefer or suggest to use um, Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion that really um, makes it makes it last. Okay, another question. If you don't want to use the brown palette for your eyeshadow for an evening look, can you use a blue palette? which was very popular during the 40s. Yes, yes, they definitely use blue. Like I said, they use gold, but then they also would use blue for um, like an evening glam look, so to speak. So yes, that that's great. I loved that you mentioned that the winged eyeliner is a no-no for 1940s makeup, because that's a common mistake for a lot of gals. Yes, definitely. Um, it can be really confusing kind of differentiating between 40s and 50s and even modern um, modern pinup looks. So um, the modern look definitely is an enhanced kind of over the top look in my opinion, like the rockabilly pinup look. So, you know, that's where you get the really big wings, you know, going halfway up the lid, which is totally cool. That That's a good look too. I. I rock that look sometimes, but it's not a 40s look. So um, back to, I was talking about Besame. So they actually um, make a lot of vintage lipsticks that the packaging is just like what they had in the 40s and the colors, um, and not just the 40s, they do going back to the 20s, I think different shades depending on what was popular. And they actually base the shades off of true vintage makeup. This one that I have is the the Victory Red. So show you that. Now I <laughs> actually prefer to use a liquid lipstick just because it stays in place and that's one of the nice modern modern conveniences we have is liquid lipstick because it's going to dry um using a traditional lipstick you know it can it can move around so i just wanted to show you this one um that color so good victory red and i'll show it to you on my hand Yes, Anna. Hi, Anna. I met her at the ball, the winter ball last year. Victory Red is the best by Besame is what she said. She's right. So it's like a blue toned red, classic red. Um, but I prefer to, like I said, use a, a liquid lipstick. So I'm going to be using this one. It's a Kat Von D. Um, actually, no, not this one. I have so many in here. I grabbed the wrong one. This one's good too, but it's more of a brighter red. It's Santa Sangria. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Sangri. Sangre. My husband would, would kill me with the way I'm I'm pronouncing Spanish. Okay, well, I guess I'm gonna use that one because I can't find the other one. <laughs> I'm doing so great today, aren't I? Okay, so it's a very bright red color. Now, if you do use lipstick, um, it I, I recommend to use a liner first and then fill it in with lipstick, traditional lipstick, because that's going to keep it all in place, keep it hopefully from feathering. Um, and you could even like do it. Um, <laughs> thank you, Anna. You can do it uh, with a liner all under and then put lipstick over and that will definitely make it last longer. I'm gonna use liquid lipstick. So I like to start at, on the bottom and then I do the top. So I'm gonna try not to talk while I do this. Okay, so I kind of just put it in the middle there and then I go along the lining it, so to speak. And I push kind of hard when I'm doing this just to make sure that I'm getting a good, a good application. Okay, get a little bit more. 
yeah, let me know if you have any other questions and any other, rec you know, what I recommend, what, what products that I enjoy to use. And, and also, you know, feel free to message me um, if you want further, further recommendations. Okay, so now the Cupid's bow, that's definitely a uh, an area you need to be careful and precise on. So I like to kind of tighten my lips. And I just put a little bit on the brush each time. I don't like a whole bunch on there because sometimes you can kind of glob it and get it in the wrong area. So you're kind of creating a heart right here. Now see, I kind of don't have it even there, so just go back over it all the way. Make sure it's even. And there we have it, the, the 40s red lip, signature red lip. And with using a liquid lipstick, that's going to stay with drinking. I mean, if you eat greasy food, it will kind of come off, but not as bad as regular lipstick. <clears throat> and then what was the brown eye palette? Ur Urban Decay. Yes. Um, it was the Urban Decay Naked 2 Basics. So I was kind of trying to be careful and not just do like a bunch of plugs for makeup brands, but whatever, right? <laughs> I want you girls to know, you people to know what I am using. So, so definitely have to get that Cupid's bow shape right. Yeah, you want to, you know, have that nice, you know, um, kind of defined Cupid's bow because, you know, that's like the kissy face look. So yes, that is big with with the 40s look. Now, since you did all this work, you want to make sure it stays right. So I definitely recommend using a, a setting spray. This is an Urban Decay All Nighter, you know, whatever. There's a lot of good makeup setting sprays. So you just want to um, hold it, a, not like straight up by your face, you just want to find mist. And um, you want to go like up and down and side to side. Okay. There we go. So I'll give you kind of a close up look here. The eyes. Definitely, if you have any questions about anything, feel free to message me on my pages. I am on Facebook, Instagram. I even started a TikTok page. <laughs> my my teenage kids are are in awe of how many views I have on one of my my videos on TikTok. I don't really know what I'm doing very much on TikTok, but you know, I try. I did a little fast hair tutorial on there. So feel free to message me on any one of my pages and with any questions or um, I am available for actually virtual one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions if anybody is interested in that. So, okay, now I'm going to move on to the hair. So I'm going to start taking out my, my pillow rollers. I'll just show you what they look like. They have wire in there and then they have like a little foam piece on the inside. They bend how you would like it. Hi, Anna. Hi, hola. That's my husband's sister, my sister-in-law in Mexico city. I'm so glad you could watch. Oh, Okay, so like I said, I I set my hair two nights ago, actually. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make sure it was in there really good. So I'm gonna be talking about what I did as I'm taking these, these rollers out. So 
um, to set my hair, I washed it, I freshly washed it. And then I, um, I put in like a smoothing cream. I prefer to use Olaplex. I am a, a professional licensed cosmetologist here in Colorado. So I haven't been working though because of our current situation, but so I highly recommend Olaplex products, but any sort of smoothing cream uh, and the oil just to protect the hair. So just taking these out here, my hair is really short right now. So usually it'd be a little bit longer, but I cut it, I chopped it off. And so then I blow dried my hair. I didn't blow dry it all the way. I left it somewhat um, damp. Those rollers are so cute. Thank you. Yes, I got them from Amazon. Can you believe it? They come in a bunch of different colors, but pink's my favorite color. So I had to get the pink. Um, and they come in a big pack of them. So you can find those on Amazon. Um, so I blow dry my hair, not all the way dry. Um, but that's a common mistake that people do with wet sets. They uh, try to set their hair when it's, when it's too wet and then it's never going to dry, especially if you don't have a lot of time before your event. Like that has happened to me a couple of times in the past where, especially when my hair was longer and with it being blonde and porous, um, my hair was not, not dry in time for the event. So I rocked the rollers, which, Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, but some people may say it's a faux pas. <laughs> So, um, and you know, you can do a curling iron set too, if that's what you like to do, what you prefer. Um, but with a wet set, I find it lasts way longer because you're actually, when you're going, when you're doing a wet set, you're actually changing the structure of the side bonds of the hair. Um, when you're just you know, curling it with a curling iron, your hair is straight. The side bonds are like what makes up the strand of the hair. And it's like a big chain. And um, when you use a curling iron, you're just bending straight hair into a curl. So that can actually be why, why it falls out or doesn't last very long. So I definitely recommend a wet set. I mean, I know it's, it can be tricky. You definitely have to practice doing a wet set. Let me just talk about how I put it in here. So, I mean, I basically do the same sort of wet set for whatever style I may be doing. So I do like a mohawk section and you wanna take um, whatever the size of your roller or, um, curlers, rollers, whatever. Um, typically it's like a one inch section. Um, you can do a little bit bigger if your hair is longer, but I prefer to do a tight curl. And then if you're going for like a wavy look, just brush it out more. So I did a mohawk section here and then I just did a section going down here and a section going down here. And you want them all either going backwards or down all the same, same even sections and rolls and directions. Okay, I'm just taking them out. So um, regardless if you're putting rollers in or if you're doing a curling iron set, you want to do the same sizes all around and you want to use good styling products, which um, brings me to the products that I used. When I was putting the rollers in, um, I would take e each section of hair and I spray on a setting spray or grooming spray. I prefer Suavecita grooming spray which I used as a setting spray. So I sprayed it all on there really good. And then um, a pomade, 
a water soluble pomade again suavecita Should show you the inside of it Ooh, fresh this is a brand new one <laughs> um it smells so good it smells like watermelons or berries or something um i mean you can definitely use any sort of water soluble pomade i say water soluble because there's some oil based ones and that can definitely build up in the hair and if you have a water soluble one if you get too much you can just put some water in there and and kind of tone it down a bit or it's going to wash out of your hair when you actually do go to wash your hair after having a style in for a while so um Okay, let me just show you really quick. I'll pretend like I'm rolling this one, um, like I'm putting the roller in. So this is the section that I have right here, one inch subsection. So I sprayed, sprayed it all over. Okay, and then I took a little bit of pomade, like not very much at all, work it into the fingers. And since the hair is wet, you can kind of work it and you want to make sure you get it all the way down because the ends can be a problem for people um if you're doing like with rollers it can be hard to get those ends to cooperate <laughs> so i um take it and actually you're putting all the hair together it's called ribboning and then if you have rollers like this, you'll be able to feel the little foam part in there. And then you get it on there and I hold it with one hand and then I kind of use my other hand. And this can be tricky if you have layers or unevenness in your hair, but you just kind of get it on there and start rolling. And you know, you can kind of try to do this, kind of tuck it. Oh gosh, sorry, this is reversed here in the camera. Kind of tuck them in there, make sure the ends are all the way. And then you just roll it. Roll it and put it all the way as tight as you can. And then I hold it like that. And then with the wire part, you can twist them and kind of push it, mush it on so that it stays really good. Excuse me. Too much tiki drinks. <laughs> oh, it's dripping on me. Okay, so that's what I did to put the rollers in. So I'm gonna just take that out again. So you can see how long my hair is. See, so I have shorter hair. Sandra, the same technique for shorter hair. Um. Yeah, yeah, with the products and um, however you are getting the set in there, um, you want to do the same sort of technique to where all the curls are going the same way and the products help to hold it. Now, you know, if you have really short hair, for rollers, you want to make sure it rolls around like two and a half times. So if your hair is really short, you're probably going to have to do like a pin girl set where you just, um, you know, have a roller. So you have to kind of just use your fingers and start, start the curl. See, so I had a little bit popping out. So you just kind of, and then roll it. And then you would have it. For the side ones, you would have it flat against the head. And you can take a bobby pin and go through. And then that's a pin curl. Your hair would be wet when you do that and then you let it dry. So for shorter hair, you probably have to do like really short hair. My hair, my hair is pretty short right now. It comes to like here. Okay, so I'm gonna get all these rollers out. So I wanna just talk a bit about why I chose to do the, the 40s victory roll, classic victory roll style and, and why it's called victory rolls. So of course there's a lot of different 
<clears throat> hairstyles with rolls and um you know it depends on the placement and the shape of of the roll now victory rolls came about because um of course women in the 40s wanted to show and celebrate show their support for the troops and for their victory overseas so actually um victory roll is supposed the victory rolls are supposed to be together and kind of in the shape of a v so um if they're not together then they're just rolls they're not victory rolls so <laughs> oh gosh see i'm all reversed in the, the camera here so a true victory roll is touching together and you can do rolls in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, you can do them flatter against the head. Um, you can do them uh, going backwards, going forward, going up. Um, you can do one big one in the middle, which is called the suicide roll. Gosh, look at him, just all over the place here. Um, of course, there's a Gibson roll that goes up up the back of the the head like going up and in um but true victory rolls are in the front big standing up i would say um you know the bigger the better <laughs> um and touching okay we're getting there the most time consuming part of a of a hairstyle is getting the set in so that's why i had my hair set already because i didn't want to take the whole time fumbling around with that <laughs> okay whoops sorry for the wobble i bumped into the, the cord i have on my my phone so now these ones I actually, I got a great tip from one of my lovely friends and clients, well, former clients, not, I'm not working right now, but um, her name's Taryn, and she has attended the ball. Hi, Taryn, if you're out there, I miss you. She actually um, gave me a nice tip of, if you already have sponge rollers, you can actually work it onto this pillow roller, and that just gives you a bit more of a you know sturdy structure base um and i just have them on the on three of them because usually like if i'm doing like a 50s maryland swoop i put them this way um and i like to have it a little bit bigger right there so that's why these ones look a little different but i she, I think, put them on all, all of hers, but I just did them on a few because it's a little tricky getting them on there. Okay. Here we go. What do you recommend for short, stubborn, my straight hair to get a curl? Um... Definitely recommend, you know, like I said, using the Suavecita or any sort of grooming setting spray and really coating it good. Um, this one is kind of like a hairspray and a shine spray put together. It has hold in it for sure. Um, and then using more pomade. Um, and you can mix them together. <clears throat> um, you can actually like spray some of the setting spray in your hair and then put some pomade in there and mix it together and coat your hair all the way. Um, just make sure you, you use a lot of product for hair that's hard or stubborn that doesn't like to take a curl. Okay, here we go. Now we have all of the rollers out that you see them. And don't mind my hairline. I, I'm growing out, been growing out. Um, an undercut, a nape undercut. 
I put them on all of mine because I roll very tight. Miss you too. That's Taryn. That's who gave me the great tip. Yes, she put them on all of hers because she likes to roll them very tight. And sometimes if you roll it very tight, the one that's in there, you know, it gets squished down a bunch. So you want to have a nice, you know, nice sturdy base in there. Okay, so now we have all our curls. We're looking a lot like Shirley Temple here. So what I like to do usually is just kind of use my fingers to break, break up the curls a bit. Just so they're not stuck so much together. And now we're gonna start the styling part. So And of course it with the wet set you kind of get some poofy frizziness a little bit but that's okay if you start to get that it's okay we can deal with that in our brush out okay so now with with victory rolls you can definitely part down the middle and do two but usually i like to um do it to the side oh and let me show you i what tools i'm going to be using so i like to use a teasing comb so this has one side's a teasing comb and one side's just kind of a wide tooth comb that's what makes it a teasing comb is that there's the shorter shorter bristles and the longer ones so it grips more and then also teasing brush, skinny, teasing smoothing brush. And sometimes I do like to use a bigger or bristle brush to smooth. And then bobby pins that match your hair. And hairspray. This is Suavecita. Kind of has like pomade in with the hairspray. So I really like that one and the grooming spray and pomade that I mentioned before. Okay, now you want to section your hair. So I prefer to do it to the side just because it gives that more asymmetrical look. And if you um, are not, you're not trying to get it perfect like to if you do it in the middle you got to kind of make them look the same on both sides i'm just going to brush through and kind of break it up a little bit more okay so now Get a nice. I'm gonna do this in the mirror. <laughs> Get a nice even part in there. And we're going to section the front from the back. So you want to take from behind your ear up to the top of your head you see there that's going to be one section oh and clips um using some clips too just to separate the sections you want to clip the back Just using these duckbill clips, I actually got them from Miss Lauren Reynolds' website, uh, the vintage hair styling.com, I think is the website. Um, got these cute pink duckbill clips from there. She has lots of awesome um, hair styling tools and 
even, um, you know, hair and stuff, hair nets, um, lots of tools, stuff you would need for, for vintage styling. And she's also wrote a couple hair styling books. So definitely look out for that, for those. She's, she's great. Okay, so we're just parting. We're just sectioning the back away, clipping the back away, because we're gonna be working with the front, getting the rolls in there first. Oh, look at this lovely style. <laughs> okay, so hopefully you all can see this okay. I'm gonna start with this side. Okay, I'm just gonna clip it like that. Yeah, 20s, a little bit of a 20s or 30s style here. <laughs> okay, so we are going to get our foundation in there. So we're gonna be starting with the teasing, the back combing. So you want to take a subsection, about a one inch subsection. Put the other hair out of the way, up out of the way. Okay. Now I prefer to use a, the teasing comb to do my, my back combing, my teasing, because as opposed to the brush, because I feel like it gets that, um, it really locks that teasing in there. I mean, you can use a, a brush if you prefer, if it seems to work better with your hair style and texture, your hair type and texture. So we have our section here. And now keep in mind, this is our bottom section. So I'm just going to be teasing on this side. Once we get further up, I'm gonna tease on both sides. But um, since this is the sections that is gonna be coming up and on the outside of our roll. We don't wanna to do too much teasing because you're going to be able to see that. Of course, we're gonna smooth, smooth the hair on the outside, but sometimes it can make it a little harder if you tease it too much on, on that section. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the hairspray and you can use the, the setting spray for this too, but I prefer hairspray. Spray a little bit of it. Take your teasing comb. And then we're actually gonna hold the ends of the hair, starting in the middle of the hair, and we're just back combing like that. And pushing it all the way down to the base of the hair. Okay. And then I like to spray a little bit more. And then I actually like to kind of spread it out a little bit where we actually have the teasing because sometimes it can just be like a big clump of a tease and then you can kind of notice that we want the teasing to be as even as possible. Okay we're going to move to the next section another one inch section here we go Oops, I'm walking stuff over here. Just clip it out of the way. Oh my gosh. Okay. Now on this section, I am going to tease on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to spray on the top and the bottom. And then we're gonna start. Start. You wanna get all the hair in your hand. We're gonna start on the underneath part. Just back comb it, pushing it all the way down. And then we go to the other side of it and do the same thing. Oh. Okay, 
and then spray it again just to lock it in and then kind of just pull it don't pull it too much you don't want to like just ruin all the work that you did in there but just kind of make sure it's the whole section right there it's not just like a clump of backcombing right in the middle or one side or not just make sure to kind of fan it out a little bit okay split it again I meant to put some music on in the background, but forgot to do that. I wasn't sure if it would make it hard to hear me or not. But my voice, kind of a loud voice. Okay, you got your section again, spray it on the front, the underneath and the top. Take your teasing comb, tease it underneath. Back combing, push it down all the way to the base. And then on the top, you can kind of start closer to the base and then go up a little bit, but then bring it down more. It's kind of hard to see because of this piece of hair. So like start like closer here and kind of work your way to the mid strand but then you can bring that teasing down to the base you want it locked in there and then spray it and you can take it and just kind of hand that out again Okay, here's our last section for this, this roll. So spray it. That's the back. I need to clip that one in. Okay, here's my My last section here underneath. Top. Okay, and then you can just kind of look and see if you need any more anywhere spray that to lock it in like i said make sure your teasing isn't just clumped into one big one big blob okay now that we have that whole section teased we want to get it all into our hands now sometimes um because we did the teasing the sectioning like one here one here one here one here Wait, where am I? Like going up horizontally, sometimes it's actually good to kind of take it all and split it in the middle and just, gosh, just tease that together going vertically just so you don't have any sort of gaps. And do that this way too. And then kind of get it all together in your hands. And you can kind of tease it all together just to make it all one. Okay, now you have this in your hands. You wanna take a little bit of your pomade. I mean, cause you can get the pomade in your hands before you grab the whole section. You wanna rub it in good and then just kind of grab your whole section and coat it with the pomade. 
and then get your smoothing brush and you just want to lightly you don't want to comb out all that teasing you just put in there but lightly comb and smooth it all on the outside I love this look. There are so many steps. LOL. Is it easier or harder with longer hair past the shoulders? Um, yeah, there, there are a lot of steps to it. And um, I would say, I mean, it's all kind of, kind of the same amount of difficulty. Once your hair is kind of longer than the shoulders it can actually be a little harder to do because you're having to roll more of the hair so i'm just spraying it with a little bit of hairspray because i have these little baby hairs hope you can see this okay so we're um we're combing it all and at this point i like to kind of hold it like where the roll is going to go and just smooth it and kind of get that curve in there just to kind of get it going in the direction we want it to. Okay, now for the ends here, you want to brush them so they're all you can see this they're all going together and you can get more pomade if you need to yeah I mean it is a lot of steps and it is kind of time consuming but once you get the style in there it should you know be in there and last now another thing I want to say make sure you're smoothing in the back here too because just because we can't see it doesn't mean somebody else can't. Okay, so now you have all of all of your hair kind of brushed together, all the curls kind of coming together. And you just want to make sure they're all going the same way. And then you can start start your roll. Now, now whatever size you start with, it's just going to get bigger than that. So with somebody with long hair, you want to start with a pretty small roll because it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And if you have really long hair, you're going to end up with really, really big rolls. Not that there's anything wrong with really big rolls, but sometimes they get too big and too hard to pin. So now one thing I like to do is actually put some pins down here or at least one just going like to the side of the part because that's going to help keep that hair um, in place and then you'll be able to anchor it. Now my hair is I have some short pieces like I said because I was growing out my my undercut so those are giving me a little bit of trouble here but so see I'm just rolling and then we're just rolling all the way down smooth those little hairs into it you can you know put it back up and roll it again if needed Okay, I like to actually have it like that and give it a little bit of a spray before I put a pin in there at all. Okay, now usually you want to try to hide the pins as much as possible. So usually I go in underneath and into that roll a little bit. Give it a spray if you have any flyaways or unruly hairs. 
And then once you have that first pin in there, kind of anchoring it a little bit, you can kind of play with it to see, to adjust it as, as needed. And you can use the end of your comb or your brush and you can kind of get that part and get the hairs how you want it. And sometimes this gets pushed back a little bit so you can kind of get it and bring it to the front and give it a little bit of a spray, use spray as, as needed. I mean, you don't want to overdo it because your hair definitely gets sticky. And then if you touch it with your fingers, it can stick to your hair, but just kind of smooth it as necessary. Uh, I like it to be all the way to the front there. And then you want to pin it. Usually I put one in the back here. Okay, they're telling me to take as long as I need. Oh yeah, let's see, 520, okay. Thank you. See, I knew I was going to be going longer. Okay, so we have our first roll in there. Let's spray. Just want to make sure it's okay from the back too. And then you want to have all these hairs going the same. Nice and smooth there. You can definitely put more pins, put as many pins as you need. Um, sometimes I like to kind of hide one in here and actually you can like um, push it into that pin that we put in there initially, kind of overlap it onto that because that's going to give you nice nice structure. Okay, there's our first roll. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Just be in mind, we're not um, not going to mess up the roll we already have in there. Okay, we did a lot of work for that. So we're going to do the same thing. Section, take subsections about one inch or so. And we're taking this. Give it a spray. And on this bottom one, we're not, we're not teasing on the very bottom. Okay. Because that can make it harder to smooth it when, when we're actually doing the roll. Okay. We got our our nice base of teasing, spray it again. And we're just gonna fan it out a little bit. I have a total newfound respect for this hairstyle now. I didn't realize how much work it is to create. Yes, it's a lot of work, definitely a lot of work. Um, but oh man, it's so worth it. It's such a great style. And um, I don't know if I finished my thought that I had before, but I was saying, yes, it may take a little longer initially, you know, to style your hair like this, to get it in there. Um, but once you have it in there, it can last for a few days. I've actually worn styles three, four days in a row, um, if you have that good foundation in there, um, it's not gonna budge. You know, some people wash and style the hair every day and that takes at least 30 minutes. But if, if you do a style like this, which can take an hour or more, um, 
but you let it last for a few days, you know, that comes out to be the same amount of time that you're putting into your look. And you get to have this awesome vintage, vintage hairstyle. And believe me, you will get loads of compliments on it. Loads of looks. <laughs> Some people, I think we think Maybe they're staring, but they're just staring at all the glory, taking it all in and kind of in disbelief because, um, you know, not, not a lot of people do this. There's, we're having more and more, of course, oops, I've been using the wrong side. We want to make sure we're using the, the teasing side. Um, it's becoming more and more popular again to do these sort of pinup looks but where i'm from i live in ss park i'm pretty much the only one who is going to be looking like this <laughs> when i leave the house up here but you know i used to be a little insecure about that but then i realized just because somebody's looking doesn't mean it's a bad thing okay we got our section here spraying on both the sides now this section that's closest to the roll we already have there, we have to be careful not to disturb the roll that we already have. So we want to just be careful teasing this one. And I promise you, I'm kind of like taking a little longer because I'm, I'm having to explain it. Um, and kind of adjust how I'm doing it so that you guys can see it. The more practice you have, the more the more that you do it, the quicker it's going to be. And actually, the more that you do your hair in the same way over and over again, like if you, if you set your hair a lot, your hair does have memory. And it'll just kind of fall into place more. It will be easier to do the more you do it because it remembers okay so we're gonna just spray this section fan it out a little bit um and certainly what works for me you know you you might come up with better ways or better tricks or shortcuts so to speak on what could work for you and your hair and hair type okay just gonna steam it out a little bit right there all right again we're going to take a little bit of our pomade in our fingers work it in there take the whole section smooth that pomade all over the whole section you want to make sure you're getting those any little baby hairs you may have around the hairline make sure you can take a little bit more if you need to make sure you're getting the back too we want our hairstyles to look good from any angle any way somebody may be looking at us we want to make sure it looks good just because we can only see the front doesn't mean other people can't see the rest of it okay so we have all the whole section that's going into the roll and we're going to lightly we don't want to brush out all that that teasing we just put in there but we're just going to lightly because you want to do this so you guys can see it smooth the exterior smooth the back like i said got to look good from any angle okay and then make all those curls whip them into into shape here make them go all all the same direction and I like to kind of like I said, be combing it in the way that the roll is gonna go. So I like to kind of comb it that way 
and then give it a little spray. Comb it and get that curve in there because that's going to be the outside of the roll. Okay. Use your hands and bear with me. My hair is very short. And like I said, I have some uneven pieces because like right around this area because I, I had this whole bottom part of my head shaved for the last four years or something like that. So vintage, right? <laughs> That's the rockabilly side of me that I have a tattoo on the back of my head. And I um, had that part shaved for a long time just so you would be able to see the tattoo. But then I decided to grow it out. And it's been quite a pain in the rear. Okay, now because, you know, I did the wet set and my curls are definitely in there. So they're kind of, I mean, they're basically, and I'm going to do that a little bit more, but um, we're going to put that anchor pin like I was talking about on the other side, like right there. You don't want to be able to see it from the front or the back, but that just kind of holds that hair in place. And then it gives us a bit of a, of more foundation for our other pins to to meet with. Okay. Use your fingers and do it too. You can get more pomade. Make sure you're rubbing the pomade not just globbing it in there. And you, um, to get the hair going all the same way, you can actually use your thumb. See how I'm putting it and using the curve of my thumb to comb it and make all the curls go the same way. Okay. And don't, don't worry if you're getting little pieces like this. I mean, you want to smooth it as much as you can, but if that happens, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so get to the end, make it all go the same. And you wanna kinda keep in mind where you're gonna be ending up here. You want them to touch together to make it a true Victor roll style. You don't want to end up with it way over here. Then you have a gap. I mean, it still rolls, but it's still a vintage style. It's just not, not true Victor rolls. Let me just give it a little spray for those that keep wanting to pop out. And I like to kind of pull it up and push a little bit so that I'm keeping that volume in there. Okay. So then you just start to do a big pin curl, making sure all, all of your ends are, are tucked in there and going how they're supposed to. And if you have shorter pieces that aren't reaching all the way up in there, just add them in as needed when you get to that part. And if you have parts that kind of come out of line, just tuck them in there. So I got the majority of my hair in the roll, give it a little bit of a spray. Then you can kind of Move that back. And if you just have really stubborn ones that will not cooperate, 
You can always like hide a pin down in there. Just make sure you're trying your best to hide the pins. Trying your best to not just have a pin right, right where everybody can see it. I mean, I understand it, it's hard. These are tricky styles, especially if it's your first time doing it, but you just do your best. Okay, now we're gonna take a pin and we're gonna kind of lift up the roll a little bit and stick it in there. Okay, look, now I have this whole part here that's very short and it's not going, it's not going with its friends. So we're just gonna take a little bit of the pomade, smooth it in there. Now you wanna be careful when you're doing this, but just comb it up in. Comb it in there. Spray it. Okay, taking more pins. Now I got a little bit of a loop here. And, and those little ones that, that I was mentioning, I'm just gonna take it and Pin it in there. See, and just kind of make sure it's going with the rest of them. And then now that we have the roll, the basic shape of the roll, we're just gonna adjust it as needed. Now, see, I still have a little bit of a gap right here. That's okay. And you can actually like, you know, manipulate the roll a little bit to make it come together more. I like to put some hiding down in here. Slide it all the way as much as you can. Sorry about that, my daughter called me. <laughs> I'm on my phone right now, so. Told her I'd be done at 5.30, so she probably thinks I'm done already. Almost done. Okay, am I on here still? Can't see myself. Kenzie, am I on still? I'm not seeing myself. Can you hear me? Can you see me? I lost the picture of myself, but that's okay. If you guys can see me, then it's okay. No visual. Can you put take me out and put me back in? I'm so sorry. I'm just kind of smoothing a little more on the rolls that I have already in there. Maggie, can you hear us? Oh, can I you can hear, hear you. Okay, so okay, um, we can't see you. We can hear you. So I'm just thinking maybe you should just hang up and quickly call back in on that link. Okay, yeah, let me go out and come back in. Okay.
okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I, I got a phone call from my daughter. Um, since I told them, do not call me when I'm supposed to be on live, but I'm taking longer than I'm supposed to. So she thought it was done already. So I apologize for that. I'm almost done. Okay, so now you can see the rolls are coming together. We do have a little bit of smoothing that we a little bit more smoothing we can do so just be very careful when you do this kind of hold the hair and just kind of smooth along and you can use the end to kind of get any any pieces that need to go into the rolls see how some of them aren't going straight together you just hold it and put it like that Go along with the roll. Looking good, Maggie. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Cherry Lou Red. <laughs> That's a fellow pinup model who lives in the Springs. Okay, so let me give you the view. Hopefully I got it. Okay, so we have our rolls in there. Just give it a good spray. I found a clean toothbrush. Works great for flight. Good tip. That's great. Yeah, that's kind of the same sort of texture of like a boar bristle brush. So yeah, if you have a, a clean toothbrush, <laughs> we don't want to dirty up our style. Um, that definitely can help with, with the little flyaways. Okay, so... Now we just have the back of our style to work with here. So you can do a few different things with the back. You can, um, you know, just do a traditional kind of brush out, which is what I was planning on doing. You can um, do more rolls in the back. You can do a Gibson roll that like goes up and under. Um, but I'm just going to for the sake of time and because my hair isn't that long in the back um i'm just gonna do a traditional brush out so i'm not gonna be able to see very much i'm gonna use a mirror a little bit but i won't really be able to see myself so okay just make sure i'm in the view okay so we have our curls so you can um do a little bit of a teasing up here at the top. Like I said, just be careful um, not to bump into your rolls and mess them up. So just, you know, take a section here. And this is like beautiful sculpture, true artistry. Thank you, Lolita. That's very nice. It is, it's, it's an art, um, hair and makeup is definitely an art form. It's a wearable art, just like tattoos. <laughs> I know tattoos weren't the um, weren't the the traditional 40s look. People, some people did have tattoos um, in the 40s. Obviously, the sailors and started um, with Sailor Jerry and all of them. Um, Navy men and stuff like that, but not a lot of women had them, but, but there actually was some. Okay, so I just teased a bit up at the top and then literally, let's see, there's a comment. Love your leopard neck tattoo. Thank you. <laughs> I love the tattoo. Thank you, ladies. That's so sweet of you. Um, I actually have that tattoo because I have psoriatic arthritis and I do get spots on my skin right now. Um, it's a bit under control because I, I've been vegan for a while and then I went gluten-free. And so being gluten-free um, has definitely helped my skin. Anyways, now that I'm looking at the back of my hair, look, you can see this is an example of not clean parting. <laughs> so don't do that. Um, I kind of missed the part here. But you can you can kind of camouflage that a little bit by backcombing and getting some volume in there. But when you do this at home, just make sure that you're 
being aware of your part. So for the back, you literally just pull it down and then you want to like get those curls at the bottom. The more you comb it, the more you're going to see um, how the curls are going. And if, if you're having any wave, you can kind of go like this and then come up with it. And then you should start to see somewhat of a wave pattern. Just keep combing. I apologize um, for not getting my sections nice and clean because um, it's hard doing it on camera. Reversed and backwards. Just really the key to a brush out is um, Brushing. I have a PSA to love the idea of a tattoo, acknowledging, celebrating our spots. Oh, psoriatic arthritis. Oh, okay. A fellow, fellow person who has that, but yes, we, it's a part of us. So we have to, we have to accept all parts of ourselves. Like, you know, can't, can't run from from what it is, so. Okay, let me look in the back again. Um, I'm gonna split here. So if you get a split, it's kind of because I didn't get my parting right, but you can definitely take it and just back comb a little bit more. If you have any sort of splits or gaps in the hair, just do some back combing in that area. I think there, it kind of helped that. So you just want to have this somewhat smooth down into the fluff of curls. And so once you um, once you get the tops, uh, you know, styled like you want it, you can kind of Left the bottom and you can pin it. You can go in and define, define the curls. My hairline is a mess right now. I apologize for that. And you can use, use some more of your pomade to um, smooth it down and define the curl. So you can just take it and literally, you know, swirl it. So those curls pop back out. And um, when my hair is longer, I actually like to um, take it like right here, get some pins and actually pin it right there. Like all along Kind of with the pins. Let me see if I can do it with my hair this short. That kind of helps to hold it and make your style um, stay how you want it all night, especially if you're going to be dancing or or anything like that. Um, you can pin it like that. You can do like X's with the the bobby pins if you need even more of a hold. Let's see. So see that kind of just holds that um, the top smooth and then you can just um, you know structure your curls so it's hiding the the pins. Like that. Mold the curls so that you don't see any of those pins. My silly little hairs are not cooperating right now, but so that's the gist of it. Now you want to, you know, check from the front what you did to the back. Like these sides, you can take pins here too. 
and pin it like that. And then just put the curl over it. Same on the other side, my pins. So definitely feel free to message me if, if you have any further questions, if, if you'd like to um, schedule a one-on-one -on -one personalized lesson with me. Thank you. Um, Make sure we're even on both sides, what you're gonna see of the back. And then just give it a good spray all around. And then I will show you close up. How it looks. And now you can add hair flowers if you like, you know, Put a hair flower there you can put a hair flower in the back um you know you don't have to use huge ones you can use little ones like these ones you know just hair flowers to match your outfit or however you may be thinking or feeling you can put a snood which was very popular um hi whiskey thank you um pin a snood onto the back part right here which is like a net that goes over your hair and then it holds it in great job i love the style thank you sarah um that was very popular in the 40s you can put a hat on let me grab i have a big old reproduction sun hat Put a hat on if you're going to be out in the sun. Tie it. Or you can just leave it how it is. Um, you can also put a sheer scarf over. And so if you're going to be out in the wind, you know, that kind of protects it. You can put a hairnet on it too. To... All right. To protect it so um thank you so much everybody who watched um everybody who's attending our virtual 40s ball um thank you to the 40s ball for having me amanda hi she said girl you are amazing always i love learning from you oh thank you i like to when i'm when i have the hat on i like to put a big old flower on there too so here's my look. Thank you so much. Thank you to the 40s ball. Oh, there's my hubby, Mikey. <laughs> Everybody gets their tiki drinks and keep enjoying the rest of the night. Thank you, Kinsey. Yes, Maggie. Thank you so much. That was amazing. And, and thank you for taking the extra time to really show us how to do it. I, I know it takes a lot of time to do Vince's hairstyling. And, um, That's right. I was pretty surprised, you know, people can rush through it, but you, you can't really see all the little details and the work that goes into it. So I exactly. thank you for taking the time to really show us every little bit. Um, well, thank you for yeah. allowing me. I'm sorry. I was trying to be aware of my time, but I'm not very good at that. So, and I'm a bit oh. of a perfectionist. perfectionist no, we, so we were just doing here. videos of, the, you know, the back, uh, behind the scenes stuff, which we've showed already. So I was, um, that's why it's, it's good that you needed a little extra time because obviously people are very interested in what you're, you're teaching here. So, um, so thank you so much for spending some time with us and, and sharing your very um, skillful talents that I know it thank takes years you. and years to learn and to perfect. So thank you so much, Reggie. <laughs> Bye-bye. Wow, we love you. Thank you. Love you. This fit. And send her lots of tips, though. She, she did a great job today. All right. We love you, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Uh, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, we're so glad that she um she did that. That was a really beautiful hairstyle, and um, I've myself never seen how to do that. That was really, really neat to learn. Okay. So next, we are going to have, oh, my gosh, it's our swing dancing lesson coming up. 
All right. Um, but before that starts, that's not starting until 6.20. So we've got about a half an hour. Um, we're going to play some behind the scenes footage for you guys. And we're going to test something because we were having a little bit of glitch issues. Whenever we seem to play recorded videos, it, it gets glitchy. The live ones are great. So that's good because most of the people coming up are live. Um, we Let me just tell you what we've got coming up for the rest of the night. Um, so we've got a live swing dance lesson with Swing Nights Denver, which is going to be fantastic. They are, honestly, they are the best swing dancers I've ever seen, Seth and Danny. They, um, they're they absolutely phenomenal swing dancers. They just, they have so much grace and style to their dancing. And um, uh, they've just they've just got a lot of heart in what they're doing. So I'm excited to, um, to share them with you and have them teach you their beginner class. And they also do um, some uh, classes. I think it's called Patreon. Patreon. Um, they teach a Charleston class through uh, an online Charleston class that you can take. And they're going to show you a little video that's an intro to that as well. And we have a couple other videos of um, uh, it's the Jeremy, Mo Jeremy Money with um, some of their swing dancers, which we're going to show. And then after the swing dancing portion, we come to one of the big highlights of the night, which is our USO show, our virtual USO show, which is our first attempt at doing a virtual USO event. Um, and that's going to be hosted by Bob Hope, who is our beloved William P. Johnson, Bill Johnson. And he is phenomenal. He sounds and looks just like the real Bob Hope. And he's just an amazing guy. He's super funny. He knows all the old Bob Hope material and he brings that to life. Uh, so we are absolutely honored to have him host that virtually even though we can't do it on stage this year he's usually up on our stage at the ball we're excited that he's he's going to do this virtually and on top of that we have some incredible guests that are going to be part of the US social show we have Nick Hilscher from the Glenn Miller Orchestra that's going to be amazing um and then after Nick and uh Glenn Miller Orchestra we have Dandy Wellington from New York City He's going to be tuning in, um, and we're going to chat with him for a minute and show you a couple of his uh, songs. And then we have Kevin from the Hot Tomatoes and Orville from Flatirons Jazz. And then after that, we are going to have a full hour of live music for you guys to dance to to end our night with the Jeremy Mahoney Swing Band. So we have a lot of exciting stuff coming up, and we can't wait to share that with you. And in the meantime, for 20, about 20 minutes, we're going to share with you a little behind the scenes footage. So get ready for that and hang tight for our swing dancing lesson to come in 20 minutes. Thanks for sticking in, sticking in, hanging in, hanging with us. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's Tiki Bryan with Jungle Outpost Radio. And coming up now is another fantastic performer of the 1940s World War II era ball. Enjoy the sounds of Dandy Wellington right here on Jungle Outpost Radio. The weather is frightening. 
thunder and lightning seem to be having their way. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's a lovely day. The turn in the weather will keep us together. I can honestly say that as far as I'm concerned, it's a lovely day and everything's okay. Isn't this a lovely day to be caught in the rain? Yes, you were going on your way, and now you've got to remain. Just as you were going, leaving me all at sea, the clouds broke, they broke, and oh, what a break for me. I can see the sun up high, though we're caught in that storm. I can see where you and I could be cozy and warm. Let the rain pitter patter, cause it really doesn't matter if skies are gray. As long as I am here with you, it's a lovely day. There are smiles that steal away the sadness Like the sunbeam steals away the dew There are smiles that have a tender meaning That the eyes of love alone can see But the smiles that fill my heart with gladness are the smiles that you gave to me. Thank you. 
from the sides of the Jungle Cruise boats is strictly prohibited. Unless, of course, you happen to be fishing a relative out of the crocodile-infested waters of the Nile River. Hi everyone, I'm Kenzie George, and you're listening to Jungle Outpost Radio, brought to you by the 1940s World War II era ball. Thank you. 
The sun goes. We have fine dancing. And the madness and the heat That's the thrill I'm craving And the music is so sweet Got that fever Jungle fever Oh, the Congo's calling And I long to go Dusky maiden Dark Ed Simon Congo sweetheart I'm coming back to you While that woman Native dream girl Jungle fever Is in my blood for you Submit your entries for the Name the Croc... Uh, correction, that's Name the Crocodile Contest. The winner will receive a one-week, all-expenses-paid cruise for one on the Jungle River of his choice. Hi, listeners. It's Tiki Brian with Jungle Outpost Radio. Coming up now is another fantastic group of the 1940s World War II era ball. The Flatterons Jazz Orchestra with their version of Jive at Five. Thank you. 
Attention skippers, don't forget to submit your entries for the Name the Croc... Uh, correction, that's Name the Crocodile Contest. The winner will receive a one-week all-expenses-paid cruise for one on the Jungle River of his choice. This is Jungle Outpost Radio. And we wanted to say a big thank you to Tiki Brian and Exotic Tiki Island Podcast for hosting today's event. And thanks to each and every one of you who have tuned in to our virtual 1940s ball this year. We really appreciate you guys being a part of this with us. Yippee, there'll be no wedding bells for today. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, jingle, jangle, as I go riding merrily along. Jingle, jangle, they sing, oh, ain't you glad you're single? Jingle, jangle, and that song ain't so very far from wrong. Jingle, jangle, oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell, oh, Lily Bell. Oh, Lily Bell. Oh, Lily Bell. Though I may have done some fooling, this is why I never fell. Cause I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle, jingle, jangle. As I go right merrily along, jingle, jangle. They sing, oh, ain't you glad you're single? Jingle, jangle. And that song ain't so very far from All right. Jingle, jangle. It is time for Swing Nights Denver to show you guys how to do some swing dancing. I don't know if you've taken any lessons, but my husband and I have with them, and they're absolutely phenomenal at the Mercury Cafe. Um, it's just such a joy to get out there on the dance floor and feel a part of a community of people and dance with different people. Um, right now, <laughs> that's something we don't have, so it really makes you appreciate the times when we did have that and then learning new, new things to do and then getting out on the dance floor at the 1940s ball or at the Mercury Cafe and being able to practice the things you learn, swing dancing. It feels great. You feel great after, you've had some exercise and you've been social and been around people. And it's just a really fun thing to engage with the music and with other people and in that kind of environment. That's part of the reason why we do the ball is we love the community aspect of it. We love the energy of it. So without further, further ado, I would love to introduce you guys to um, Swing Nights Denver, we're first going to play one of their student videos that they made with Jeremy Money, who's going to be playing a one hour live set for you guys later. So if you could learn some moves from Swing Nights now, you can practice them with Jeremy later, which is exactly what their students are doing in these videos. So let's get this gorgeous video out of them together and play for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. 
that good swing you like that No matter what he ate, he'd never get back Well, show me what you got And swing it If ever a dog could tear the ball Dig back through and win it up all Well, show me what you got And swing it I need steady food Whatever I do I am ready to Just swing it till the sun shines through It was you no joke We're ready to go Hit where the beat will fly Hop up floor Show me what you got And swing it pretty awesome it makes you want to swing dance that's for sure all right we have one more video of them in the mercury retros who they teach and who they dance as a group at the ball uh let's bring that one up here there it is Uh, I just have to, there we go. Thank you. 
of all your means for all of those worries. Yes, they really hold they are a dream. Forget all of those problems and all, all of their strength. Just put on a smiling face and start to live your life. Just put, put on a smiling face and start to live your life. All right. I don't know who wouldn't want to go dancing after seeing those videos. Just watching them dance makes me want to get out on the dance floor and dance. <laughs> I'd love to be at the ball right now, dancing away to the, the big bands. All right. So I have the pleasure to introduce you guys to the wonderful Seth and Danny who are just absolutely incredible people and amazing dancers. And they are going to spend the next hour with you teaching you how to swing dance, just like the people in those videos. So it is my pleasure to welcome you guys to, to the 1940s virtual ball, Seth and Danny. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. 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 We've been having a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining us. It's yes. a pleasure to be here. Thank Thanks you for, for having us. us. What's the Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Truly. All What's right. that? Get started. Yep. Let's get started. Let's see. I'm going to pop out of this screen and you guys, it's all you. So I'll keep an eye. And then afterwards, we're going to play the Charleston video. So um, just let, let me know when you're getting wrapping up and um, I'll come back in and get that video going and um, we'll go from there. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Kenzie. Okay, welcome to class. Hi guys. Uh, one, one thing that we've been missing with physical distancing is just seeing all of our, our lovely students' faces. So we, we miss not seeing your face today. Um, we're gonna be doing some dancing. And one thing I'd like to talk about first is a li little bit of the history of the dance, because I, I think it's so important. There, there are so many reasons why Black Lives Matter. And uh, one of those reasons is just the history of the dance. Um, African-Americans created Lindy Hop and without, uh, without their um, creation of this dance and passing it along to the entire world, we would not have swing dance as we know it today. And yes. uh, a lot of the videos that you just saw uh, featured Lindy Hop. And um, if you don't know their names, you should uh, look up Frankie Manning, Norma Miller. They're no longer with us today, but they, they spent their lives dancing and then passing along the dance to, again, the entire world. Yeah, so we are just so, so thankful for this dance um, that has impacted our lives. We've been dancing for 10 years, 20 years. Um, so we're just so thankful and we think it is really, really important to know the history of the dance that you're getting involved in and you're learning. Um, it's really valuable and important to know who created it, how it was created, um, where it comes from, its roots. So we encourage you guys to go check it out. Look up Frankie Manning, like Seth was saying. Um, a really good book to read is Frankie Manning's autobiography. It's called The Ambassador of Lindy Hop. It's a really good read, and it goes into the actual creation of Lindy Hop back in Harlem, New York. So check that out. Um, and uh, One other thing today, uh, we are going to be learning a partner dance. It is a six-count dance. Um, sometimes it's called East Coast Swing. Um, it's really essentially boiled down. It's six-count Lindy, right? That's what we're learning today. And it's a lot of fun. It is a partner dance, so I know uh, some of you guys have partners, some of you don't. Um, over on our Patreon, for the past few months, we've been mainly doing solo choreography with um, a solo Charleston routine that we'll show a little bit later. But um, so just if you don't have a partner, we are gonna get warmed up with some solo movement. And um, these are, we'll call out the names of the steps that we're doing, and these are traditional steps. Again, that trace all the way back to Harlem, New York. And um, it's a lot of fun, and you can move along even by yourself to this this music from the 1940s just by yourselves. It's a it's definitely a, a good thing to do in its own right. Yeah. So let's get moving. Why don't you guys stand up if you're not already standing? 
stretch out, shake out your shoulders. I'm gonna get some music going and we're going to just warm up with some solo jazz. So one thing, we wanna live on the balls of our feet, right? We wanna relax our knees and our ankles and our hips. Up top, we're gonna to have some good posture. And we roll those shoulders up, back down. Okay, now that we're all loosened up, I'm going to hit play. I'm just going to find the rhythm of the song. I'm just going to bop along. Take it easy, breezy, you got a long ways to slide. Take it easy, breezy, oh daddy don't start no jive. Come on baby, let me have my swing, cause you got all night to do that thing so. Take it easy, breezy, you got a long ways to slide. Step on rocks. Take it easy, breathe. Just Over. like Mr. Nah. So and So. I'll show you different angles. Take it so easy, like breathe. Oh, daddy, swing me. Let's try low. the other side. Give it to me when you hear me cry. I want every bit of it or else I'll die. So take it easy, breathe. You got a long no way to slide. Itch. 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 split the roles up into lead and follow, and we would have all the leads line up behind me. I'm going to take the lead role. And we would have all the follows line up behind me. So this dance does take two roles, lead and follow. It doesn't matter who does which uh, role you guys get to choose, but if you are choosing to follow today, if you're learning that role, watch what I'm doing. If you're choosing to learn how to lead today, watch what Seth is doing. The reason why we're mentioning that right now is because our footwork is mirrored in this dance. So count zero for me, I'll have my weight on my right because I want to start with my left foot. Opposite for follows, we'll begin with our weight on our left foot because we're going to begin every step stepping onto our right foot. 
If that didn't totally make sense, we'll show you. We'll yeah. show you. So stand up again. We'll show you from the back. So I'm going to start with my weight on my right foot. Follows weight on our left foot. And the first thing we're going to do is just walk in place. So let's start moving. Five, six, seven, we and we walk, 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 walk. Every single step we went underneath our shoulder. So what I would try not to do is this, right? Eek. Not this. The other thing I try not to do is take a huge step to the side. Not right? this either. Yeah, so instead what we want is just walking in place with a step, 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 step. step. Now, every single step we're taking here actually takes two beats. So we could call it out a one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And in swing land, when a step takes two beats, we call it a slow. So you could also think slow, 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 slow. slow. or that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, slow, 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 slow. 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 If you remember, we're talking about a six count dance today. We are two thirds of the way in with four counts. Let's talk about that last third, and it's what we call the rock step. In the warm up, we already did some of those. Yeah? So again, we shift our weight leads to the right foot. Follows weight to our left foot. We take that free foot, and we rock our hips back, and then forth. So we have a back rock step. forward, and a back forward, back forward. And back forward. Now this is quicker than those slows. This in fact is a quick quick. A quick quick or a rock step. Leads are going left to right. Left to right. Falls we have right left. Right left. Right left. Now we're going to show you the profile as we keep on going. Right? And step. notice how our hips are going back. back step. We don't want to jut the leg back like that. That's way too much. Right? Or rock keep step. Keep it small. A rock step, a rock One step. One other thing about this rock step, with this foot that's going behind, make sure that you're not going all the way onto the heel. That's going to take a lot more time to shift your weight back forward. So like Seth was saying, our weight stays over this front foot, and then we're going to use just the ball of the foot for this back foot. So you're going to leave a little bit of space under that heel follows. That's our right heel. Yeah, lead sets your left, and there's a rocking action through that foot. Yeah. All right, let's try a couple more rock steps. Five, six, here we go. Rock, step, hold. 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 Thanks. Nice. Now, now we want to throw those two together. We're going to start with the slows. We'll have two slows followed by a rock step or that quick, quick. And this is a just cycling pattern. If you're a musician, sometimes we get the question, um, it doesn't fit into an eight count song, or if you count uh, four, four, um, and it, it, it doesn't. Um, if you do uh, six, or well, four, uh, six counts, that's three eights. You don't have to do the math. You don't really need to hold on to that, but that's what's happening, right? Um, we just have to keep track of this in our own heads and get it into our bodies, and let's try to do that right So now. what it sounds like, so you can hear it before we put it into our feet, mm -hmm. is slow, slow, rock step slow slow rock step and that's a good thing to have rolling and playing through your mind instead of getting confused and having your mind blow up by the counts like seth was talking about uh, we can just simply say slow slow rock step or you can say which foot you're placing your weight on so for follows right left right left right left right left and for leads of course we have our left right Left, right, left, right, left, right. So let's try it all together. Here, go. Here we go. Five, six, seven, Here we eight. Go. Slow, slow, slow rock, step, slow, slow, rock, step, slow, slow, rock, step, slow, slow, rock, step. If you like numbers, here you go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. 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 So, so, and a quick, quick, so, quick, so, so, a quick, quick, so, so. Follows. We quick, have right, so, left, so, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Uh, and for leads, just the opposite, left. Right, 
a left to right, left to right, a left to right, left to right, a left to right. If you want to know what to do with your hands, just have them on an imaginary tabletop as we do this step. Okay, so we want to try an exercise because we're going to have to throw in leading and following, which is a completely different skill. They're two sides of the same coin, and they're equally hard for different reasons, but we have to have the footwork in our bodies as we go forward. Yes. So we're going to um, do the rhythm together. Yep, and we're actually going to face you guys so that you can follow along and see what we're actually guiding you to do with your arms. Um, so hopefully we've done the footwork enough that you can still stay on your respective footwork. Okay, here we go. A five, six, Basic, seven, here we eight, go. Slow. Seven. Slow and a quick rock, step, quick, slow, slow, slow and a rock, quick step. So arms on that imaginary tabletop. Arms out. Nice. We're going to draw giant circles in the sky with our arms. So Hands giant together. circles. A rock step. <laughs> I'm slow, gonna try to go this side. Slow. Or a rock step. Slow. Slow. A rock step. Slow. Slow. A rock step. Slow. Slow. A rock step. It should be a big brain teaser, a body teaser. Yeah. Let's reverse your circle and go the other way. So, a rock step, so, so, a rock step, so, so, a rock step, so, so. This is a challenge. Woo, if you get off the footwork, don't worry. Take a second, jump right back in in that next slow right now. So, and a rock step, so, so, a rock step. Okay, let's try some figure eights in the air. Figure eights. So, a rock step, so, so. A rock step, step slow, 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 looking rock good. Step. Reverse direction of that figure eight. Ah! So, so, a rock step, so. It's move. okay if this is a challenge. This is testing and practicing our coordination. We're moving on to algebra next. Go Woo! for it. So, and a rock <laughs> step. Okay, let's pat our heads. Step, slow, so, a rock step. Let's rub our tummies. And a rock, rock step, step, slow, slow. slow. A rock step, step, let's reverse slow, those. Slow. A rock Ooh. step, so. Hey. A rock step, so. So. Okay, rock let's step. do the chicken dance. So. A rock step, so. <laughs> so. 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 Let's be pterodactyls for a second. Here we go. And a rock step, so. So. A rock step, so. So. And a rock step. Okay, keep the rhythm going down below. We're going to have our arms on an imaginary tabletop. And we want to just keep hold the rhythm in our bodies. We're going to choose one shoulder. We're going to turn over that left shoulder. We're just going to start circling. Nice and slow. Just drifting. Here we go. And so. Drift. Around. So, a rock step. So. So. A rock step. So. Keep drifting. So. A rock step. So, Make your way back to so, front. A rock step. Hopefully you're doing all right. Let's go to the other side, to our right shoulder, starting now. So. So. so and a rock step. So. So. so and a rock step. step so. so. So and a rock Keep step. Keep drifting. So, so and a rock step. So make your so, way back to front. Rock step. Nice. All right. Okay. That let's take a little break. Awesome. Yes. Shake out your shoulders. Ooh. Shake out your feet. As you are shaking it all out, I want to mention that. It's really important to keep the pulse in all of these vernacular swing dances. Um, the pulse is really important to us. When I say pulse, I just mean a bounce. So we talked about how we're on the balls of our feet. We're relaxing our ankles, relaxing our knees, and we really want to drop our center or our core into the ground. So try this with us. Down, 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 down. Pulse. Pulse. This will just match the rhythm of the music. A one, two, three, four, yep. five. So you're six, bouncing seven, every eight. single beat. Yeah. A down, 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 down. So just get that comfortable in your body so that you can carry it through the rest of the dance and the rest of this class. Okay, now did we want to do that with that with music one time again? We did. We're going to try just those basics to music. And the reason why we spend maybe more time at the beginning on just this basic is because the rhythm is the foundation of our dance. Everything builds on top of it. So we want it to become something that is second nature to us. It's in our muscle memory. And we can do it without having to think so hard about it. That way, our mind space is freed up to think about all the other things we're going to lay on top of it. Yeah, that's such good advice. Uh, just imagine if you built your home and the foundation wasn't strong, then you have a sinking house. So that's why we spend that extra time here. 
All right, here's our song. Get ready. Follows weight on your left foot. Leads again, count oh. zeros on the right foot. Gotta find find that beat and that pulse. Down, 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 down. down. Releasing into the ground. It looks good to me. This dance is rooted into the earth. It is fine, brand new. Let's start here. How long has you been around? Mr. Wind, did you hit this big time? I wanna scream, cause I've never seen such a fine brand new. Let's try some of those bills. Let's start going giant circles in the sky. But I was gently making king on my throne. Don't be a square, why don't you come over here? Because we would really be gone. He's got a fine prayer frame. I was thinking it's a fine brand new. Let's try some of those bills. Let's try some of those bills. He is solid with me, and all I can see is his cross and prayer frame. Reverse stretch of your figure eight. He's got such a fine brand of flame. How long the rap could be his name? Rock step. He looks good to me. Hi, all. Um, looks like Danny and Seth's uh, uh, broadcast just lost its connection. So we're going to wait for a second for them to connect back in and we'll pick up where we left off. Hang tight. Hey guys, I'm going to go ahead and play Danny and Seth's Charleston video, which is what they're teaching on Patreon right now. And you can take a look at that while they're trying to get their system working again. So here is Danny and Seth in their Charleston class. <laughs> Thank you. 
yourself round when you're doing good, Charleston, Charleston, first thing you do. Now when you rail way back, then you clap your gal, and then you clap your hands, and you do the eagle rock, but don't you stop at all. Uncle Jack, the best that fool, he would never do the Charleston, Charleston, when he lined up that brand, you dance such a brand. And the clean forgot his age When he danced his friend you raised Then he yelled out, don't forget To do your stuff when you dance the mess around All right, yeah. we're back. Oh. <laughs> Yay! Thanks. So sorry, guys. No worries. So sorry. Uh, and out. We have the cable, but I'm not sure what happened. Yeah. No, this is what happens. We've been dealing with stuff all day. It's just an exciting world of learning how to do things virtually. Exactly. <laughs> learning all the new things, right? Yes, it's very exciting. All right, I'm going to hand it back over to you guys. Okay, Thank let's you. jump back in. Thank you, Kenzie. Okay, you guys. Hi again. Welcome back. back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, got you, gave you a little break, right? So let's jump back in so that we don't waste any time, yeah? Yeah, let's actually connect up. Yes. Yeah? Okay, so if everyone throws their hands in the air as if you just don't care. Hands in the air. Awesome. We're also going to bend the fingers at the big knuckle like so. And I'm going to show you up close because I can, right? We're going to have leads, our fingers pointed at each other like so. Follows, our fingers point down, and we're going to drop on top of the leads' hands like this. Now, a couple common problems that we see all the time. Sometimes we see leads press their thumbs down. Ah! That hurts. So remove those thumbs. Don't do that. Thumbs off. Okay, and then also make sure that leads your fingers aren't pointed up towards the Don't sky. Don't do this. We see this sometimes. Point them in. So this other. is what we want. Once we're here, follows. I want you to relax your arms down. We actually want the weight of our arms dropping down into our partner's hands. So I don't want to float here. I want my partner to actually feel the weight of my hand and my presence here. Yeah, that, so that relax. floating is like hovercraft hand, right? Or it's proposal hand, and you don't want to scare the lead away. Right? So drop down. Roll those shoulders up, back and down. I'm relaxing my elbow and my wrist. If you have something like this going on, follows. Relax. Totally relax. Look. Yeah, now th this is our phone line between each other, right? And this is how we communicate. And, and in fact, if I start like moving this all around, right, notice how Danny's responding to everything that I'm doing. So I actually try to be very chill and only give a signal when I want to. And I like to widen the hands a little bit and I'm actually going to physically bring my partner to this side and then to that side. It's not going to be like a huge pull like that. Right? In fact, we're going to keep them pretty level, but we're going to be going side to side. So I'll stand up, kind of so get the whole picture, and, and show you this diagonal right now. So I prepare on my right foot, follows you on your left, and then we are going to go side slow, to side slow, and rock step. Slow, slow, and a rock, rock step. step. Now notice that we are swinging away on that rock step. Our arms are a little bit like bungee cords, but not entirely like bungee cords. If they were, you might see this big whoo, right? And that is going to hurt your shoulders over time. Yes. So we always have a little bit of a micro bend in our elbow. In fact, if you imagine this like imaginary elastic between your hip and your elbow, it's just going to stretch away and then you're going to come back together. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so let's connect up. Here we go. Five, six, six seven, seven, and slow, slow, slow and stretch drop, away. Step, slow, slow, and stretch drop, away. Step, one, slow, two, three, four, five, drop, six, step, slow, one, two, three, four, five, drop, six, step, slow, slow, and a rock step. So, slow, slow, and a rock step. In fact, we're trying to lead every single component of this dance. 
So I'm physically bringing my partner to one side and the other side, and then rock stepping away. One side, the other side, and rock away. So Yep, you'll so notice that when we rock do rock step. away, Seth brings those hands a little bit together and forward. So he swings so the arms in. The rock step. Yeah. Follows, we want to make sure that we're being slower than the lead. We want to lag behind ever so slightly. So I'm not going to be right on top of the beat, otherwise I might turn into the lead roll. So I'm going to lag behind. That way I can actually feel when my weight is brought over to one side and then the other. And when those hands swing together, I can swing back as well. And, and this is a listening game for both of us. I'm, I'm listening to my partner. Um, I'm never trying to trick my partner. I'm trying to make sure that we're, we're winning the game together. It's a partnership. We're working and, as a team. Yeah, exactly. So let's try that again. Five, Five six, six, seven, seven and, and so. A so, and a rock step, so, so, and a rock step. A one, two, three, four, five, six. So, one, two, three, seven, four, five, six. Step. So, a so, and a rock swing step. Swing away, so, so, swing away, so, so, swing away. And you might have this right now, or it might take a little bit of work to get here. That's okay wherever you're at. Right? If you do have the step, one thing that you can start doing, you only have two ways. You can go to your right or your left, but you can start circling around slowly. And this gives a nice view of the entire room. So you can avoid the couch and the chairs and whatever <laughs> whatever obstacles are in your living room. Exactly. And a rock step. So, so, so a rock, rock step. step. We could go the other way if we wanted to. A rock step. So, so, so and a rock, rock step. step. So. So, and a rock step. Nice. Cool. Let's try this to music, and then we'll move on to some moves or some dance figures. Yay! I'm glad you guys are following along. I'm going to put on some music. Okay, here we go. Connect up those hands. Those hands Bend your knees. Up. Shoulders up, back, and down. Every time I try to bring my arms, I trip over myself and start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Fun is one of the big parts of this dance. Yes, I agree. So as long as you can laugh at yourself, yeah. that's what we want. Okay, here we go. Find that beat, that pulse. Five, six, five, six. Seven, here we go. So, my baby. Seven, 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 and I'm a step for my baby. And I'm a step. Glass of plain water for me. Dispenser man. If you please, surround my ship the mess of calories. And I'm a step for my baby. And I'm a glass of plain water for me. So, the fact that it's open, the thing inside. Make it a rainbow of red, brown, and white. Make sure you keep your hands level. And everything that's nice. To the food, it won't change for only twice. And then I spend for my baby. And the price is paid for the pony. So, spray the whipped cream for at least an hour. Pile it as high as the Eiffel Tower. Load it with nuts, about 16 tons. Top it with the pizza, just for fun. Banana split for my baby. A little longer. And a glass of plain water for me. If you follow the step, just there for again. my what baby. Right? Go. A glass of plain water for me. Side, side, split for my baby. Side, side, side. A glass of plain water for me. So, so. Stack her up with crazy loot. So, that's the stuff she likes to wear right through. I got a strip for my baby. A glass of plain water for me. Nice job. Yeah. Nice job. Now, Eric, the cherry is the kind she loves too much. Nice job. Oh, thank you, Randall. Hi, Randall. We love Good you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, let's move on. So now we have the basics really well into our bodies, hopefully. Um, we're going to work into some moves, yeah? Let's do it. So uh, we're um, 
we're going to kind of level the moves up. And so, so this is a basic move that every swing dancer should know. And then by the end, uh, we might have something tricky for those of you who've been dancing a while. So try everything. If this is your first time ever um, trying out swing dance, don't worry if you don't get it all. Don't let it frustrate you. Always go back to the basics. Yes. Um, even as uh, you know, dancing 20 years, that's something I continue to do. Annie continues to do. We always go back to the basics and re-examine them, try to make them feel even better. Yes. Yeah, it's a journey. Okay, okay so, so our first move, very classic, is the inside turn. The inside turn, right? So it looks like this. We'll show you a couple times. Just watch for now. Here it comes. Okay, there it was. Try to notice what you're seeing. There are two in a row. Just happened. Two in a row. Change the view slightly. There you go. So basic inside turn. Okay, so here's the quiz. And you guys can answer, even though we can't hear you, yes. tell your screen the answers. <laughs> and you can cheat if you want, because again, we can't hear you. So these are the questions. Hopefully you are paying attention. Welcome from Tokyo, by the way. So first question, did the rhythm change? Did the rhythm from our basic change at all? No, it didn't change, right? Nope. Notice that we have this slow, 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 slow a rock, rock step, step, slow. slow. So a rock step, step the entire time. So, so that's good news. We're not changing the rhythm, but some things we are changing. Um, what was that dynamic between lead and follow? Did we stay in the same place over here and do some movements? Or did we switch places? What happened? Tell your screen. Send it out <laughs> into the universe. Can't hear you. But the, we trade places, don't we? Right? If you said trading places, you are correct. Totally correct. So we are moving to a different spot on the floor. Yeah, exactly. What else? So we keep that rhythm the same. We do trade places. Do you know leads? This is a question for you. When did we lead? Was it on the first slow, the second slow, or sometime during that rock step? Follows, you can answer too if you know it. Okay, so it's actually during that rock step. And I like to think rock lead or rock pull. Even though pull can be a misnomer, I'm never pulling my partner around. I'm just giving a nice, assertive, and comfortable lead. Yes, and again, that is on the second half of the rock step, um, where the step would be rock step. That's where Seth inserted that lead, rock lead. So the second half. We need to get a little bit closer again, just to show you our hands up close. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do Right, I'm going to let go leads of my right hand. Follows, that's your left. We don't need that one for this move. And when my partner gets a turn, I always want to make sure that my fingers point down and loop over my partner's head. So I'm going to rotate my fingers in my partner's palm. If you had a wristwatch, you'd be checking your left wrist for that time. Yep. Right? So and try that out a couple times with your partner, where leads are rotating your hand so that your palm is facing away from you. Follows what we're doing. I'm keeping my right palm relaxed and open enough that the lead can clip within my hand and my hand stays facing away. So I go from here, if I show, from here just to here. We don't want to hold on and squeeze because if the lead rotates their hands, we get all tangled up and it doesn't feel comfortable it's really awkward for either for one of us. us. <laughs> so try this just a couple times. This is our prep into this move. Make sure it feels nice and comfortable. Now this will be happening when you lead, when you have that rock lead. But the other thing that you're gonna be doing is asking for your partner to go down a line. So I'm actually gonna take my left arm and as I flip the hand, I'm gonna be pulling it over towards my right shoulder, mm -hmm. right? And that is part of the lead. Yeah. Yes. The other thing I wanna know, so I know it's a lot of information right now, but um, when I first got into lead and follow dance, partner dance, and, you have the wrong idea, right? Um, you're not actually asking someone to go this way and go that way. You're actually, through the connection, through the stretch or the pressure that you feel in your partner's hand, you're using that to move your own body. So as I pull forward, right, I'm pulling myself forward and Danny at the same time. It's mm -hmm. a really cool kind of magic thing that's happening yes. within swing dancing. Yeah. So, so we're gonna back up again so you can see. Yeah. And we can just walk through it. We don't have to worry about the footwork. Shuffle your feet. So we're just going to shuffle through. I'm going to take that hand over towards my right shoulder, and we're going to trade places. Saul, as we went underneath that arm through the tunnel, and we switched places. Let's try that again. Same thing. So you flip the fingers, flip the palm, keep your focus on your partner. 
Let's try that one more time to go. Follow us just so you know what's happening as well. I'm If I'm looking on the left side where my left arm is, that's the track I'm going down, and I am turning towards my own left shoulder as I get this turn. Okay? Now this leads you're taking care of your partner, so your focus remains on them the whole time. One more time. Yep. Hold to the side, your right shoulder leads, and switch places. That's actually going to be simpler once we throw the full work in underneath. Right, because we're going to do two basics on the end of the second basic where we have that rock step, think rock lead. It looks like this. We so have first basic. Slow, slow, slow a rock, rock step. step. Remove slow, the right hand. So here we go. And a rock, rock lead. lead. Slow, 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 a rock step. step. Let's try that again. We can reset. Five, six, seven, basic. Slow. slow, slow, a rock step. step. Slow. Remove the right hand. So here it is. And a rock, rock lead. lead. Slow. slow. So, and a rock step. step. Uh, notice you always have that potential, right? We can't read each other's minds, so we have to learn this nonverbal language of pushes and pulls. What we feel through our hand connection. That means every time you have a rock step, it could potentially be this inside turn, right? Now, it follows, you don't want to... Can you talk about maybe your mind space? Yep. Yeah. So, we talked at the beginning of the hour that we have different roles as lead and follow. They're both equally as important, but they're different. Um, and for the dance to work smoothly and have it be fun, we need to kind of get good at our, you know, responsibilities in the dance. So follows for us, our role is not to be, you know, thinking five moves ahead. In fact, my mindset is very much in the present about what's going on right now in this moment. So I don't care about what move we're doing next or even right now. I'm thinking about where's my weight? Is it on my right foot? on my left? Are they asking me to go forward, back? Um, and what I feel in those arms, if I'm connecting my arms to my body, you can do that together, roll your shoulders up, back, down. By keeping these shoulder blades engaged, your arms are connected to your core. So when the arms start getting these, these leads, these movements across the floor, if your body follows, that's what we're thinking about doing, just following these weight transfers. So be slower than the lead. Yeah, now, now leads that puts a little bit of a burden on us, right? Because we have to know the moves. We have to learn moves over time and incorporate them into the dance. But the good news is you don't have to think five steps ahead. Really, your basics are your friend. Whenever you don't know what to do, go back to the basics and yes. then think about it. And then once you're like, I'm ready to do this next move on the next rock step, make it happen and go back to your basics. You don't have to think too far ahead. Okay. okay, so we're going to try again one basic on the end of the second one. We're going, but again, any rock step is an opportunity to do this move. We're just going to repeat this, so we're going to go basic, inside turn, basic, inside turn. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight, so, so, and a rock step. Here's an inside turn, and a rock lead, so, so, and a basic, so, so, and a rock step. Here's an inside turn. Here we go. And a rock, rock lead, so. so. So and a rock step in the basic. So and a rock step. Your left side turn. So and a rock lead. So so and a rock step. Another basic. So and a rock step. Inside turn. So here we go. Rock lead. So so and a rock step. Arms hang behind. Wait until you feel some movement in that right arm. So and a rock step. Okay. So good. Awesome. It's feeling good. And you do have that potential. Every time you have a rock step, you could ask your partner to go into another turn. The one thing I do want to put out there, though, is that can be a little crazy making. And um, in terms of if you're asking your partner to move across the floor constantly, ah, right, spin, 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 spin. it can be a little nerve wracking for your partner. So the other thing that we sometimes see is this, where people don't respect the time. Right? They'll go, so, so, and a rock step. Step, boom, got it done. Right, got it done. So really try to hold those slows, right? Yep. Keeping that pulse. Um, you have more time than you think to get through this turn. Sometimes people are trying to get it done in one step. We actually get those full two slows or two steps to um, trade places and get that turn. So in other words, enjoy the journey. Here we go. Okay, one last time. Five, six, six seven, and, and so take your time slow. and a rock step. step slow. Inside turn slow. and a rock, rock lead step. All First the step. time Second in the step. world. Rock step. So slow. slow and a rock, rock step. step. Here we go with that basic slow. inside turn. Rock 
three, first step, second step, rock step, slow. Slow. As dancers, it's both of our responsibility to help keep the time. So, but if we do make mistakes, we make mistakes with each other. Woo! And the rock step, so, so, and the rock lead. Okay. Well, let's move along. So we have the basic inside turn. We want to do another classic. This is the banana split. Okay, so we're going to use both hands. Both hands connected. So you have both hands connected. We are going to take the arms all the way in. Cross them in. We go all the way out. We both turn 90 degrees towards our left shoulder. Left shoulder. Drop those hands off behind the head, and then you drape them down. You should end up right to right hand or handshake position. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, let's try that again. So we go Swing all the way in. in. Swing the them way out. out. Turn to your left Drop behind the head. Drape them down. Drape down. Okay. We will use the same timing in terms of the footwork, but it's a little different. Watch it. Right? So, so, a rock step, so, so, a rock step. In fact, the hands are almost sliding even into that second rock step. Okay. Did you guys notice when did we cross in those hands? It was on the first slow, the second slow, the rock step? I'll let you answer into the universe again. Okay, Seth, tell us. Okay, it's the rock step. Yes. Right? So we have our slow. So right on the rock step, we swing rock the neck. Step. Let's keep going. First slow, slow. they go over the head. Second, Second slow, slow, we drop down. down. Last. Rock step, that rock step in that handshake position. Here's a trick, though. Once you're right to right, you keep on going with that basic. So even though I'm right to right hand or handshake position, I keep leading that basic. Side to side, rock step, slow, slow. Rock step. And this is probably the hardest thing you'll see today, but if you want to, you can switch the hand just like so. Voila, if you want to get back. Okay, let's try that all together. Five, six, seven, eight. So, so, and swing rock the step, arms so, over the head, drape so, them down, a rock, rock step, step so, so. So, you can switch that hand up. Step. Let's try it again. A five, five six, six, seven, eight. So, so. So, and a rock step, step. so we put a basic so on top. So here we go, rock step so, over the head, straight so, it down, a rock step, step slow. You can switch that hand so, out if you want to. Rock step. Okay, now because we're dealing with a not a 3D physical reality and just a screen, sometimes things like um, arms can get a little bit hard to decipher. So this is called the banana split. Sometimes we call it the vampire bat. The reason why is because there's this vampire moment, this <laughs> right here. Right, you couldn't see my vampire face, so I was making right here. <laughs> so what I want you to think about, because we see this all the time, right, where people try to like figure out which arm goes over which, right? And so if you're really trying to like move your hands like that, it's not gonna work. You just want to use your entire arm or wingspan and it goes all the way out. Right? It will look like this follows our left arm will be going over or behind our head, and then our right arm is gonna be dragging down. Okay, let's try it again. Five, six, a basic on top. So, so, Normal and basic. rock step. Here's our banana split. Here we go. And swing the arms over the head, head drop them off, a rock step, so, so, so and a rock step. step. Nice. So, reset those hands, try again. So, so, so off the next step, basic. So, so, so and swing the arms step, over the head, we drape so, them down, a rock step, so, so, and a rock step. Okay, hopefully it's feeling really good. One other thing that we often see in our classes, when people try this move, um, they get really excited, and at the end of it, they just get a little bit too far from their partner, so that might look like this. So, and rock steps. So, so slide away, slow. woo! If we get too far away here, um, we've reached the end of our arm length, and it's, it makes it really hard to take that rock step away. We have nowhere to go, and we're putting our shoulders in a compromised position. So we don't want that. Instead, even though we're so excited, we can keep that energy, but we're gonna keep these shoulders engaged like we talked about, up, back, and down. And we're going to slide away, but staying close to our partner so that there's still room in our arms to rock step away. That might look like this. Let's do it together. Yes. Five, six, seven, eight, so. So, and a rock step, so here we go. Swing the arms in over the head, drape them down, and a rock step. Stay close so, so that you can rock so, step away. And a rock step. Nice. Okay, so 
We're running out of time, so we have a couple more things we want to show you. Right? One of these is just a smoother way than doing this to switch the hand. This is gonna, more fancy. Right, this is going to be a lot like that inside turn, but we're going to use the right arm, and it's going to be an underarm turn. Right? And we're going to just drop the hand off on the other side. Okay, a lot of this you already know. So off of the rock step, right, you have the rock lead. But this time, though, I'll show you this way, I'm pulling my partner underneath the arm as I keep my focus on my partner, and then I switch the hands. Right? So, so try this with us. We're right to right, handshake mm -hmm. position. So you have the partner you're partner that right arm up, creating a tunnel, follows, we go through the tunnel to the other side. Now follows. This should feel like a familiar pattern of turning for you because we're actually spinning the same direction as we did in the inside turn at the beginning of the hour. I'm turning over that left shoulder as I switch places. So it should feel nice and familiar. All right, means we're gonna keep our focus on our partner. Notice how we switch places again. So we're switching places. Sometimes we see this, and this is what we don't want. Ah! You pull your partner, and I didn't move, right? So we both wanna to walk towards each other. We're sharing the work, we're sharing the traveling. Okay, so let's put a basic on top, starting in handshake position, and then off the second basic, we're gonna lead this underarm turn. Rock lead, remember. Five, six, here we go. So, so, so and a rock step, step. So, 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 here we go. And a rock, rock lead, so, so, switch the step. hand, and a rock, rock step. step. So, let's get back to handshake position. Here we go. Try again. Five, six, here we go. And so, 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 and a rock, rock step, step. so. So, so here it and is. a rock lead, so switch the hand, hand and a rock step. step. So, so I just want to double step. check that you guys are getting that hand switch. So on that second slow leads, drop the hand down into your left hand. Follows, uh, we don't want to be reaching or doing anything with our hands. Um, we're going to leave that up to the leads because if we're both trying to switch hands at the same time, we're going to be fumbling and it's not going to go as smoothly. So we'll let the leads initiate that. Okay, let's try again. Right to right. Five, six, seven, and so, so, there's our basic. So, so, so and a rock lead, so, so. Drop it off. And a rock step. step. And reset, one more time. Five, six, seven, eight, so, 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 so and stretch away. So, so. And, and you stretch and lead, so, switch the hand, and you rock step, so, so, and a rock step. Okay. Before we put it together, I want to give you the, the kind of more advanced move for you dancers out there who've been dancing a little bit. Yeah, this is one of my favorite turns, so I'm really glad to be able to present it to you today, um, just because it's a lot of fun. Right? It's built off of what we just did. Right? So if I kind of walk the positioning, Danny goes under the arm. Still going to the arm training places. I'm going to keep the arm high so that I can keep on rotating under it. Right now, when you actually put footwork into it, it looks like this. So, so, and a rock lead, so, turn, so, and a rock step. You will still have right to right hand position, right? So you're going to have to do right, this move to switch those hands or switch the hand out just like so. Yes, okay. so if you're up to trying that fancy move. Yeah, one thing as we walk it, let's walk it slowly yes. together. Follow as you go under the arm. A lot of times we see leads be indecisive here, and some leads choose to go this way. Ah. Don't turn towards your left leads. You turn towards the hand that's connected. So towards your right shoulder, and you go underneath it. Yes. Make sure you're keeping that arm high. So after the follow goes under the arm, don't drop this arm down. It's going to be confusing. Just keep, keep it, up it up high so that you have a little tunnel for yourself to go under. Okay, let's walk through one more time. Bring that arm over to the Follows side. first. Follows go. Leads, take that window of opportunity to keep turning. Leads go. Okay. Follows, if your partner is much taller than you, like maybe <laughs> mine is, um, I'm noticing that I'm, I'm having to bring my arm up a little bit, and I'm just relaxing my arm so that it can comfortably go over my partner's head. Um, so that's kind of a good rule for follows. I'm always relaxing my arm so that the lead can place it at a different level, whether that level is lower or just above my head is the most common place, or for this case, it goes higher. Yeah. If we keep a super rigid shape, then we're kind of cutting out these options for us and the leader for this dance. We're gonna try to put it 
in, into the footwork. I mean, here's one thing, because this is what we see happen a lot, where we have that same rock lead, follows go, then leads go, but we see leads try to get it done all at once on a second slow. That might look like this, right? You know, so, so, the rock step, so, so, the rock step. And that's too much. It's not smooth. It's not cool, right? Notice how when you actually do it, you have a lot more spinning time than you think. You're actually even spinning when you do that next rock step. All right, we have slow, slow, a rock step, spin, 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 spin. There it goes. Right? So you have a lot of time. Use the whole time and also make sure that you've you've seen the follow finish their spin before you start spinning leads. Yeah. Okay. Now now the floor and what you have on your feet, your shoes make a huge difference. If you're on carpet, this is going to be harder. If you have uh, right, tennis shoes on, very hard. Even this wood floor that we have, um, I had to put on my leather-soled shoes to get the right amount of spin. Yes. Okay. Leather so shoes make it nice back. and slick. Let's try. Five, right six, to right. seven, eight, so, so, and a rock to lead. So, turn, turn, and a rock step. So, let's try it again. We're already set up. Here we go. So. So, and a rock lead, so turn, turn, and a rock step. One more time after this basic. So, so, here we go. Rock lead, so turn, turn, and a rock step. So, so when you want to end, you know how to do it. Just Switch like that hand, drop it off. Get back to those basics. Yeah. Okay. Let's put everything that we've learned together. What do we have? We have the basics. We have the basic inside turn. We can put in another basic. We can do a banana split. That puts us in the right to right position. Let's do another basic. And then let's go for the crazy turn, right? Or you can end it and wait for us to catch up with you by ending it like so. Okay? The hand switch. Okay, so follow along. We'll try to call it out as we're all dancing together. So connect up both hands. We're starting with that basic. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight, so, so, and a rock step. step. Basic slow, inside turn, like slow, with the right hand. Rock, lead, slow, slow. We want both hands, ask for this. Slow, slow, banana split, rock, step, slow, slow, basic. And a basic. Slow, slow, rock, step, slow, slow, here we go. And a rock, lead, slow, slow turn, slow, turn, slow, and a rock, rock step. step. Now we're going to finish it. Hand switch. Rock, lead, slow, slow switch the hand. Out. Rock, step. And let's go back to the beginning. Here we go. Let's reset. A five, okay. six, seven, and slow. Basic. Slow, slow. and a rock, rock, step, slow. slow. Inside slow. turn. Rock, lead, slow. Here's the slow. basic. Rock, step, both hands. Banana split. Wait for it. Rock, step, and slow. slow. Here we go. Slow, here we go. Rock, rock step, step, slow. Drape it down. And a rock, Here's step. Here's our basic. Right to right. Rock step, big slow, turn for the lead. Slow, here we go. Rock lead, slow, spin around, then a rock Basic step. Basic in between. Slow, slow, rock step. Here's our hand switch. Switch the hands. Rock lead, slow, oh. drop it off. And a rock, rock step. step. Yeah, nice. Okay. Oh, cool. Let's try all that to music. Okay. Take a quick breather if you need to. I'm gonna get this tune started up. How's everyone doing? Any questions? Yes. While we're close to the screen? <laughs> Any questions? Pass them along. Why are so many swing songs about food? I like that. Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. I know, right? It's making me hungry. Um, okay, we ready? Yeah. Well, there are... There are a lot of swing songs about food, but then also about livestock as well. So I think it's chickens. Just... <laughs> and, I don't yeah. know monkeys. No. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's connect up. I'm gonna try the whole thing. What do we have again? We have our basic. Basic. Inside turn. Inside turn. Basic. And then our banana split. We have another basic. And then we have our fancy uh, turn where follow goes and then lead. And then you can put in another basic. And then afterwards, we have to switch our hands out of handshake position. So we're going to do the hand switch move. And you, here's the thing. This is a lead follow dance. So when you're dancing on your own, um, thankfully, actually, you're not going to have us calling out the moves for you guys. Um, you can just enjoy each other's company. So uh, what you want to do is just, if you need a lot of basics, if you don't have a move, I, I would say work on the move until you have it. 
Um, you can work with a practice partner until you work it out, but just just work with what you got. So yeah. follows, remember to wait. Since Seth said, um, reminded us this is a lead and follow dance. So um, leads, you're going to be responsible for initiating the different movements. So follows, if you don't feel that lead to go into that turn or that next move that you know is in the choreography, um, just go ahead and actually wait until you do feel that lead or that pull. Um, we want to be learning this dance together. So if I'm just doing the choreography, then my partner, my lead, might not might not ever learn um, how his leads are actually affecting me because I'm just doing it on my own. Does that make sense? So work as a team follows wait until you feel that lead or that push. Okay, enough talking, let's dance. Here's the song. Okay, we are pretty much, we can, um, I would love to try it to one more song just so you can get a different feel, more practice to another beat. Um, any questions out there? If so, post them in the live chat. Uh, maybe Kinsey can send them over to our screen. Hopefully you guys are having fun. Oh, hi, Kevin. Hi, uh, Kevin. Good to see you. Hey. How's it feeling? Any questions? Thank you, Evelyn. Appreciate it. Yay. Yeah, we miss everybody so much. Um, you can, um, you've probably already heard, um, you can join our Patreon if you want to. Um, what we have up there right now, we have probably about five classes of Lindy Hop, which is a beginning, much, Lindy, beginning Hop. Lindy Hop. It's a much more challenging dance, and most of our material is solo Charleston. Um, it's a solo Charleston routine. We're actually excited. A bunch of our dancers this past weekend actually went out to various locations, and um, it's the routine that you guys saw, but they're putting together a video of themselves dancing, and they've been working really hard over the past few months. So definitely, um, since you're on Facebook, after this is over, after the 1940s ball <laughs> stream is over, go over to Swing Nights um, on Facebook, and you can like our page so that you're notified when that video comes out. It's going to be really awesome to see the compilation of all of our patrons on Patreon dancing this dance together. And if you guys want to learn the routine too, we'd invite you to come along on Patreon. Probably the best time to join is at the beginning of the month, uh, because I think right around the beginning, that's when you're charged. It's sort of a service there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Thank you, Carmen. Yeah. Uh, I just want to say one more thing. What's cool about Patreon is that they're pre-recorded videos, so they're really nice quality, and you can rewind, pause, all the things in case you missed something. You can always go back. Okay. Let's try all of this one 
last time to Let's another song. Don't forget that pulse. Don't forget those shoulders up, back and down. Nice frame. Remember to have fun, laugh it off. The plan doesn't go as planned. It is A-OK. -okay. Just keep bopping and pulsing. Here we go. As we always say, there's no such thing as mistakes, just new moves. New moves, that's true. Find that beat, find that pulse. Take it easy, breezy. You got a long ways to slide. Take it easy, breezy. Oh, daddy, don't start no job. Come on, baby, let me have my swing. Cause I got all night to do that thing. So take it easy, breezy. You got a long ways to slide. Take it easy, one more time. Here we go. Just Five, like Mr. So and so. Take it easy, Oh, daddy, swing me low. Give it to me when you hear me and cry out. Every bit of it, or else I'll die. So take it easy, easy. You got a long way to slide. is coming up next all right guys thank you very much yes. thank you Kenzie. Um, quite enjoyable um and i think people really enjoyed it one lady said she had her kids learning with you oh, so fun hey. yes when we teach live classes we would always see um people of all ages kids um all the way through we had you know yeah. 90 year olds dancing with us so this is, <laughs> that is for everyone for anyone one other thing I'd just like to say, just because uh, it's sort of it's our dance home. It's been our dance home for a long time in the Mercury Cafe. If you've been swing dancing, maybe you've been uh, dancing there. But right now, obviously, we can't dance there. So um, please support our dance home as well if you can. I know the Mercury Cafe is open on weekends. Go yep. go for a meal for go brunch. Go buy a meal. Yeah. yeah. We'd love to dance with you someday there again soon. And we also want to thank Kinsey and Andrew for putting on this virtual ball. Um, even though we couldn't meet with you guys in person, we love that you guys um, put this on for us and let us still come on and teach a lesson. So thank you, Kinsey and Andrew. Yeah, absolutely. And if anybody would like to take a lesson with Seth and Danny, you can go to their Patreon page, which is just patreon.com slash swing nights. And once we're back up and running and able to do social dancing, definitely, definitely, definitely go see them at the Mercury Cafe. It's my favorite place to swing dance. Absolutely gorgeous. The, the ceiling is full of lights. It's very romantic yeah. and red and flowers yeah. everywhere. Uh, it's just a magic yeah. place and that's where they teach their lessons every week. So please um, go visit them there. You'll be glad you did. And they have live music. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Thank you so much. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys again. It was such an honor to have you on the show and uh, we all really appreciate you guys taking your time to, to teach us how to swing dance. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. so we much. You and too. we will be back later in the night dancing to Jeremy Money. Yes. That's right. <laughs> we'll see you guys again. I think, what was it, 945? 945? Yes. So if you guys are all around out there to listen to Jeremy Money, he is one of our favorite swing bands ever to dance to. So we're so happy that he's playing for this virtual ball. We'll be around to dance to a few of his songs. So thank you guys so much. See you soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. everyone, we'll see you tonight a little bit. Yes. Okay, see you soon. All right, so Bill Johnson, um, who is our Bob Hope, is having some technical issues getting in here. So what I'm going to do is play Seth and Danny have a Charleston, short little Charleston video of them teaching um, how to do the Charleston, which I'm going to play real quick here while Bill Johnson tries to get in on his computer for our USO show. So hang tight and he'll we'll be right back.
mess around when you're doing the Charleston, Charleston, first thing you do. Now when you rail way back, then you grab your gal, and then you clap your hands, and you do the eagle rock, but don't you stop at all. Uncle Jack, the best man fool, he would never do the Charleston, Charleston, when he learned up that brand. You dance such a brand. And the clean forgot his age When he danced his friend you raised Then he yelled out, don't forget To do your stuff when you dance or mess around All right, we got Bill, yes <laughs> He's here. Oh my goodness. All right. I thought I was going to have to do the interview and I certainly cannot compare to Bill. <laughs> Thank God. All right. I'm bringing him in. Here comes Bill. Our wonderful. Hey. Bongo. So good to see you. Hello. Oh, it's <laughs> How do you do ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob live from the virtual 1940s ball. Hope. <laughs> Doing much better now. Okay. <laughs> but I say, hey, let's take a walk down memory lane. We've already got plenty of tracks. So as we all spend a night in the 40s, I hope your smile won't be missing in action. <laughs> it certainly isn't. <laughs> uh, hey, I want to tell you, I just streamed in on a wing and a prayer. Now, I was on the wing because with this technology, <laughs> I don't have a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, but Kenzie, you know what? It's just, it's great for me to get out of lockdown for just a minute. You know, I went to the barbershop today. The line stretched for blocks and blocks. I went up to one older fellow in line. I said, you've been in quarantine long? He said, long? Look, I can tuck my beard inside my diaper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know that old saying, every day is a gift? What I want to know is if that's true, how can I return the past three months? <laughs> <laughs> but folks, it's great to be here at the virtual 1940s ball. But if you ever have a chance, you need to go to the real deal in, in Boulder. I mean, there's so much atmosphere. All the, the vendors and all the fashion, there's so much atmosphere. Kinsey and I were walking down Victory Street. Oh, talk about atmosphere. I sat down in the uh, French cafe. Kinsey said, do you want to sit next to a palm tree or a waterfall? Do you want to sit next to a balmy breeze or a babbling brook? Do you want to sit next to a rainstorm, firestorm, hailstorm, thunderstorm, by the parrots, hurricane, flash flood, or a volcano? I said, put me by the weatherman so I'll know what's going to happen next. <laughs> and you know, Boulder is beautiful, but it's in the middle of a condominium craze. Why, it's affecting everybody. In school the other day, a teacher said, well, in virtual school, the teacher said, now, Johnny, what happened in 1492? He said, how should I know? We live on the 12th floor. <laughs> but, you know, I entertained the troops for 50 years, starting in the months just prior to the beginning of World War II. Now, the world has changed a lot since then. Back then, gasoline was being rationed, and even the most common items are very scarce. Today, you can have all the gas you want for $2 a gallon, but who would have thought that the thing that's in high demand was toilet paper? <laughs> you know, I remember that first soldier audience. I looked at them. They laughed at me. It was love at first sight. It was May 6, 1941. I went down to March Field in Riverside, California, to do a radio show for the Army Airmen that were stationed there. Oh, what a great crowd they turned out to be. In fact, they took me for a ride in one of the airplanes. Just as we were about to do a loop-de-loop, -loop, I said to the pilot, hey, how come you're wearing a parachute and I'm not? He said, well, they need me. <laughs> <laughs> that was the beginning of my love for the American GI. Shortly after that, we teamed up with the USO and we've been going steady ever since. Now, one of the things that was a big morale booster back home was music. Wouldn't you agree? And the one genre that everybody was going nuts about was swing. So with that in mind, shall we bring on our first special guest? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this man leads a troupe of artists around the world to pay tribute to one of the most iconic names in music history. 
Not only can he swing like a gate, but he's one of the nicest guys in show business too. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the current musical director for the world famous Glenn Miller Orchestra. Here's Nick Hilscher. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hey, Nick. Hi, Bob. <laughs> hey, how you doing? I made it. Hey, great. I made it as well. <laughs> well, that's great. Are you at home, Nick? I'm at home, yes. Oh, great. So I know you've been locked down just like the rest of us. That's but, right. Uh, yeah. But the same fact, is, oh, go, oh ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I've been lo I've been locked down since uh, about March the 14th. The the Glenn Miller Orchestra was uh, going strong, doing our normal uh, touring, looking at probably 200 dates this year in 2020. And uh, we were out in uh, California. We played UCLA on March the 11th. We had a great crowd. And then all of this hit. And uh, and next thing you know, we were heading to the Las Vegas airport on March the 14th. And everybody said, see you later and went home. And so the band has been home or the musicians in the orchestra have been home, you know, spread throughout the United States. I'm outside of Atlanta. We have our lead trombonist in George Reinhardt in Alaska. Our oh lead, our lead clarinetist got married and oh during the... <laughs> And he's up in uh, Montreal. So, you know, uh, our lead trumpet players in Florida and uh, everybody else is all over the place. So that's the way it is. Oh, my goodness. What but we sure happen? miss we miss this event. It's it's this is one of my favorites. Wow. And uh, this would have been the fourth year that the Glenn Miller Orchestra has played the 1940s ball. But wow. uh, uh, but I'm glad that I'm, I'm able to at least represent the band for a little bit here tonight. Oh, well, that's great. We sure miss all the rest of the members of the band. But, you know, it's just for the sake of uh, the folks at home who might not have seen you, could you tell us a little bit about the nuts and bolts of the band? Now, when you perform, you do all of Glenn Miller's charts and such. Is that correct? That's right. When we are on the road and doing our thing, we come in and uh, usually nowadays do uh, a two-hour show. You know, I joined the band in 1998 when I was 21 years old as the male vocalist. And we had a wonderful leader by the name of Larry O'Brien. And back then, you know, most of the uh, audience were, were World War II. We were doing four-hour dances regularly, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8 p.m. to midnight or 9 p.m. to 1 in the morning. And But now we do uh, mostly concerts, two-hour shows. Um, and uh, like I said, we, we're doing about on a regular year, about 200 dates per year. And so when we come in, we start things up with our theme song, Moonlight Serenade, and then we go right into uh, um, our two-hour show, which, which features a lot of the big hits that the band had. In the Mood, Pennsylvania 65,000, A String of Pearls, Little Brown Jug, Chattanooga Choo Choo, of course. A lot of times I've got a gal in Kalamazoo, uh, Tuxedo Junction, and the list goes on and on. And what's great about the Glenn Miller Orchestra is that Glenn Miller Productions, the management company of the band, has kept our library intact since Glenn stood in front of the band. And just from 1937, Glenn Miller's first orchestra, up into the 1938 to 42 band, there are about 800 arrangements. And so we have so much to delve into there. And there's been another thousand that's been written for the orchestra since the reformation of the band in 1956. So it's really fun for me and for the, the musicians to delve into that library and uh, present the music uh, kind of fresh, if you will, fresh to us, although it might be a Miller arrangement from 1938. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. 